Christmas with Face, Pat, and Tiz. We having the weirdest songs. What's up, guys? Welcome to the party. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, <laughs> having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, along with other third, Padawan. Yeah, nothing fancy. <laughs> yeah, face. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, well. Tonight's episode should be very interesting. Um, I'll just jump right into the first topic since we're already kind of discussing uh, women and just women issues. Um, so I've been watching this guy named Kevin Samuels lately. Um, he's like an image consultant or something, but he basically has a call-in show where women call in to ask them to ask him like dating advice or whatever. And one of the things that comes up as a common theme on there is like what the difference between what women value in themselves and what men value in women. And one of the major things is uh, Kevin Sanders be always saying that women overvalue their education and earning potential as like a chip toward getting a man. Like they feel like the more money they make or the more education they got, the more attractive they'll be to a man. Um, I guess I just want to throw some questions out there based off of me watching this dude. Uh, it, it's, uh, yeah. So the first question I had that I wanted to just pose to the group is, does education and earning potential matter to a man as far as when they choosing a woman? And I'm more talking about a woman that you'd marry or like see as a long-term partner, not like uh, you just hitting and quitting it or you just trying to date. Mm. Now, um, that all to me that all depends on where you're at in life and what you what you're looking for. Um, as being a married man, now having the knowledge of being married, I would say when you look for a woman and you're investing in a woman when you want to marry them, which is a long term thing, that is an investment. Um, so like with any business investment, you want to make sure you're investing your time and your money and whatever else you're going to invest in it into something that you think is going to, how can I say, um, come to fruition or be good for the both of you or you feel me like y'all both will flourish in it. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to education, yes, definitely. Cause I don't want to be with, I, I would never suggest anybody would be with somebody you can't have a conversation with. Um, me personally, I love to have intellectual conversations and something we can, expand on expunge on you feel me um mm-hmm. dumb dumb just pop culture stuff cool we can converse on that but how deep can we go into that give me someone with an education that we can go on some other another level conversation that i can we can go on for hours you feel me and i can really check your brain and see where you're at um me personally i know it's not that many people i can have those type of conversations with because I, stuff i know about most people ain't gonna talk about <laughs> mm-hmm. so having a good education is is, is a qualification for me um, earning potential, to put it like that, I wouldn't really look at a woman for earning potential. Um, I think pimps look at women when they're looking for earning potential because you're looking at what can she possibly do and bring bring you to bring to you. That's mm-hmm. earning potential. That's mm-hmm. what I look at when I'm looking at uh, business investment. What earning potential does it have? What stock can bring me a good earning potential? But not a woman. Um, I'm looking for. Do you have a job? Mm-hmm. Uh, can you help support your half? Of what we're doing as a as a conductive as a conjunctive unit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not looking for what you can bring me because at the end of, end of the day we should we we both should be coming to the table able to support ourselves, mm-hmm. coming together to help try to support a union. So earning potential, no, but the fact that you can earn money to help so help your end, yeah, because no, I um I know this may be the age of sugar daddies and sugar babies, but I don't know about nobody else, but. I don't want nobody, another person I got to take care of. I already got kids. Mm-hmm. Now, I know the thing with men is when to take care of their wives and take care of their family. I take care of my family. I take care of my wife, too. But at the end of the day, I don't want somebody who can't do nothing. Because at the end of the day, when I die and I leave, there will still be a family here. And that woman I leave should still be able to take care of that family in my absence. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. 
that's where I'm looking for. So as far as what Mr. Samuel's saying, or Kevin said, whatever the dude's name is, earning potential, no. Nah. Earning potential, I, I'm not looking for earning potential in a woman, but education is definitely a big factor with me. So I am looking for a woman who has, who, well, I'm not looking for shit now because I'm married. But in the instance where I was looking for a woman at that point in time, education, and I actually prayed for a woman who had some type of common sense. You feel like some type of head mm-hmm. on your shoulders so we can converse. Because I, there's too many dummies out here that don't want to talk about that. Like all you want to do is stay on your phone, your phone pressing your face, and all you want to do is talk about what he says, she says. That that's not conversing the conversation. You gossiping and spreading on stuff. Have a have a conversation with your own free thought. As you come up with a thought, and let's converse on this. What you talk about? That's what I'm. That's what. That's what's good. That's that's attractive. That's sexy. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Just having a fat ass. That ain't. I mean, that's everywhere. Gotcha. Yes. That's real. That's real. Mm-hmm. What about you, Pat? Um, I'm weird, and I talk about weird stuff all the time. So you got to have some kind of intelligence or education or, wh- or whatever to talk to me. And, you know, in general, are you just going to think I'm just weird? Mm-hmm. So and on that note, yeah, so that probably would be needed in my situation, like being with me in, in general. And then I, I kind of just feel what face saying all, all around he kind of like hit, hit it right there on the target because like as far as earning potential i would only think about that if this was like a business relationship or something like that or mm-hmm. or just business in general or whatever really i just are are you going to care enough about my needs and if we have a family are you going to be mentally stable enough to hold it down when i'm not around that's real. If if I'm not around or whatever. And I'm not saying for somebody to take this snippet and just runs with it or whatever, like we're already like that big out there. But when I mean not around, I mean like, all right, if I got to take a business trip, all right, if I'm sick in a hospital, all right, you know, like just stuff like that. In, mm-hmm. in or, gotcha. or if we're in a tight squeeze, you need to make a decision right then and there or whatever and I'm not a like I'm working or something and I'm preventing me from getting to you or talking to you or whatever if you know somebody I can feel confident enough to go ahead and make those decisions when I'm not around you you gotta have some type of you know education or whatever you don't want nobody just ratchet off the streets just making your decisions for you pretty much one of the reasons one of the reasons I've been single for a long time but we'll get into that later (laughs) <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, I think for me I I guess I kind of agree with parts of what Kevin Samuel saying and parts of what y'all saying like it, it's kind of like a, a, a little mixture for me a little gumbo um, I think that women do overvalue like their degreed education like which mm. college they went to or how many degrees they got or like they do kind of overvalue like how much money they, they make Cause for me, I, I think it's more comes down to like smarts or just like overall common sense type intelligence more than book sense. Like you could be a PhD, but if you know nothing about everyday living, like for me, I was always looking for a woman that was like, I don't care what you make. I'm a, I'm a bet on myself. So I feel like if whatever needs to be done financially, I'll get that done. I ain't stressing that. But as far as like taking care of the home, like are you going to be a somebody that I know is like, going to be able to support me when I'm emotionally feeling down? Um, it, are you willing to get out there and work if it need be to make ends meet? Like that type of thing mean more to me, like more the emotional and I guess uh, emotional and physical support as opposed to like needing her to financially to support anything. like. Mm-hmm. just you being willing to work I know if shit hit the fan and I get injured or something I'm on disability I know you'll still get out there and get it you know what I mean like I, I want you to have that but I don't really care if you're making six figures that don't that wouldn't have impressed me like okay that's great what are we gonna talk about are we yeah. gonna be able to get along are you gonna be agreeable are you gonna be somebody that like I can actually end up compromising with so I don't, we don't always go to bed mad that type of shit mean more to me than what school you went to, what degree you got, or like your your paycheck more. You know what I mean? 
So I, I definitely feel y'all on, on just like the money not being a huge thing. Like I got stocks for that. I don't really need you to be my financial person. I need you to be my support system, my real, my partner in crime. Like I like how you kind of put it as far as like supporting the household. That's the shit I'm talking about. Like what you said, pet, like okay. if, if I'm, if I'm, off in the distance somewhere doing something to get money for the crib. Like, all right, am I going to be able to trust that if the insurance company call, you're going to make the right decision and actually understand how to talk to them real quick. Are you going to be able to, you know, set up the, get, get, get my son enrolled for school. If I'm not able to do it this week, you know what I mean? Like shit like that mean more to me than the money and uh, education for sure. Um, I was, I was going to add to um, not, not to say I'm going to just run into a millionaire woman out of the blue. You never know. You never know. But not to say that or whatever, but even if I had a chance or a, a woman with a million dollars or just mm-hmm. financially stable was to come to me and or whatever, it wouldn't be the financial. It, it might be her ambition and her th- drive to get that money if she, you know, made it off her own or whatever, or if it right. wasn't like a um, um, inheritance type deal. But I would still look at her like that money don't got nothing to do with me. I wouldn't even want to come mm-hmm. at her like that. Cause then I'm just looking at her as a money grab mm-hmm. uh, in, in general. So like, yeah. So whatever she was making, it's still, I'm still like, well, that's her money. I just be the broke dude that she's messing with mm-hmm. <laughs> while she spends her money. I was like, yeah, that's all right. That's cool. Either way, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, not to say that 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 piece of it will have me probably having second thoughts of like, yeah, we having an argument, but yeah, you know, just to be honest and be real about it. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's like that's still her money. Like I don't have nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Like if if she decided that she was my shit and just disappeared or whatever. Like, I don't get no piece of that, so, like, why would I be that big on it? But, yeah, I just wanted – it was in my head, so I just wanted to say it. No problem. No problem. <laughs> um, We kind of already touched on it when we were answering the first question, but uh, I wanted to also throw it out there for the ladies watching it and just so that, like, women can start to better understand into the minds of a, of a man and what we actually be – looking at when we see women as opposed to what they see when they see themselves. Um, what what do men actually value in a woman? Like what makes a woman wifey material as opposed to just a good dating friend or somebody to just talk to or, you know what I mean, a, a, a fuck buddy or something like that. Like what, what, what qualities separate the wifey woman from that woman that's just good for dating or just kicking it with? Um, humility. The ability to effectively communicate and if you don't have that ability the willingness to learn how mm-hmm. the lack of jealousy uh, that's cool. open open-mindedness mm-hmm. intelligence okay mm-hmm. common intelligence not book sense but you have to be mm-hmm. common sense know how to mm-hmm. do the basic the basic things need, needed to live and survive. Yep. Patience, understanding, common sense, once again. <laughs> Just in case you heard the first time, ladies. <laughs> flick it, flick it. Uh. Non, non-materialistic. Mm. Knowing the difference between a need and a want. Knowing the difference between an aspiration that can be attained and one that cannot. Mm. The one who sets realistic goals and the one who is realistic with reality because some people do live in their own world. Oh, yeah. The ability to have another person's perspective. So to the ability to be able to step in someone else's shoes mm-hmm. and see from someone else's perspective. It may seem like a lot, 
But women say men is always simple. So I'm just giving them an example how I'm really not simple. I'm a very complicated person. Just like y'all women are complicated, men ain't all simple. We have things, but we just sometimes settle and we just sometimes just go with what we can. Yeah, they used to, they used but, to but test me point, off. But, <laughs> but at the point at the age I am now and after being married, it kind of gives you clarity on what you want and what you see. You feel me? Because when you get with a person, that's not the person you end up being with. When you get with the person, you get with the representative. And it's two representative meeting. So the representative looks like all that stuff you see and all the stuff you want. That's just the glitter and the gold painted on the front. Is after you peel back them layers and spend time with each other, do you actually see, are you actually hitting those points on your list that you know and a certain woman is going to make you happy? So by me telling everybody what, my, what I value in a woman, that's also coming with time. Because the most, inval- most important thing I value is a woman who's willing to give me her time. If you're not willing to give me your time, I can't find out if you hold all those other values. And that's mm-hmm. the key difference between mm-hmm. a, a wifey and a person who just, you, you just want to fuck. Because you can tell a person who's going to give you that time to figure them out and that time to see. Mm-hmm. Versus a person who just want to be, I just want to be here for this. Cool. We, we better that common ground. We can do this and, and go but too many times do we all see it happen. People get together for that and think that person hitting all the values until years later, then they finally see, damn, this ain't the person. I just started as a hit and quit it, and I never quit it. And damn, now it's up. Mm-hmm. Take your time. Take your time. Don't rush into shit. Take your time and see if that person you're with can transform from that hit and quit it thing you had into a wifey. Because not everybody is supposed to be wifey. Not everybody is supposed to be a husband. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Take your time and see if that person meets the values you personally hold. But as far as faith, my number one thing has to be time. Because a woman is not willing to invest time into what I'm trying to invest time in, we ain't no need to take anything any further. Because we can have that conversation up front. What you trying to do? What you trying to do? This is what I'm looking for. If we can't meet on the common ground, conversation can be on. We can split our ways right then and just save time. Yeah, that's, time is that's real. That's a time real. is definitely it. Time um, is definitely it. I think for me, uh, I'll just give a top five because Face laid out a pretty good list there of mm-hmm. a lot of the the major qualities. Um, I think for me, I'll start with and haters gonna hate me, and I know people gonna call me superficial, but you gotta look good to me. That can be that, and I'm mainly talking about like your facial features. Cause I'm gonna see that before I notice your body, before I notice your, your brains, before I notice how smart you are, how kind you treat me or that you, you know, say the world. Like the first thing I saw with my woman was her face. And I knew right then, okay, I can wake up to that face for the rest of my life. That would make me happy. So I think looks for me is number one. Uh, number two, I'd have to say agreeability. And I don't mean that in like the terms of like uh, the way a lot of people try to use it now as like being uh, submissive or just going along with anything. I mean more in the sense of you're able to respect and trust me enough that we can speak the truth to each other and agree to disagree if need be. Or if there's a, or if there's a reasonable compromise to be made, you're able to accept that and not be holding anything because you didn't get all of your way or I didn't get, you know what I mean? Like the ability to just kind of communicate and get on even ground, even when it's a difficult conversation to me is huge. Cause I feel like that's all marriage is a bunch of difficult ass conversations. So if I'm not going to be able to have them, that's going to be tough. You know what I mean? Um, I think number three would be, like Faith said, the willingness to give me your time, because like that's how you build that friendship part of the relationship that actually keeps you going past the sexual attraction and shit. Like when shit get born, like you still gotta like that person. And the only way you can build that bond is by having that that time. So I like that. Uh I definitely agree with Face on that. That time is huge. Um I would say, how well do you take care of a home? Because at the end of the day, If I'm going to be able to follow my ambitions, 
I'm going to need a woman that can take care of home just as good as myself. And I grew up, you know what I mean? We, we grew up in the old school era when you was latchkey kids and you was coming home and you was taking care of the career by yourself, cleaning up the house, cooking your own dinner, all that shit at a young age. So like for me, I've been used to taking care of shit for a long time. So I need somebody that can be my partner in that. And like, if I'm the one working late tonight that you're going to be able to handle dinner and have that ready when I get home and have the house clean and, and vice versa, you know what I mean? Like that that willingness to be able to take care of home doesn't mean that you even necessarily got to, because if, if if shit hit the fan and I end up, you know, like I said earlier, hurt on disability or something, I got to be a house husband. I don't mind doing it, but the willingness to do it so that we can both pursue our ambitions equally, you know what I mean? And then I think the last one for me would be understand it like you ain't gotta agree with everything that I do but you gotta understand me enough to accept it if that makes sense like you might not like me playing video games but you gotta be willing to accept it or you might not like the fact that I love my job and the type of job I got might have me staying out to nine o'clock at night while you at home like you gotta understand it because you gotta be willing to let me kind of get that out so that I can be happy as well. And, and as far as me being happy, because I feel like in a marriage, both parties got to be able to be happy individually. They can't depend on each other for their happiness. So I can't just be dependent on the shit you doing for me for happiness. I got to have them outlets to kind of just, you know what I mean? Get the man, get the man day off me after a long day, that type of shit. So I think understanding would be my last one. Yeah. I think y'all, y'all kind of hitting all of them at once, but like time is big on me because with time, first of all, if you first talking to a woman or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you have your, the women you talk to or whatever, it seems like you got to always be on their time Mm -hmm. or whatever, or it's, or they only talk to you when it's convenient for them or whatever. If you just find someone that just actually just hitting you up just to see how you're doing or just want to, you know, just chill or have some time with you or whatever, that's, that's one key um, clue that, all right, this is, might be somebody I might want to talk but like, you know, s- stay around with. Yeah, you better much. act like you like me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you don't act like you like me, or you don't, you just seem like like you got some women that just like, like they're doing you a favor, letting (laughs) you take them out (laughs) and spend money and gas and time on them. Like, I could go somewhere and find somebody to actually appreciate this. Like, easier than you can, too. Yeah. Like, we are out, they outnumber us in this world. This my thing on that point, Pat. With these, with the women out there, they feel like pussy is everything. So a man willing to pay for everything. My hand just as good as that pussy. Cause all at the end of the day, all, all I'm looking for is that last thirty seconds of that nut. Yeah. So if you, 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 you trying to pimp a person out for their money and everything? I can save all my money, put it into an investment, grow my money ten times fold better than that pussy feel for that last thirty seconds. Yeah. So figure out. They got to figure out how much they value their sales first. Because if you you approaching a man and you think that you're doing him a favor, you ain't doing shit but falling into the trap. That's, and then, and then, that then, was a big word right there. Freak, and freak. then, when they um put their pussies on the pedestal up into the sky so it shines, and that up is into the, the sky so it shines, shines. <laughs> and and so the world can see that they got the greatest thing in the world or whatever. Y'all know where I'm getting at, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and you you with them, and it actually happens, or whatever. Like you have to actually get me to that thirty seconds. It's not just about you. <laughs> you just mm-hmm. you just yep. you just having the time of your life. Just That's having right. the time. 
Oh, everything you want to do, you just we getting okay. it done. Lick what? my nipple too, damn it. What, what, what about me? You done fell asleep. <laughs> you gonna I'm kiss over me here. down there? I'm over here tapping you on your hind parts. Why you sleep? Because it's still there. It's still there. It'll be there in the morning. Yeah, that is the you. beauty of being married. You ain't got to tap too long. It was, it, it'll, it'll be tap, there in the tap. morning. <laughs> if I'm here in the morning, I might just leave. <laughs> Whatever. That's that's the thing that gets me, man. It's like y'all it's just, just as much as men, y'all y'all come come across those men that just be talking cash junk about how they do stuff in the bed and all that other stuff. We come across quite a few of y'all, and with the state of how this the woman wave of rap is going or whatever, it's just increasing. Y'all are slowly turning into the men that y'all talk junk about. <laughs> For the past when, 20 some years when, the woman when version. i was when There's i was preaching thinking, going on tonight was, let the doors of the church open oh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say some real shit when i won't marry and i was single and i was fucking it is some trash ass pussy out there so just like they say it's some <laughs> trash, trash ass dick. Yeah, it, it, it may be trash dick to y'all but it is some trash ass flounder fish ass <laughs> pussy out there too so let's just keep it on an even keel and not be biased. That damn yeah. is trash on both sides. Pussy. It's trash like, on both sides. You hear me? I got uh man, this is crazy, man. It's just it just I just feel like I've been saying this the roles are flipping. The roles are flipping. We and I think the reason why that every last one of them can put theirs up to the sun so it can shine. Or, or whatever on the pedestal is because men don't usually be vocal about it like mm. like like on social media sense or whatever mm -hmm. the only time you really heard a man be vocal about it is probably that one crazy comedian that you you know back in the day that one crazy comedian that one hardcore rap song or whatever like that's the only time I see people vote. I can go on Facebook. I can go on social media. I can go on a song. I can go on a movie. I can go on a daytime television show. Uh, yeah, Oprah, I can tell you a couple stories. Oprah, half the TV, half of media, they're all saying that men are trash. Every day. Right now. Yeah. We could probably could pop something up right on this TV right now. And find something. Like That's the only thing. We just not vocal. Just I'm like I'm gonna um, hit you with some stats real quick. Hmm? I'm gonna hit you with some stats real quick. Is it more women or more men on this planet? More women. So statistically, it gotta be more shit ass women than it is men, right? <laughs> the numbers would say so. Well, let, let's look numbers. Allegedly. You feel me? Because I know people gonna hear this and be like, what is Face talking about? Oh my God, Face, you women. No, it ain't women bashing. Let's talk statistics. Let's talk numbers and talk facts. If it is more of something, and less of something else, and you divide the the more of something into two groups, a good group and an ain't shit group, I guarantee that ain't shit group is going to outweigh the other people ain't shit group. Yeah. I, oh, man, y'all done touched on so much here. I, I got to unpack a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to start with what with, with Pat said when he was talking about the uh, roles reversing. Women got to stop valuing stuff that matters to them when they're picking men in themselves. Like, valuing our education and our earning potential, I understand. But that, if you listen to the list that we gave, we ain't say shit about those two things. We don't care about your money. We want somebody else going to treat us right, be able to talk to us, give us some time, and love on us. And somebody that we want to look at. It ain't got shit to do with your money, your earning potential, your, your school you went to, the degrees you got. You got six degrees like Umar allegedly. And we still going to be like, OK, well, what about this other stuff? Because that other stuff is what's going to make you stick. Um, the other stuff got me locked down for the past, uh, what we on, 15 years? So uh, yeah, it's the other stuff, ladies. Um, and also, like Faith said, y'all outnumber us by a lot. It's going to be easier for us to find the woman of our dreams than it is for you to find a man of your dreams if you out here disqualifying people or, or 
kind of saying, you know, hey, well, you don't make enough money. You better find that man that can treat you right. Because the average man that make a lot of money, that's the top 10% of the world. You don't make enough money, but she don't got a Them job. dudes ain't got time for you. Them dudes is probably going to cheat nothing. on you. Just being honest, like. <laughs> How you got expectation? How you want somebody to meet your expectation that you don't even meet? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, and and to put this out there, because I for some reason there's this stipula, it's this this stigma that every time a man talks about a woman, he thinks all women are like that. Is that's not the oh, case? No. So I I wish I wish y'all y'all need to stop indirectly. We talking numbers. Def- we talking facts and stats. Yeah, like y'all that's need it. to stop indirectly defending. These trash females that we talk about, like they don't exist. They exist. Some of them are your oh, friends. Oh no, 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 no. That's not <laughs> it. That's not it. Some, they some defend, of them. They're gonna always defend them to men. They're gonna always defend another woman to men, but they're gonna trash them to each other. You feel me? That's the key. Mm-hmm. A woman ain't gonna agree with you when you're talking down about a woman, but the second another woman says something, they're gonna agree with them. Yeah, she ain't trash. She ain't shit, girl. You know, girl. But you're gonna uphold her in front of a woman. It ain't all like that, man. You got you don't know her like that. You, you, she been through something. No, I know her like that, and everybody's yeah, been through I think something. The kids, All right, we gotta, we gotta be able to have real and honest conversation. Like we got to both be able to accept the truth. We got to be able to accept the truth about men. We got to be able to accept and, the truth about then, women, and we got to be able to be honest about it. And we can't be defending stuff because of our the way we feel. Like I think, like we always be talk it. about, man, that that feeling stuff can make stuff in real the sticky. Like if you just keep it on what it is, like. Uh, it go back to that communication piece, ladies. Like to get a man that's gonna do all the things you might be wanting, you're gonna have to be able to communicate, right? Like you gotta be able to listen to the honest truth and accept that and him be able to do the same and then y'all meet in the middle. Like that's the only reason I can stay with my wife. Like my wife got Stop. me because on top of everything else that she got we can actually end up agreeing at the end of the day. Like we can agree to disagree or agree to agree, but we can accept the facts. And we've gotten to the point after all these years that we're able to both like look at the truth of whatever the situation is and deal with that, not go past that, not be tripping, not be, oh, well, you said this about me and I feel no, but it did you, is what you said true? And if it is, then you know what I mean? We got to be able to accept that. And ladies, I love y'all, but y'all got to be able to accept that. Like my sisters, we that, that's that's the key missing. Like a lot of women value themselves above the man and think that mm-hmm. they're not willing to accept the truth. Like, but ma'am, yeah, you're the woman, but you're also not bringing much to the table on your end. So why are you trying to tell all of this that I'm bringing to the table? Like, yeah, when you become a bill, you're not. You know, you, you now I'm looking at you like a bill. I'm not looking at you like someone important in my life. I'm looking at you as, all right, I'm just taking her out so I can possibly get some tonight. Indeed. That's not a good feeling. And, and if you're going to bring feelings into an argument, you're going to have to recognize my feelings also. And if, if I say right. I feel some type of way, and you're saying, oh, well, man. you just feel that way because blah, 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 blah. As soon as you start putting that, I'm putting that up to my list. And if I start hearing too much of that, of mm-hmm. you, you know, just putting my feelings off to the side when I got to deal with your feelings, yeah, you, I'm going to disappear on you after a while. And I've been single since 2008. <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies, he's single. <laughs> If you have missed our past episodes, he is still single. He got y'all. No, I don't. I I don't know y'all because I've been single since 2008. So so evidently, I don't got nobody because I've been single for the past two times since past (laughs) decade. (laughs) Ladies, that's our opinion on it. Um, Let us know what y'all feel down in the comments. We're willing to have a conversation. We're willing to, you know, if, if we say something that is wrong, Come we did some we, kind of we're way. willing to have that conversation because we can learn too. some we're some kind of way we did anything we just got opinions mm-hmm. on everything so and make sure you hit that like button yeah
hit the like button. Comment it's down there. Like we want to have a conversation with y'all. Um, but I guess the best way to sum up my little segment is, uh, ladies, stop bullshitting with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that leaves us on the faces top five ways to stop bullshitting with yourself for ladies and men. See what I um, did there? Let's see. <laughs> I love the segue. I love the segue. <laughs> now, my number one way to stop bullshitting with yourself is to make up your damn mind and stick with it. When you're constantly flip-flopping and flip-flopping and flip-flopping, you can never move forward on shit. So you're constantly bullshitting with yourself because you know what you think you want to do, but you can't make up your mind between this and that. So you keep flopping between this and starting it, and that, and starting it. And you keep stopping both. That's Make up your mind and move forward. Second thing. Stop making excuses. Well, I can't do this because of this right now. You know, I got this bill right here, and I got to do this tomorrow. None of that really matters, because if you want to do it, just go do it. Yeah. Stop making excuses of everything, because life's going to continue to happen regardless if you got a goal or not. So get your goal, make up your mind, stop making excuses and just go do that shit. Hey, everybody, we did it with this podcast. Just do it. Damn right. Number three, stop half-assing it. Mm, that's if you go, that's go hard, big. if you're going to do something, go all the way, go hard with that shit. Go 100%. Don't go 50% and then get mad when or oh, I, I, it ain't end up working the way I want it to work because you half-assed it. Put your all into it if you really want to do it. You can't accomplish nothing. You, you can't accomplish nothing putting half a foot on something. Try to walk up a stair and put half of your foot and all your weight on that half. Your ass gonna oh, fall. Back. <laughs> Stop half Sec Next thing. Stay focused on what needs to be done. Key word in there is needs to be done. Needs. When you know what you want to do, you can always see what you want to do to get there. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. But what are the needed and necessary steps to get you there? Don't avoid those because you can't, you can't avoid a needed step to try to hop over and do a wanted step because you'll end up hopping too far and falling on your damn face. Foundation must come for the walls. Last thing. Pay attention to the repeated actions that has led you to unwanted results. Mm. Learn from the past. That's real as shit. That's real as shit. If you do not learn from the past, you're destined to repeat it. Amen. <laughs> if you keep hitting the same cycle and can keep getting the same results, it ain't everything else. It's you that needs to change something and what you're doing. Figure it out. Yeah. Survey says no lies detected there, champs. And that space is top five ways to stop bullshitting with yourself for this week. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Now we're gonna move on to my my group topic. You know, it's 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 a it's a two parter, but it all goes together. We're gonna discuss the the fear of success and the art of failure. Mm. Mm. The art of so failure. it's a few points to being so scared to succeed and it's talking points. And the same goes for the art of failure, but the art of failure is more like how you craft your own defeat. You feel me? Mm. So self sabotage is real. So the first thing on the fear of success is you so scared of winning you don't even try. Mm. And that goes hand in hand with the first principle of the art of failure is to not try to fail. Mm -hmm. When you start off so scared of your success, you start off doing the architecture of your own failure. You can't be scared mm -hmm. of winning. You got to take that first step out there. You got to take a step towards your goal. That's true. That's Don't real. be 90 looking back. At your thirties, I'm like, you know, when I was thirty, I wish I'd have did this. I had the, I had the energy, I had the strength. I should have did. No, nah, do it now. Don't look back and wish you would have. Second thing on my fifth success. You feel success leads to change, and people hate change. It takes them out of their comfort zone. 
Yeah. You feel me? When people are successful, it makes them, it forces them to change their surroundings, change who you're around. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't like change. A lot of people fear fearful of change and don't know how to adapt to that. But in anything, when you want to go forward and maturate in life, mature in life, grow in life, your surroundings have to change. You can't stay stagnant in the same area. That's people, real. people don't aspire to get rich and stay in the hood. People aspire to make it out of the hood, to change their surroundings, change their financial back. You feel me? Aspire for change. Don't aspire for the constant and the same. Don't Still aspire to be like a dude down, down the block and been down the block but his whole life. Don't aspire to be like, oh, he's the biggest hustler in the hood. Yeah, he's the biggest hustler in the hood. He could have taken that same knowledge and went on and opened a business. Don't be like that, man. He's stuck. Don't be stuck. Next thing. Not knowing what comes next if I succeed. So why not just take just stick what I know? That fear of the unknown stops a lot of people from even trying. Yeah, that's true. That's big. Well, if I do this and I and I actually get this money, what what's gonna happen? I don't I don't know if I do this. If I if I move and I get this house and I move, I don't I don't know if my family gonna still fuck with me. If I get this job, what's gonna happen? I ain't gonna be able to chill no more. I ain't gonna be... man. Why still stick with what you're doing if you want if your situation is pissing you off and you frustrated in your situation? You have an opportunity to change it. Go ahead and take your opportunity, man. Only way Why to keep looking at your opportunity in the face? Mm-hmm. You feel me? You, you, you tired of being where you at? You keep you playing every month. All oh, these bills piling up. I ain't got enough money to pay this, this bill. But you got an opportunity to make a job if you quit smoking weed for a little bit, but you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Quit smoking that damn weed and get a damn job. Change the situation. Get out your comfort zone and change the situation. You feel me? Like, be something different to get something different. Mm -hmm. Being yourself, you can only get what you normally get. If you want something different, do something different. Now, on to the art of failure. Yep, yep, yep. Now, art of failure, I'm looking at just because you take an L doesn't mean don't try again. It means the exact opposite. You take an L, that means you op- you automatically try again. Mm-hmm. The age old saying is, you fall off the horse, you get back up and try again. You fall off the bike, you get back up and try again. So in essence, they've been telling you since you was a little kid, if you yeah. fail, get your ass up and try again. What your mama tell you, you go outside and get your ass whipped, don't come in here till you win. You can't if you win fail, you to learn how to lose. try again. If you get an F on a test and the teacher offers you a makeup, you're going to say no or you're going to attempt to get a higher grade. If you fail, try again. You went up for the promotion with a nigga next to you, beat you out because he had a little bit more experience. Get your experience up and try try again. Church. That's all you got to do. Don't shape your own failure by not trying. Next thing, the art of failure. The moment you quit, you fail. As long as you can try, you have a chance. Yeah. The moment you say, man, I, I can't do it. You feel me? The moment they say, I can't do it, you're done. Mentally, yeah. you just you, mentally you just decapitated any chance you had. You just cut it off at the head. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, to defeat anything, you cut it off at the head. You got to always know, as long as you got a fighting chance, that's just what that is, a fighting chance. Yeah. Everybody said, Roy's going to get knocked out. Roy's going to get knocked out. Roy had a fighting chance. Roy didn't get knocked out. <laughs> he tried. also ain't the average Everybody man. Thought. You feel me? Roy tried. Roy tried. Tyson tried to knock Roy out. Roy didn't go get knocked out. He tried. He did not. You feel me? He knew from jump. Hey, this nigga might kill me in this ring, but I'm going to try. You feel me? You got and, to be and, willing to take a step. And Tyson willing to uh, try knocking him out again, evidently. He's trying to reassure mm-hmm. what's going on. He was like, no. I was successful this time. I'm going to try again, too. My second to last one is constant hesitation leads to missed opportunities. That's true. Boy, I felt that. A true. lot of times, we don't go with our gut feeling. 
when we get a chance. It's only open for a while. Gotta step through it. We can kick it to another level. Don't don't look a blessing in the face and ignore it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to better yourself in a positive way. Take advantage of it. They always say, don't, everybody don't get a chance. Everybody wants a chance. You're right. Everybody don't. But a lot of people do, and they don't realize they're getting a chance. This is true. Open your eyes and be visible to the opportunities, and don't hesitate. Stop double-guessing. Stop triple-guessing. What should I? What should I? What should I? What should I? Well, I don't know. it. Do the shit. Once again, stop bullshitting with yourself and do the shit. Stop bullshitting with yourself. And my last thing on the art of failure, people got to realize when ambition meets reality, you will be ready. You got to understand when you put your thoughts and your and your goals to work, you ready then. You putting that shit in, in, into your own reality. You're taking it out your head and making it physical. Mm-hmm. Manifest. You ready. You, you, you ready to win. But as long as it's still in your head and you don't want to, I ain't going to tell nobody. People going to think I'm done. People might have thought the same shit about us three trying to start a fucking podcast. Y'all want to do what? But look at us. Yep. Look what we've attained in a short amount of time. You feel me? Yep. We got 160 people in our pod squad. You feel and me? We love y'all. And 16 Every one of us. We went from a conversation of three people to 163 now. We deep. Exactly. Episode 16. When we on 100, when we doing 160 <laughs> episodes of 1600 That's episodes. That's crazy. 16 yeah, episodes, like 16 160. Episodes, man. 16 That's episodes, man. And we had 160. 16 yeah. times 10. That's oh, crazy. this is a numbers day because it's also 333. Three, three. Exactly. Mm. Got to realize Happy our birthday, ambition. John. The reality. Oh yeah, we ready to win, and we're continuously to succeed because we took our what was in our minds and made it reality. Ambition met reality. Indeed. As long as they can do that, they can keep from failing. Once again, it's the art to failing, but it goes hand in hand with the fear of success. As long as you, the only true thing that can stop you from achieving your goals is you. Amen. You are the biggest obstacle to yourself. So we get out your own damn way. Basically. Continue to smell your damn self, sidestep yourself, and go ahead and hurdle yourself too. Get to your dad damn go. That's amen. all I got to say. Amen and amen. And the doors of the church are open. We're going to pass a collection plate around that way. Quiet, can you give us a B selection, please? <laughs> no, you can't put a coupon in the collection plate. You, you better get that coupon out that collection plate. <laughs> right there, right. Pod Squad, y'all think he's preaching to y'all. He's fussing me out. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> subliminal. Hey, man, when the word hit, man, let him use it, man. Very <laughs> moving. Feel like you're right there in front of the pulpit. <laughs> and everything the preacher say in this middle right here he ain't saying that <laughs> but it sounds like <laughs> I've often thought about being uh, uh, being in the clergy but I can't talk like I talk in that field so when they got that cussing preacher on YouTube so you can join oh yeah that, yeah, that, that guy is a left <laughs> <laughs> let's give it a let's give it a Freddie Gibbs had him on a skit I think he said we're gonna call this one uh, a fucker cue <laughs> I give a fuck. <laughs> fuck a cube. <laughs> fuck you, bar- uh, Fuck you, barbecue. I was like, what in the world is this guy? <laughs> I bet the chicken I, and the ribs good. I still rather listen to him than that other guy that um, my parents be listening to with that voice. He come in sounding like this, like he smoked like 60 cigarettes. And then I'd be hearing him in whatever. And he's talking about that girl in the front. With that wild dress, you can't be just doing all that and then think you can come to the church every day. These hoochie mamas and hoes and stuff. I'm like, did he just say ho? <laughs> oh, man. Like, God hey, damn, what is that in your throat? That <laughs> sounds like some fuckery. All kinds of fuckery. Oh, yeah. The good and the fuckery. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wow, I'm all one a day. Uh, yeah. Um, I, this is a. I'm gonna start uh this uh segment of the good and the fuckery with some I missed last week. I probably should have hit on this last week, but I forgot all about it because that was a that was a big list of fuckery that week, and mm-hmm. a lot of good too. But um, yeah, Ted Cruz and that winter Cancun can uh, vacation while everybody ah. in Texas was freezing. Yeah, that's the biggest level of fuckery right there. Yeah, man, and then they don't even some stop folks, right there. Some of them folks still ain't got power yet. He blamed he blamed it on his wife. Then he blamed it on his kids. Then <laughs> like the kids wanted to go Cancun. Who thinks about Cancun in the middle of the freaking one? <laughs> yeah, ain't no kids thinking about no damn Cancun. That's you, champ. The kids got That's together. A vacation right there. <laughs> Ain't no damn children. And, and no. the other kids found they, out they about it. They might have said Disney World, not no damn Cancun. <laughs> the other kids found out about it, and they said they asked their parents if they could go. So we all went on a trip conveniently right when the um when the world the, 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 the worst thing that has ever happened to Texas that you would never expect to happen to Texas hit. Nobody would have ever thought that hell for I mean Texas froze over. You saw what I did there. S- mm-hmm. Froze over right then and there. And um the main person that seems like the benefited out of this was Jerry Jones and um his investments to the electric and gas company in Texas. Oh, wow. He says he has been because of the extreme situations of Texas in that winter storm, the gas prices have skyrocketed, which uh-huh. actually put into his pocket. I think it ain't don't Jerry Jones own um the Cowboys. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Texas, I want you to really think about who y'all vote into the next um elections or whatever. Because mm-hmm. the people that you let this be an example of the people that y'all have like cheered for and just you know, made excuses for for the fuckery that they do. You know, people tend to not care about other people's fuckery until their fuckery fucks with them. Mm-hmm. And Texas is definitely being fucked with, <laughs> pretty much. So, yeah. like, fuck you, Ted like, Cruz. Like, really think about that. Y'all been this way for y'all been voting these people in for this long, and it's obvious that they are doing it for the money and the and the um, what do you say? The status and the power, and not really caring about your benefit at all, or whatever. Now, mind you, a lot of things I can say is outside. Um, it's like outside of what they could really prepare for, because this is Texas. There's no way their infrastructure was ready for a snowstorm. Hey, like, no. like winter. No, no, the response no, could have been better. The response definitely could have been better. All right. Now I just want to give out that little bit of tidbit of like what had what they had to go against. But the simple fact that you know what you got to go against. You've never been in a snowstorm before. Your your um, wires and lines in the area to give electricity has never experienced that before. That like your your gas and water and electric and utilities have never experienced that before, and it's happening. You would think with as much pool as the state of Texas would have, they would put something together to try to have a better response. But, yeah, um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because I missed that. And, you know, Ted Cruz is a fuckboy anyway. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> On to more fuck fuck boys and <laughs> And everything hey, you yeah. fucking stand for. Gotta get all the politicians. Mitch, Nancy, Ted, all of them to be on um, the media a little too much. But now, yeah, next next tidbit. Um, Bazzino's daughter, um, mm-hmm. Coy mm-hmm. Leroy, uh, Leroy. Leroy. <laughs> Coy it just fit. It's Libra. It's called the Ray. It's called the Ray. I'm probably saying it wrong. 
Oh my god. Oh man. So uh what was she on? That's his daughter's name for real. Nah, it's Leray. It's C O I L E R A Y. That's that's what it is. But um I said it right, but it just sounds funny. Call it Leroy. That sounds funny. Anyway, I'm probably gonna get you messed up her name. But um, she, she says no, her that. Uh, messed up her name. Yeah, yeah. That she you says she's embarrassed. Um, no, she she messed up the name on another way because she says she's embarrassed of Benzino and his antics. Oh, what oh is he pretty doing? much. I ain't heard um, from Benzino in a minute. Says love and hip hop. You know, with social media, you you can always have some type of audience. He's back at it talking about Eminem. Before and him and Royce man, Lord, man. got into it. Boy, that is so long but, ago. Let it go, but, brother. But that don't got nothing to do with um Was it like 03? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And that don't got nothing to do with um what we're talking about. It's like um she was on um this podcast, I think it's called the lipstick something lip talk podcast. I forgot. But Angela Yee is a part of it or whatever, because I saw it on like lip um, service. Lip service, yeah, exactly. But um, she, Angelie was up there. Was like, yeah, I wasn't sure about this because I know your father was said something, um, some bad words about me, and I was feeling some type of way with it. But I don't want how I feel about your father be interfe- interfere with your success, pretty much. And she was just expressing how. Ain't no beefing with Angelie too. There's, you know, Angela, you got the rumor report and she probably was like actually stated something that happened probably to what he when when he was um, talking junk back and forth with Royce or whatever. And she probably said something saying how, how she feel about the subject and he disagreed because you, you know how I, we talked about it before, how celebrities be testing their celebrity and they be feeling like their celebrity is bigger than their actual Benzino ain't that big celebrity. of a celebrity though. I think he might be overvaluing himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's 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 definitely yeah, that one little song with May Men and uh the locks and then Who? Benzino and then he was the owner of the source or whatever or the editor for that was show. it. And he and gave then, himself uh, he, he gave funny. himself then five mics. Who Benzino <laughs> Oh, Stevie J friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the no oh. name. Yeah, you know, oh. he used to um be in charge of the source. Althea X Man. Oh, Althea X Man. Oh, okay. TT. <laughs> TT. Hey, TT. Uh, but yeah, she was just saying that she was saying how um she um like she's not trying to let's say he burned a lot of bridges or whatever Mm -hmm. that could have been beneficial for her and he's and she don't try to act like him or whatever um with certain say which which is is understandable she's somebody in the like why has she been in it is she famous or is she uh, she got a music career music okay Okay. yeah starting a music career or whatever but I really, I don't even feel like what they said on lip service was even that bad or whatever. Like he, she, she even said like, yeah, and um, that's why you know shows like this is good because she, he can see you for what, what you are, Angela Yee, and you're not what he said it was, and then see that hey, she's a good person. Maybe I was just in my feelings or whatever, but that's not how Benzino felt. Benzino goes out and says, it's funny to see shit like this. These people here, including Koi, are delusional. Stop playing victim, Angela Yee. You talk shit about people. Then when you get checked, you are a victim, like Gucci, like the Gucci situation. I don't even remember what happened, but I'm not a bully. So if if said if I said something, you deserved it and you alluded to not dealing with with her, but guess what? You hold no weight in this industry, period. So who cares? Blah 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 yada blah, yada yada. And it, wait, he knows she's no. more relevant to him. 
evidently he doesn't. He he <laughs> he, he, he does not. Oh, and he says for his daughter, uh, as for Coy, I'm not even going to ignore. I'm going to ignore her foolishness like I've been. Um, but eventually, since she wants to keep tarnishing my name, I'll have to tell my side, and she don't want that. So another day, and in this fake as clout chaos, if I don't gotta prove nothing to anybody, yo, you your spend, daughter. yo. Wait, this is this is the thing. This this is the thing about Benzito or whatever. No, you tarnished your own name. You own the source and made your group have five mics in the source, which is the highest like level of mics you could have as a rapper, right? Under your name. That's and isn't that a suspect? The yeah, yeah. Especially when we done heard you rap, sir. No, yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> you ain't hitting no five mic on nothing. You might have bought five average. microphones. It's not now, mind you, I'm not going to doubt anybody's achievements because you have made some radio hits, but I have not liked what radio one, one of them. Not one. I don't yeah, know. one song. It was going to crash the party. It was the party. Something party. I don't know. I don't know. It was something like that. It was going to crash the party. song I remember him had is the jump party. Like the belly soundtrack with a uh, mate with a uh, lock. He had a little moment or whatever, but that moment I never been regional because he, he ain't hit the 804 with that shit. <laughs> you did not hit the 804 with that bullshit. But no, eh, I did never like the songs. I never did. And then you spend your, your career whole... went as far as your neck, sir. The the, the part is I don't think I've never listened to a Benzino song. <laughs> you probably not the only one, my friend. You, I've never you heard probably... a Benzino song. You probably are not the only one, my friend, but, but whatever. But he had a little run in between the Nelly Flow Rider era, some sometime then. But I never heard the, of it. And thank God you had it. <laughs> but but he what is the name with, of the song No, <laughs> no, I just never uh, heard. No, I never heard of. He never. He I never literally heard never heard of it. Mm. Mm. But he ends it with, I don't got to prove nothing to anybody, to anyone. And he spent his whole Instagram is him in the gym showing, <laughs> showing off. I don't get it. I just, I don't know. I have, a, I have a thing about men that have more than like three selfies in a row on Instagram. Like, if I scroll through and I don't see that one meme, I'm going to feel so, you, you kind of suspect. It's this something off stick, about this you. That's why I stick to Twitter. Mm. I ain't got to see shit. I ain't got to see what you look like. Let me read mm. what you said. Let me see this meme. I mean, I'll, I'll be looking. Like, I'll just be trying to look for memes, man. And then, nah, man, I ain't trying to look at your workout plan, dog. I don't care what you do. <laughs> just need to stop following man. them. I don't. I don't. I don't want to follow him. I usually unfollow him once I find out yeah, that. I just be looking for me. Unexplore line, you know, you got my algorithm adjusts. <laughs> it adjusts. Um, and then my last yeah, I'm little looking at no next. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? You over there looking at no next wall, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only went up. I only went on um Benzino drop for the second. Niggas looking like this. Hey, no. <laughs> 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 they do got a neck like the juggernaut, man. Like oh, <laughs> <laughs> they look like somebody smacked oh, with a, a pan and it's why, in why the body. Old niggas popping up on your timeline. What is happening? <laughs> Just, no, I got that. Like, no, I got that off oh, of Angela Yee, man. And I just went on his oh, Instagram to actually God. get that quote. That's the only reason why I went on his Instagram oh, to get oh, that quote. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh my crazy. God. They got me crying. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Oh, that shit got just a slow, but when it hit, it hit. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You ain't right. You ain't right. All right, oh, so we're in, we're in this, this good and fuckery with a story from Obama. 
<clears throat> Obama says uh, he broke his friend's nose for calling him a racial slur. That wasn't a friend. He should have broken nose. Uh, that was about the same same thing I said myself, sir. But he was um he was on the interview. Um, what is that? Uh, in an interview with rock legend Bruce Springsteen, or whatever, him and they basically was talking about race relations in America, or whatever. So <clears throat> he brings up this story. So listen, when I was in school, I had a friend. We played basketball together. Said Obama. <laughs> and one time we got into a fight. And he called me a com. He said he called me a coon. That's what he said. A coon. It was a coon. I was like, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they had they had deleted it out or whatever. <laughs> now, first of all, ain't no coons in Hawaii, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things that when he might not even know. What a coon was. What he knew was, I can hurt you by saying this. He continued. And oh. I remember I popped him in the face and broke his nose. And we were in the locker room. <laughs> good man, Obama. Good man. Good stuff. Good stuff, child. Obama said that mm. it's, the, <clears throat> it's the person's thought pattern that leads to these verbal attacks, which ultimately lead to more destructive and violent behavior. That basic psychology... Wait, no, let me use his voice. That basic psychology that then gets institutionalized is used to justify dehumanizing somebody, taking advantage of them, cheating them, stealing from them, killing them, breaking them. I think my Obama voice kind of sound like a a pimped out Malcolm X voice, but I, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your Obama voice sound just like them men that scroll it down your timeline. <laughs> the hell? No neck. No neck. <laughs> the no neck effect. I'm gonna put my timeline on the screen so y'all can see. You know, no neck gum goo. Please don't, shape. please don't. I'm good. I don't want to see nothing that's going down your timeline. I'm straight. I am afraid. That's how my name's But they don't got no Goomba niggas up there, no man. Niggas come after me. I'm, you know what I did see on my timeline? I'm line? sorry, no necker. Remember when I laughed and I was like, yeah, uh, you come over here with the honey on your ass? I actually saw the girl on Instagram with yeah. honey on her ass. See see how the universe works? <laughs> oh, look at that. You manifested that. <laughs> Ain't that right? Ain't in real life, but hey, at least it's on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about why he's single. Why I'm why I am single. I should have said, I screwed that all up. X that out. Let's restart this. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about why I'm single. Well, okay. actually, the fears the fears of a single man. Mm, yeah, whatever. tell me because I have no idea about that life. I, <laughs> I feel like I'd be learning so much from you. Um. So I was, you know, on YouTube just looking up what I could find, probably find some topics for the show and everything or whatever. And then I saw this uh, white lady, random TikTok video or whatever. And just out of the blue, she was like, y'all wonder why men don't commit. No, it's not that men has a fear of commitment. Just look at the stuff that you're trying to teach them. She was like, happy wife, happy life. Sounds like servitude to me. <laughs> if the <laughs> Then she said, if the wedding isn't three months of if if the wedding ring isn't three months of your salary don't bother proposing and now uh, the wedding that's hers that's her special day not yours whatever and then she goes for us go further it says if 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 the wife uh goes so do uh the kids pretty much she said all that in the middle of a tiktok around pretty much. And she says, it's not that commitment is going down. No being thought as, uh, men being thought as a commodity commodity more is going up, pretty much. So I really really looked into it and I was like, you know, all right, I get where she's coming from because like when I as a single guy and a lot of your friends are in relationships 
or whatever, majority of the time, because, yeah, I've been single for a whole decade. You start hearing a lot of relationship horror stories. You know, they like friends getting divorced, how bad the divorce go, even with within the within the relationship or whatever. It seems like the, the wife don't even want to listen to them or respect anything they got to say or anything like that. And then you start thinking, you know, listening to it. I mean, you think to yourself, why? would I just jump full-fledged into that? You know, like, like, it's not that I think all relationships is like that. It's just that hearing these horror stories, I'm a bit more precautious about just jumping into any old relationship, as every, any person should. But I have talks with my female friends, and they'll say, like, uh, so are you afraid of commitment? And I'm like, no. But you haven't been with one and nobody in a while. It was like, I'm not the one afraid of commitment. Whatever. It's just that I don't see anybody worth committing to. And nobody is like in a big hurry to commit. So it's not just the men that's not, you know, that's afraid of commitment nowadays. More so, it probably is the, the women. Like, the, the marriage rate in America is, like, completely down. It was, like, an all-time low in 2018. There's mm -hmm. censuses um, that's out there that says that pretty much the people that get married at the prime age, like, 30 or whatever, is that's low, slowing down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's just people a little bit, like, more thinking into just jumping in a full-fledged re like relationship commitment for the rest of their lives with the person like they really want to see like me I really want to see who that person is before I jump right into it like that's just me I don't want to be in that situation where I'm living with this person but they're not listening to a goddamn thing I have to say it's like, what's the fucking point of me being in this relationship? I'm sorry, face. <laughs> I'm sorry, face. It's just like, see, me, it's like, and it's like, I, like, I, I, I black out. I black out. Like, as soon as I start feeling like, all right, if, if, if it's just you saying everything, if it's just you talking or whatever, and I'm coming to see you. I might go. You might see less of me after a while. Like just in general, if you don't got, like, it, it's it's almost like a like a culture of just get the man, but just to say I have the man. Hmm. I don't really even care what that man likes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what had to get me like. What gives me is like you knowing little simple small stuff or whatever. Like, um, yeah, he don't like this drink. You know what? He likes this particular type of food. Hey, he actually is into this type of of hobby. You know what I'm saying? Things like that or whatever. But his people in relationships, been with him for a while, they don't know nothing about each other. More of a situation. It's more of a situation ship, as Fabulous would say. Well, mm -hmm. like these, these are the fears that I have. Like I saw another woman, whatever, and she was talking about reproductive rights that a man has, or whatever. So she she said that if a if a woman gives birth to a child and decide that they don't want that child anymore. Or whatever. If they don't want the child anymore, they can get they have the right to get an abortion. They can have the child and leave it at a church or an orphanage or something like that, and it won't be looked at or frowned upon or whatever. Um, but she, what she was good at is like there's a lot of rights that women have that men don't or whatever. A, a man cannot decide that hey, I don't want this child anymore. Mm -hmm. And. It, I, I, Oh, go ahead. Not, not to say that that's what I am. It's just like, it seems like it's a lot of things 
I don't want to say. Give me some work to commit into. Like, it seems like there's a lot of things that could end up being a trap. Then more than a relationship or whatever. And I know well, you yeah, justify that by did. finding. Yeah, by finding the right, right one and this, that, and the third or whatever. But like, at the same time, it's like a lot of people dated <laughs> before they got to make the date end up divorcing. You know, yeah. like, like how did they get to that point? I Pretty would, much, like, I would say I agree with some of what you say as far as like your fears. I think there a lot of them are very valid fears to have, uh, mm-hmm. especially if you haven't been in like a marriage type relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe in the last sentence of what that first lady said as far as commitment may not be going down it's more that men are being thought of as a commodity i do see that increasing in just like the younger culture and Mm -hmm. what i see on you know in hearing music and that type of thing um but i don't think that happy wife happy life mean that you live in life as a slave i think it more mean that you're doing your part as a man like because it's happy husband or 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 happy hubby or we're gonna be getting a divorce (laughs) <laughs> like, I, I mean, like, I, like, shit ain't right in the house if daddy mad either. Like, if daddy mad, house ain't gonna be looking the same for a minute, the same way as a woman. I think it's just that for a lot of it, it's just about making each other happen. So it ain't really a slave thing. If you, I, I think a lot of it come from like maybe she's witnessing a lot of bad relationships, and it is a lot of them out there, but. Mm-hmm. As a person that's not in that type of relationship, I'm like, what? No, it ain't no yeah. slave in my house. I, I'm, I wear the, the very big pants in this house. Um, and <laughs> have no issues with having a happy wife at the same time. Like, I, I don't know that it's a slave thing. And the wedding, the wedding thing you ain't got to be scared of. You do a destination wedding. You're going to come out paying just about uh, maybe a couple of grand. And you're going to be able to have your honeymoon at the same time. And all of it be a one nice little package for you. And the people that can make it, that they make it. And if they don't, you get with them when you get back home. Oh, but, there you go. But it's cheap. And like, and the wedding is not just her day. That's definitely, it was definitely my day too, damn it. I was styling the profile and you couldn't tell me shit. Yeah, damn it, this is me. Look at, look at what I'm doing. Hey, y'all. Like it was a big deal for me. I think I think it all comes from the perspective that you enter it with and the person that you end up even discussing that type of a deal with. Like I think if you're dealing with fuck people, all of those fears will probably come true. Mm-hmm. If you're dealing with the right person, they won't. And that's how you know. Like, but I'm a big fan too, though, of dating for a long time before you get married. Like I, I've been with my wife for going on 16 years, but I, we've only been actually married for the past, what, about to be six. Like, we was in a strong 10-year relationship to where we got a chance to go from not living together to living together to dealing with all of the bullshit in between and seeing how each other would react to it. So I think that, like, I'm a big proponent of, like, you can be engaged for a while, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to get married. And I think a lot of people, what they do is they get so stuck on the wedding date that they, mm-hmm. that they like rush things. Like if the marriage feel rushed, something wrong. If it feel like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what the shit is when you dating people. But I also would add to that when you dating, you can't be dating fuck people. Like you got to kind of choose your pool that you pick it from. Like, it's just like fishing. Like if you go to the bullshit pond that only got guppies and minnows in that bitch, that's all you're gonna catch. But if you go to the river where they got some some, some loud some big mouth bass and some and some spot and some all that, then that's what you're gonna catch. You know what I mean? Like wherever you cash your reel, that's what you're gonna catch. So like give yourself the best chance to get someone that's quality by finding a place where women who have those qualities that you're looking for are more likely to congregate. But if you're looking for a wife and you keep meeting bras at the club or meeting bras at the gas station, that might not be the smartest place because them them women may be of a 
may have a limit on their quality just based off the circumstances they in, the life they live, their their current lifestyle. So you gotta like mm-hmm. that what they, what they say in the Bible, you gotta be equally yoked. And I think it start by like dating people that are equally yoked. Then yeah. then you're gonna for one, you're gonna be able to find your person a little easier because they actually have a higher chance of meeting the standards that you're looking for in a woman. But then two, like you don't deal with as much bullshit when you don't deal with bullshit people. You know what I mean? So I, I think that coming to it too. But I think you got some valid fears that I mean, like, hey, I always say, man, I'm glad I'm married because that single life these days seems like it is scary. So I now, understand. Now, <laughs> I now mind you, I'm being fearful, Chance. <clears throat> now I, I really real. don't real. I just brought up the the wedding thing because that's what she brought up or whatever. She more carried it like the way the media shows like how weddings and everything is just is like just strictly for the woman or whatever the way they I, I think that she was more like how the media portrays how women think of relationships and commitment or whatever more more than <clears throat> that thing of because at the same at the I'm I'm humble. Man, finish your sentence. What the hell did you say? Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm, I was like, I just I got to a person. What did you but say? What did, like I you, got to, you feel like you was on the way to a point, then you just cut it off. I got to wait. Like, oh, hold on. Like, um, get saying. back to that. Uh, you finish that. By point, I was saying before. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Hey. laughs> this is killing me, man. All right, it's uh, the, in the background is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> but. I don't. I don't really care. I probably wouldn't care too much about what who the wedding is for. Like you know, like, like I don't know. I'm. I think I, if I was to have a wedding, man, you, don't get, you don't give a fuck about their wedding shit. That what you're trying to yeah, say. Right. You more. You more about the the, 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 the the real stuff. I understand. Yeah, like I don't. I, I wouldn't really it's care. Terrible. And I think that was that's any basic Thank man or whatever. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate he won't, go, he won't go get to that for nothing, boy. God, he was so scared to say that. What I'm trying to say is, no, no, I was I'm trying to actually find the words to say. <laughs> oh, I don't give a fuck about that weird shit. That's what you're trying See, to say. Very yeah, succinct, concise, and I, I get I, it. I, yes, I should have. I was trying to find a nicer way of saying it, but I should have just said it the way mm-hmm. I was thinking it. But, but yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't perfectly. It's ad, I don't give a fuck. See, we say I don't give a fuck. It's, it's, it, it goes for so much shit. So I don't give a fuck about that. Whatever you want to say, right there. I don't give a fuck about yeah, it. I, 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 I wouldn't give a fuck about wedding or planning a wedding or anything. I'd probably just go and like, all right, what do you want? What can we afford? What can we do? <laughs> Pretty much. And just deal with it just like that. Or and ain't nothing but, wrong with that approach. But I, I think the way she was catering it, um, the way she was saying it is like, like with there's really nothing that caters to men or whatever like like valentine's day really media wise caters to women see the if you are just talking about media then yeah, okay i get that yeah like, that's that's what i don't live in media so that don't that's no. why i guess i disagree like, <clears> that's okay. that's why yeah. i said okay. that's why i wanted to cross over and say i don't really give a fuck about the wedding thing but yeah like if you really is it a day for men other than Father's Day, and then you—if you're not a no. father, you don't. Yeah, if if you're not a father, then that's really not your day either. So, <laughs> day, for, day. day for me is any day I tell. It's any day I tell everybody, "Hey, I'm taking the day off today. Y'all go ahead and figure it out." That's the day. Man. That's my Arbor day. day. I pick my own day. Arbor Day. What the hell <laughs> you, you say? Arbor now? Day. <laughs> 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 I heard I heard it was a steak a steak and BJ day, but I don't even know how yeah, true that is. Roots. I mean, we, we, we got Mo, we got Movember. Movember? Something like that. I don't know what that's really for, but I think it's when all the men grow beards. I don't know, some shit like Taco that. Tuesday. Uh, I love Taco Tuesday. <laughs> See? I think, I think Tuesday. I think Titty Tuesday was my Tuesday. And I think that's the one day they actually caters to men. That but don't. They get married. You out here chasing titties instead of love. <laughs> <laughs> but he chasing what he loves. <laughs> I want a business. <clears throat> I'm not really caring. Not you want a business with titties? No, nah, I just <laughs> want a business. I'm not really like out here trying 
my heart is to find someone. I'm just waiting for that to happen. But you know, in the meantime of me doing that, you like I have you. these fears in the back of my mind. Like, if I'm going to be, it, it's more like, if I'm going to settle down with somebody, this person has to be special. Because I've been out. Mm-hmm. For, I'm used. The only thing I have is my peace. You know what I'm saying? When I'm by myself <laughs> all alone, I have my peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need nobody taking my peace away or whatever. I need somebody to increase the peace. And if it ain't increasing the peace, it ain't fucking working. Fair enough. Oh, I ain't got no argument there. Yeah, that, that's all it is to it. Big on peace. Serenity. Serenity now. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Somebody always trying to get a peace of mind. That's why I gotta carry my peace. That's what Andre said. So on the from getting peace of mind to somebody who's always disturbing the peace. It's time for Tizzy's Umar weekly update. Oh, not little Chris, (laughs) Umar. Well. It's a little bit of a short week for Umar this week, but he's still doing his weirdo shit. Um, so he had he started the week off with an IG live of him in somebody's backyard. He's running around with a yellow shirt. He got on some new jeans though, y'all. He got on some new jeans. He done freed them jeans. Amen to that. Let's just give it up for the you know them jeans finally getting out of bondage. He done emancipated them. My lord, but he's out in his backyard <laughs> and he's yelling, yelling about one wives, yelling about he ain't got nowhere to do his book signing in Oakland, so he needs somebody in Sacramento. They let him come speak at their hair salon or their barbershop or their church. He's I'm still trying to figure out why nobody ever calls him to come to their place. He's always begging to come to somebody else's house. So that's just weird to me. At a barbershop in a At church. the most requested. Yep, for a book sign. Uh-huh. He can come to my barbershop. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, <laughs> yes, no, I cut my own hair and I don't own a barbershop. <laughs> they only use well, the that's probably taste. where. <laughs> well, that's probably where he gonna uh, need to come. Because uh, apparently Oakland didn't really have none for him. So, in the middle of this yelling and, and begging, he takes out a bottle of water and drinks some of it. Then just pours it on his head and start rubbing it in, talking about he needed some ashe, ashe. Some ashe, ashe. I thought ashe was more of a like a an affirmative type of thing where you're saying, you know, like almost like amen, like, you know, right. Yeah. Over, yes, I agree. I understand. Not it was water rubbing it on his head, but what the hell do I know? So he just rubbing the water on his head. Then he lay down in the middle of this backyard and he starts talking about he needs some wives and he needs some wives to rub his feet and to handle his big toes. And he says he's not going to the Asians because he's not going to let no China man rub on his big toes. He says he needs a, some black women out there to rub his feet with some hot shea butter, some hot lemon juice, <laughs> some hot agave, <laughs> some hot guacamole, and other food-based items. He is the he's poster a, boy of hotel. He said hot agave, hot agave and hot guacamole. So you I'm, want tequila root <laughs> and, and salsa and chips on your feet. What is that with your boy, man? And there's somebody that's claiming a, he is a South school, a clinical school psychologist, and he wants to open a school for black boys. I'm avoiding commitment. He asked it for wives, multiple. Oh, but after he's asked for this, and I said he wanted people to rub hot guacamole on his feet, he then said, he needs his woman to handle his big toes and wash his feet like the black Christ he is. So now he's this? Jesus, y'all. Now he Jesus. Yo, <laughs> he yo. This, this yo, Negro it, is Jesus now. He been Oh he was, my Jesus. Jesus ain't never talking about no rub my feet with no hot guacamole. 
Jesus ain't never begged for no money. Jesus never said, had to. He, Jesus said he was gonna come down for his hands and he did it. Nigga, you ain't over your school yet. And you out here worried about rubbing your big toes <laughs> with grease and, and shea butters and lemon juice. What the fuck? And people what actually- What is happening? And people sending you money. People what are is actually going on? People actually requested for Jesus and continue Bruh. to request for Jesus. Bruh. Jesus after. ain't never, Jesus ain't <laughs> never had no problem finding a venue to speak. Jesus was talking to multitudes of 5,000 people. Negro, you got like 20 people in a convenience store coming to see you. And it's and half of them be the same people every damn every damn city. He was he was on live like all day, one day. He always on IG like, live. I just, like, but never doing day. anything productive. He's just on there talking the same yeah. stuff, talking the same misinformation about special education, calling people lazy, calling people coons. Talking about One grits, talking about wives, and now he done added in rubbing water on his head, talking about getting his big toes rubbed while calling himself Jesus. Where's the man? I'm getting tired of this. Ooh, my man, bro, I, it's like this is a cartoon at this point. He then right. goes on another live <laughs> where some lady that made him some chocolate covered strawberries. So he gets to kissing her on the cheek and all up in her face. Not a mask in sight in the room. Everybody in there just sharing COVID. <laughs> he just breathing high Ooh. breath on these folk and they breathing right back on him. Here's some fresh COVID for you right here. Like <laughs> kissing on somebody, <laughs> kissing on this lady. You don't know if that lady, kid watching, you don't know who this lady is from Adam. She just made you some strawberries and now you feel the right to kiss on her. Then he was on another live where he's just sitting in the restaurant, nodding his head to music and showing the menu. That was what he was doing. What is the purpose of these lives at this point? Why are we still lying to ourselves, people who support Uma? Why are you telling yourself that this is actually somebody who's opening a school with your money? He's never doing anything to renovate the school. He, he's not even a real black leader at this point. Like, where was he in Texas helping with the power crisis? Why, is your, why are you not at the school renovate? Why are you not so well working on policy change to actually help our people? Why are you not doing anything productive during your day but sitting on Instagram Live talking about women and making up weird stuff like learning disabilities grow on trees and talking about your big toe calling yourself Jesus. What the hell does this have to do with FDMG Academy? Where's the school, Uma? Another school year is almost over and we are still looking at them same abandoned builders with more year Academy signs everywhere and their basketball uniforms. When you gonna actually have something? You done let the jeans go. Now let it's this so dream crazy. go. Stop it, Uma. Stop he's it. He's so creepy, man. He, when you be talking about women, he's so creepy. He, he is like, a sexual predator, bro. That just, but I figured ew. out. I got my top six reasons why the Uma supporters stay stuck on his message. I figured it out. It's one of these six things. You Uma supporters, you fit into one of these six categories. I promise you. They are often uneducated on the topics he speaks on. See, see, dumb niggas sound real smart when they in a room full of other dumb people. But they don't know no better. So everything he say that's, that's over three syllables, they be like, oh my God, it's got to be true. He's saying it so articulately. I, I understand. Mm. <laughs> or they're in category two. They are lonely women or, or women who are looking for a man and are single. So they instead of even paying attention to what he's saying, they just attracted to him. So they just support him blindly. So they're willing to ignore all of the other stuff, hoping that he gives them some play. I.e. a uh, stripper bay that he had a couple of years ago. Oh, stripper bay. Number three category <laughs> to be in with my supporters. They are often single parents who are just looking for a father figure for their child. They've already exhausted their efforts in their own lives. So at this point, they're just looking for any man 
that fits what they consider to be manhood criteria. If you're a big dude, okay, cool. You're six four. You can teach my son. Like, please, just I need some help. So I oh, think he got it's a just exhausted women. Yeah, that's just like <laughs> oh, oh uh, he can teach you. You, son. you you look like a man. We'll go ahead and let you you know spew your speak your speech to them. The fourth category mm -hmm. is they know he's a fraud, but they're too far in to admit they've made a mistake. It's kind of like to go back to that cult thing, like you don't follow them so far. And now that he's over the deep end, it's like, shit, if I go back now, then I'm going to look like a sucker. I'm going to feel stupid. So let me just ride it out then. I'll just stick with it because at least I know this. I, I'm scared of what people are going to think of me if I if they realize I done dropped $3,000 on this damn school. That's never going to happen. Or if they realize that I've been supporting this man for 13, 14 years and I still ain't seen nothing. Like, I think they too far in there, scared to admit they made a mistake. Like a Trump supporter, yeah. Like when the um, shit didn't hit the fan, I, I'm gonna just Jim go Jones, the fan too. Cult leader, yeah. Yeah, everything's yep. about him. David since Jim Jones ish, yeah. All of that. Hell, the, the people with the Nikes and the Kool Aid and the Helly Bop comment, them people, mm. all of it. Yep. Oh yeah, them niggas. Oh, yep. it, once it go too know. far, sometimes you that's that the Scientology <laughs> folks. Like once it gone too Q9. far, like you feel weird. It, it, it's hard to go back, so you just ride it out. Capital building you go. people. Absolutely. Yeah. Another group. A bunch of goofy motherfuckers. What'd you say? A bunch of goofy motherfuckers. Yes. Goofies mm. following a goofy. Mm -hmm. And they with the goofy shit, according to the He's going to be the next head. Jim Jones. The lighter, <laughs> the lighter, clearer. The fifth category is they're not actually true supporters, but they figure they can attach themselves to him and use his notoriety to kind of launch themselves. These are people like uh, what they call a dude, Dusty Dawn, who started his own little YouTube channel now, coming off of the Umar <clears throat> thing. Uh, the lady Tiffany, like these people who are kind of around Umar and they act like they support him, but I don't know that they really want to support him as much as they just like the notoriety attack. So they using it as their platform to launch them into their quote unquote fame. If you like Umar, you will like. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, come over here, get this Uma light. You know, not all, not all the Uma antics, but enough of them to keep you here. Come watch uh, Hotel Panda. <laughs> Hotel Panda. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Panda. Hotel Panda. Oh shit. In I'm in church, Temple Ross, uh, uh, House of Negroism. Luxor Amenhotep University <laughs> School mm -hmm. <laughs> of Harry Don't know Dolly how to Dolly. spell Egypt. Don't right. know how to spell Comet. <laughs> they be spelling it Kamet and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the last category that they could fit in. And this is what kind of I fit into when I was still back in my days when I thought he was a normal person and I had donated. They like his rhetoric, but honestly do not know his reputation with the school is 12 years old and counting, nor do they realize about his erratic behavior. Because he I got too. some people that only see him on Fox Soul or Roland Martin or Breakfast Club. They've never seen him on Lord Jamal or like his IG Live. So they don't even realize that he got this crazy nutty side. They just see him when he's That was me. Like when he's just repeating his little speech, you know what I mean? So, and that was me. Like once I found out, I was like, oh my God, uh, I gave money to that. The, oh. uh, what got me, what got me feeling like, uh, all right, maybe I need to watch what he's doing because he's he looking kind of crazy or whatever. Like, um, who was it? My aunt, I was talking to my aunt Sherry about the dude, whatever. Like, um, just like some of the stuff that he would talk about, like black schools and just stuff like that. Cause at the time I was actually doing a paper on implicit biases with, um, with mm -hmm. teachers. Now teachers have mm -hmm. implicit biases, just the black mm -hmm. kids in general or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like in tune with whatever he was talking about. And then she was like, yeah, I agree with certain things, but there's some things he just don't, I don't know about him. And like, as soon as she said that, I was like, yeah, let me check this guy out. And then the more I got into the wormhole, it's like once the deeper you go down I got the wormhole, in. boy, that wormhole opened up into a whole new universe of just what the fuck are you doing? What is this? <laughs> you want to do what with your big toes? You want to fuck them babies, mama? 
You gonna punch the kids oh, in the man. chest? You say you gonna man. kill ten percent of them? Man, what? Man, it's gonna come a time where your queen want her cookies crushed. I'm like, what does come this on, got to? What does is that where the is that where the cookie crush weirdo, chat man. come from? Is that what it is? Yes, they come from the cookie that, crush. Yes. That, that, yes, that that video. Oh, okay. every joke in the cookie crush chat is based off of some retarded thing Yo. that Umar has done, and we've been like, "What?" I seen that video. You like, gotta laugh could... to keep from crying at this point, man. It's like the destruction of a black man. Like, he is he is doing the art of failure to himself, like <laughs> every week, and it just gets weirder and weirder <laughs> and weirder. <sighs> He's the architect to his own failure, man. I you, pray you for like... the day when I can come here and I can honestly say I have nothing to say about Umar anymore. He has finally given this up. And that's it, folks. Okay, we're going to move on now. New segment. But every Eric time Jackson. I think it's over, he does some old weird shit. As soon as Umar's He's done. Weird, now, <laughs> when soon I heard Zoom. that Negro say, rub my feet like the black Christ I am, and put hot guacamole on my big toes. Oh my God. And you lay in somebody's that. backyard with wet hair because you didn't pull hair. I know. <laughs> if you fall into one of those six categories, people that I named, it's not too late to get out. Ask for help. Wake your ass up. I was six. So yeah, like, you can. Yeah, nobody gonna judge you. <clears throat> Trust me. Hear from me first. I donated before. I get it. You might not know, but trust me. Go check YouTube. It's a lot on there. His, go to his Instagram and just listen to him. Listen to him with a critical <laughs> ear, not with an ear of let me give him the benefit of the doubt. But just listen to him as if you had never heard of this person before, mm -hmm. and all you know about them is they want to open a school for black children. And just listen. We well, can't me. keep doing this, people. What, what pissed me off is that at the time, I did think he was actually legit. I mean, I saw him at Breakfast Club or whatever, this, that, and the third. They don't. They usually don't have, like, some random person up there or whatever. And I'm telling people to look, listen to him. And then you do stupid shit. Now you're making me look crazy. They have brother polite man, too. Yeah, man. I'm about to start getting into him because, like, I, I started hearing things about him and I ain't really got deep into Brother Polite but Ooh, yeah. You don't have to go very deep with him. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. I, I, he's, I, he's I didn't. into that same Tom Foolery but he got called out on his shit a while back. I didn't. People I don't, know he's a scammer at this point. I didn't trust him because just the way he dressed and looked. Like he looked like he looked like he always about to be in the action movie or some junk, man. Like, why you got all these straps? Like, he come on a, a an interview dressed up with like look like a bulletproof vest and that same hat or whatever. Hey, he, like, he, he about to jump shit. out of helicopter he that with John Blaze too. He be out there like he is the yeah, flyest like, in be, America. No sir, he with probably still wear G unit G unit tank tops. <laughs> Like, you know, just, just, just. That's what he looked like. He still he looked like he still used G unit tank tops. I'm glad I never bought one of those. <laughs> yeah, I believe he probably allegedly was on that Tony Yayo. But um, yeah, <laughs> he is definitely in that same class with Umar. But the weird part is people realize about polite, and you don't hear about people really donating to him no more, like getting stuck mm -hmm. in his little scabs no more. But Umar is still a threat out here. Like people are still lining up to get his dude money. And you if you're up. giving him money, folks, give him money because you enjoy the antics on his speakers. And that and that and that be the reason. I ain't mad at you for that. I think not I, donate to this man if you think he's gonna open this school. It's not gonna happen. There's no plan, there's no logistics, there's no operations plan. There's no renovation plan. The school has looked the exact same for two years. It's not <clears throat> get over it, people. I think he he hasn't gotten the same light like um, Brother Polite because Brother Polite is in your face and loud a lot. Like Umar's like that, but he stays in his little like community of people. Like Brother Polite, like he he seems like he'll show up on any show 
or whatever loud and just in your face. At least with like Umar, he still has that. He still kind of sometimes give you that that um, conversation etiquette, so it can seem like as he's long as an actual talk scholar. About what, what he wants to talk about, as long yeah, as you agree yeah. with him, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you disagree but, with him, Lord Jesus. But brother, Paul, don't ask him no whatever. question. Don't ask him no question that's tough for him to answer. Lord Jesus, he go off. That's man. that's when you see the real the real he truth go off on your ass. But yeah, man, that's the end of my weekly Umar update. I'm sure next week it will be more weird and shit to discuss, sadly. But people, if you're in one of those six categories I named, please get out. Get help now. Just leave it alone. Find a better use of your money and your time and your energy and something that will actually get you the changes that you're looking for in your life. Because he ain't that challenge. Mm. But I tell you, who is it? Our Black Businesses of the Week. Week. There we go. Week. Week. So our first black business of this week is the Nicole Experience LLC. They are hair extensions and natural hair and just overall hair care service. They got a 4.9 rating on Facebook and they basically provide hair care services that cater to women and children specializing in the health of your hair. So if you got split ends or you got the breakage going on or you just, you know, need a new way to kind of get your hair back to its full luster, they who you need to holler at. Um, the Nicole experience takes pride in making each client feel special and boosting your confidence, lifting your spirits one strand at a time. You can find okay. them on Facebook at the Nicole experience. And that's N I C H O L E experience N I C H O L E experience. Or you can give them a call at 470-384-9345. They are located at 3747 main street in college park, Georgia. So if you need that hair, that 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 good wig splitting, go holler at them and get your hair done right. Um, our second business of the night is Landover University 1971. They are an apparel company with authentic designs coming straight from the Maryland area. They are a small black business, so please support them by going to visit their uh, group on Landover University 1971 on Facebook. That's Landover University, 1971, on Facebook. If you're from the DMV area and you rock with that, that style of clothing and you want to feel like you're back home and when you're away, go ahead and cop it. If you're in the DMV area and you just need that, that right fit to rep your brand, rep your city, rep your area, Landover University. And that's all I got I'm for the Black Business of the Week. Y'all got anything for them, guys? I'm not, I don't have nothing for this week, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely supporting black businesses, even though we outside of Black History Month. It's always good to invest in our community and always support black business. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so yeah, man, that is our basic show for the week. Thank y'all as always for listening, watching. You know, just joining the conversation. Please, please, please remember. Uh, the podcast will be coming out Wednesday at midnight on all streaming platforms. The audio version also drops on YouTube for those people who just don't have those other streaming platforms. But we are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, all your major podcast streaming sites. You can find us there every Wednesday night at midnight. Um, we also got uh, the video clips coming from the show. So if you like to kind of catch us in spots and kind of pick your area that talks to you, we drop video clips from the podcast throughout the week. Full video version usually drops on Tuesday. Um, Battle Rap is heating back up. Uh, we had an event that got canceled about a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, but this month, about a March, week ago, we got RBE dropping some stuff. We got URL with two big cards. So I will be having some more tears, <laughs> takes, Battle Rap blogs coming straight at you. Um, and yeah, man, continue to like, comment, share, subscribe our content, join us in the comments, Hit the have like a conversation button. with us. Hit the like button. It helps other people find us as well. So if you kind of dig into content, hit that like button so somebody else can find us as well. That is one of the best ways you can help us. Um, and then also, as always, if you want exclusive content, like the full video unedited of this episode is actually dropping tonight for my people on Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon, so they always get the full scoop early. Um, 
it's literally a five dollars a month on buy me a coffee to be signed up for a membership but you can also support and get access to exclusive content as well for as little as a dollar or you can join us on patreon and become a member there we have different member tiers um you can end up getting merch um you can have your ideas for topics given to us where we can do that. Um, and as we get our membership numbers up, we'll also, you know, be able to kind of do special shows just for members um, that are members only events where you guys get to interact with us on a more personal level. So, you know, join us in any one of those ways, man. What y'all got for them, Camps? Oh, uh, yeah. okay. still support uh, Marley's Moss because I'm still about to top some of those. Uh, Matriarch Gallery. I, I'm gonna hit them up. I'm about to learn a little bit of engineering and stuff, and I'm working on some of these video edits for these story times, man. Because, oh uh, man, I feel what you go through trying to edit all this stuff, man. It's so much little small stuff I'm trying to add in, whatnot. But yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we are there. Indeed. Face what you got yeah, coming up, man. Of course, you know I'm going to teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one. That's partner spelled P O D N A S dash closet. I know you know how to spell closet dash the number one. <laughs> also, just to let you know going forward, we found a new platform for the new store um, that will be coming open sooner than we thought. So as soon as we have an actual date, we will be publishing that date. Um, when we do come open, we're coming open with spring apparel already in the store. So promo code will be available as well. All right, getting yourselves right. That partner's gear coming for you for the warm weather, guys. We got, you know, it's about to drop on y'all. So go ahead and start getting you, get, getting ready. Because when it drop, you want to be one of the first ones on the street with it. Believe that. Believe that. Um, and shout out to Gator Girl 04 who just, uh, you know, supported us with $5 on Buy Me A Coffee. So she's going to finally get to see the exclusive thank content you, thank you, thank tonight you. before anybody else. And it's going to be unedited where she gets to see the unfiltered partners. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it usually ends up being pretty entertaining in between cuts and edits. Trust me, guys. So y'all don't want to miss this one. Um, I messed up so much. <laughs> And happy birthday to our homeboy John Cherry, man. You know, he's one of the happy one birthday, of the ones happy birthday, birthday, Cherry. One of our inner circle that's actually in the group chat. Uh, so it's his birthday today. Cool ass John Cherry. Throw your good cool ass shades on today, champ. And you know, be prosperous and have a joy-filled day, my brother. There you go. Yeah, man. But as always, man, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz. The other third of Padawan here. Yeah. That's my ad lib for this day. <laughs> this day, I was here. <laughs> and we were here, and now we out. Peace out, guys. See y'all next week, man. Peace out. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of The Partners, your boy Tiz, along with the other third of The Partners, The Padawan, here with. Yeah, man, it's me facing the place, just trying to stay on pace with this race. Stay on pace, ahead of the race. Got some new shoelace. All that good shit. Yeah. I'm going to find a new word oh, every week to rhyme with my name. There's <laughs> any. It's a lot of them. <laughs> Ain't that many for Padawan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to it down a pat. Pat, Roger, tat, tat. If I yeah. do syllables, syllables, Padawan, Champion.
Yeah, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> mm. Marathon. Megalodon. Megalodon. <laughs> you y'all gonna make me start rapping? Matter. Matador. The matter. Yeah, I bet them. Megatron. Oh, shoot. shoot. Black Ranger, Mastodon, Padawan. There you go. See, there you go. Bars. There's ways to make it work. Yeah. I'm going to come yeah, out man. with a whole freestyle. How y'all be, man? Huh? A little bit of that. Allergies kicked my butt just, <laughs> just today, so I'm kind of loopy off allergy medicine and tree. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, your perspectives ought to be interesting tonight. Should be oh, fun. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Face answer quick as hell. Let me say, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is <a> default <laughs> answer. So I'm going to take the first topic tonight, fellas. And I want to discuss something that I know y'all have seen in the media, but it's just a, a, how can I say? It's a symbol of something that goes on a lot with the people in the younger generation, younger than us. Um, Just, I'm talking about young people making stupid ass decisions, especially in 2021. So, what what brought me to this is um it's been online lately and y'all may have seen it was some young lady she started to go fund me for herself because she went to the little basketball thing with only four hundred dollars all and star yeah. and then had to start a go fund me to try to get your ass home dumb decision number one you had four hundred dollars to stay your ass at home what would make you go somewhere with four hundred dollars out of, out of the state. Well, 400 dollars out of the state ain't gonna do nothing for you. Why didn't you why you didn't had, you spend all of that four hundred dollars while you were there if you knew that's all you had? Like that's what like what? This my thing. You have to pay for lodging, you have to pay for food and whatever activity you want to do while you're there for this weekend. For how the many weekend, days? The weekend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, if it's one day, one day four hundred dollars. If you're cheap, may be good, but yeah. forty eight hours, no, you're not good. Oh, all star weekend. If you, if you yeah, not that, an all star. That shit gonna be high. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. booked up and all ready, mm-hmm. so you paying extra just to get. And this my thing. Play. Yeah. Stupid thing she did number two. You have a win by yourself. Or oh, you chose the wrong people to go with because you had, you had to go fund me yourself back. Yeah, they left you your ass. Help you? They left your ass. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say you went by yourself, but that's still stupid because you don't go to nothing like that by yourself. No. That's dumb. What happened if somebody tried to get you? You got. Most women... um. Playing with That's other the women. Wrong state to be got in, boy. They, this this sex trafficking area, right? Sex trafficking down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is not right. the place for that. You got to make better decisions. Young people, a lot of young people that's growing up these days, they came in a generation that uh, all the parents want to be a lot closer and befriend them and give them everything they want and spoil them and everything like that. Understood, understandable, but don't let that overshadow the real real life situation. And shit can't happen to you. If it, it, yeah. the world ain't that sunny disposition place your parents put it up to be for you. The world is real. And nine times out of ten, the people that you meet in life outside of your close circle do not care about you. Make smart decisions, man. Yeah. Gotta be, you got to be a lot more careful out here. Like, I don't understand it. If it's like, I, I wasn't, I, I ever go, every place I got to, I, I got to have money in my pocket. I got to, yeah. I got to know how I'm yeah. getting there and how I'm getting back. That, that was, that was something I was taught. You feel me like mm. basic common sense. That's right the now. whole that's the main thing you think about when planning a vacation or a trip. <laughs> yeah. 
that that mid two thousands YOLO shit got a lot of people messed up where they just be, oh, we're gonna go. But like and what if you didn't uh, have uh, social media? This ain't, time, this ain't the time to do that, man. It's too many scammers, schemers, it's too many predators. Like it's just because everybody is a more people ain't right no more, man. And what everybody if she didn't have social party. media? Yeah. Or well, she didn't yeah. have that GoFundMe. What if you she... lost your phone? Exactly. What if you lost your phone? Can anybody list all 10 numbers that they know by, by heart? Yeah. Now, these days, because you want to go straight to Google, you want to go right to the phone book and just hit the face or hit the name. Don't nobody know numbers these days. Uh-uh. Most people don't know their own damn cell phone number. That's real. Not even if your phone got lost. That is, that is super real. What if your phone cracked, broke, you can't see your contacts, but you got your phone? Like, that's still doing the same thing, pretty much. What if your shit died and you dumb enough to come with $400, so you dumb enough to forget your charger, too? Yeah. You got your phone. Yeah, that was not well thought out at all. That shit did. That was, that was dangerous, actually. Dangerous and dumb as fuck. Yeah, man. You feel me? Like, you yeah, yeah, it's bad enough. It's dumb as hell for anybody, but a young lady, man, this ain't the time or the place down here in Georgia, man. It just be like, it's literally be sex trafficking posters and like warnings and stuff almost anywhere you go down here. Like, it's serious. It, it is not a game. People ain't nice out here like that. You can't be moving around like that. That's just reckless. Uh-huh. Want to go with Where's the plan? your father, lady? Where is your father? People just want to go with the fun. I, I want to be part of in crowd, be part of in crowd and get got, and then people won't see you no more. How many people you year get snapped up? Yeah. Young women yeah. make better decisions, please. Yeah, man. And now you got COVID. That, that's crazy. That too. <laughs> you got COVID and you don't got no money. Yeah, because if you spent $400 like that, I'm assuming you went to a party or something. You know, tell them what they had flying around there and there, man. Atlanta's one of the country this right That's another thing I understand. You feel me? Once again, young people make a dumb decision. I understand you've been cooped up. You've been on quarantine. You haven't been being able to be around a whole bunch of people and do what you normally used to do. But guess what? COVID won't around when you was doing what you normally used to do. But now it is around. Take the necessary precautions to protect yourself. Yeah. Sure. You may have gotten the vaccine, but do you know that vaccine is taking hold all the way and that you can't catch it? Because there are cases of people who had the vaccine of both shots and still caught COVID after they had both shots. Yeah, so, so, yeah, you go in these big environments with all these, all these people and putting yourself at risk for what? To dash, dance? What if I put the music on at home? Yeah, it ain't worth it right but now, man. You can't. Club the jig at home. Like, you got to be smart. Like the you quicker can. we just do the right thing with this COVID shit, man, the quicker this should be over. But yeah, and if you Humans, go to the club, young lady, young ass. lady, that was not smart. And if you go to the club trying to find some ass, that's ten times more stupid now because one, nine times ten, y'all ain't got no mask on, so you are gonna catch COVID, go home and catch something else too. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you, man. That these young folk are definitely not thinking. That's just not you two for one day. Like, I ain't never been nowhere and didn't know what, how I was getting home or make sure I was going to be straight while I was there. So I'm like, if it was, I, I let all right, y'all go ahead, then I catch y'all on the next go round. I ain't ready to go. I ain't got uh, But it ain't never worth just risking it like that. Just, that's just not smart at all. At all. And before the trip, you know, before the trip starts, you know your bread ain't right. That should be your decision right there. My bread ain't right. Shit, I need to stay here. Yep. Yep. You, you knew all year you wanted to go, but all year you won't save. And so you should have stayed your ass at home. Like, up oh, next year, it's going to come around again. And my thing is that that must have been your last 400 because you needed to go fund me. You weren't able to go to the bank and withdraw none of none. So that tells me that, like, you ain't in the financial status to be going nowhere right now. Like, you need to be stacking your bread and, like, thinking about your actual future past just a weekend. Like, Another That's young dumb you could have invested or four hundred you could have had saved up for like if you have an off week at work or anything, but that she could be scamming. She could be scamming. She could That's have possible. more than that, and just wanted more money so she can get whatever she want going. I, I don't. Know. I, I always think try to think of the other perspectives first because 
There's a lot of that going on, going on out here in the world. So I feel you there. Mm-hmm. That's a, definitely a possibility these days. Mm, I don't put it past it, but still, another dumbass move. So once again, All Star Weekend and shit. You got these people who rent a U-Haul van because they can't find a hotel. They rent a U-Haul van, driving around, partying, and chilling in the U-Haul van, and getting checked. Are you stupid? Hold on, what? So they using the U-Haul van like an RV? You mean? Yeah, a, a RV slash party bus. Oh. Oh, okay. So you're getting COVID in a can. And a, and a with wheels on. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Can of COVID. Oh, Yo, so I ain't never been that bad to go nowhere, man. So yeah, what is... If I can't find somewhere to stay, and before I leave, I got to know where I'm staying, how I'm getting there, how I'm coming back. Yeah. What, what would be the minimum amount of money to go out to All-Star Weekend? Because I never went, don't care to go. Anytime soon, so uh, I definitely say it depends on the city, but just all star in itself, you're gonna already be paying like whatever, even for the cheap hotels, whatever their normal price is, you can double or triple that just because it's gonna be so booked. So you uh-huh. have to pay extra to get your reservation, especially if you do last minute, you're gonna be paying a grip just for that. And then mm-hmm. usually, like you, unless you're gonna eat like straight McDonald's and like really low low budget food if you plan on like actually eating and going to where the where the people gonna be at be at you probably going to a mid-level to high level restaurant so you talking about maybe a 50 to a hundred dollars a plate and then you got actual whatever you get into so if you want to go out drinking and partying and going to the different parties or clubs or something you know the club's gonna be taxing because celebrity is going to be there and all that. So, like, true. I would say, man, if you ain't got about a, a, a G to a G to 1500 to me would be responsible. Uh-huh. Give you a grand to, like, fuck around and do whatever you need to do. And that ain't including however you get in there. That's just once you got there. But at least you got that grand to do what you need to do for them two days or whatever. And then you got 500 as like a backup money just in case shit hit the fan. Like, okay, I can still, if I get in trouble, I can use this 500 to get me bonded out of jail. If I get in trouble, uh, if I can't get home, I can use this 500 to book a plane ticket home. That's like, you want to just have that, 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 that little extra just in case. So I say, man, about 1500 would be smart to go to something like that. Spend the money. Right. Mm. But it's like, you know, the date for that, at the beginning of the basketball season. So you if you ain't got a whole year, you got at least a good eight months, nine months uh-huh. to kind of gear up for that. So like if you like that ain't something you just want to pull off on a whim because you got paid Friday night and you done paid your bills and you got a little three hundred dollars left over and oh we going. No, that ain't one of them type of moves. Like that's a that's like going on a vacation to or something like that. Like you want to kind of have that planned out so you know exactly you you budget right. Because you also don't want to come back. <laughs> Excuse me. You also don't want to come back home and then be like short. Well, you can't uh-huh. pay your bills now because you done went out and had fun for two days. And now for the next two weeks, you struggling and can't can't keep make ends meet. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. They, they didn't know nothing about basketball, I guess. <laughs> That's my thing. Because she reached out to some family members before she did that GoFundMe shit. And nigga told her the same thing we told the same thing. You feel me? Like, that's stupid. Why'd you do that in the first place? Didn't we tell you that you didn't have enough money? You want to go down there? You find your way back. Yeah. That's just what it was. Just Even. wasn't smart, man. That was just not a smart move on her part at all. Just at dumb all, all around. The you like, shit. I don't uh, even know what to say about that. That's just some old podunk country nah. hillbilly shit. Like, why are you it's a lot of things that going on, stuff? Like, but I just pray for the next generation, this generation that's right behind us, man. Like, please, y'all doing some positive stuff, but it's that dumb stuff that's being very, very much highlighted yeah. and making y'all generation look like y'all dumb as hell, spoiled as fuck, and don't know what earning some means. Yeah. Now, that's not all of y'all, once again, because I've met some people younger than me. And they in their teens and they, and they upper teens and they early twenties that 
hard work that they bought, they, they bought their business, they have aspirations to be business owners and stuff like that and be entrepreneurs. And they on their grind. But there's a bigger population of them ignorant dummies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just making them dumb decisions. I say too, man, young people, stop stop popularizing the dumb shit. Like y'all see the dumb shit just like everybody else do. Like put more put more highlights on those of y'all that are doing good shit and like making wise decisions and like really doing the things that the next generation should be doing to make sure that they, you know what I'm saying, can build on the legacies of everything that came before them. Like, cause I think that's also what it is. It might not even be a large population though, but that population, small or large, is how big mouth. so much by them. Like they be, oh, 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 look at this. Like, I think just drawing attention to some more tangible or some more like valid in the world would be very helpful. Not to add more dumbness into the conversation, but y'all remember like last year, your full last, I don't remember exactly what year, but they had that dumb ass challenge where these young folks were setting themselves on fire. Yeah, with the alcohol and shit, yeah. 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 That's a dumb ass decision. Challenges. Them challenges. Yeah, because the challenges don't mean you gotta do it. Them challenges if you want to be killed. That's what's going on. So if you want to see what a challenge do, What's the movie? It's the old movie called what, The Christmas Story when they challenged the little boy to stick his tongue to the um, light bulb post. Yeah. When it was cold outside and then it got yeah. stuck. Off a challenge. That's basically what y'all doing. Every time y'all try these challenges, sticking your tongue on a cold telephone post. Yep. That's real. When that shit gets stuck, you're going to look stupid as fuck. Mm-hmm. Big facts. Well, from the fuckery of the youth, to the fuckery of just society itself. Good in the fuckery, y'all. All All right. Let's go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give some good black excellence first for the good in the fuckery. Um, First, uh, your favorite rapper to this, uh, more Jay-Z news, man. I don't know what it is about last week, but Jay-Z done made so much goddamn money for himself. (laughs) Just all the- now, in this move, um, a lot of people, probably because they didn't know the specifics of it, was, mm-hmm. you know, well, they always do this with Jay-Z. They always, like, nitpick and try to say, why you do this? You know, you this was supposed to be for the people and all that stuff, because that's what you said. But the news is uh, Square, which is um, owned by the Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey, buys mm-hmm. title from Jay-Z, his share of title for, like, 297 million or whatever but what most people don't realize it what what most people did realize is that the title artist owners they still own their uh shares of the Mm -hmm. stock and they're still like the second largest shareholder so it's still artist ran and on top of that jay-z is moved to square's board of directors so he's still Basically, he basically on. just leveled up and got a and got a nice little. He got paid to level up. <laughs> yeah, cool. basically. Like I'll, so, I'll just jump on this board of directors of the company that just bought my little share of this smaller company, and now I can run both a little bit. Pretty much have my hand in both. Smart yeah, man, that big man. Basically, man that young people big learn man. from this guy. Learn oh. from this guy. Big man. Big man. Uh-huh. They're gonna be doing it, man. That generational wealth he gonna have, bro. He make me so proud. Mm-hmm. And his kids are growing, look like they're growing into such young, cool little young people too. I like it. Black so, I, I like starting it off with that. That made me happy in my soul. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, got, gotta start like that, with the good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They did, they did, they did 18 years. True. What you say? What do you say, Faith? I said all this. All kids and rich kids look innocent when they're young. We'll see what they do when they hit their teenage years. Well, yeah, this is true. Oh, well, you know, Jaden ain't that bad. He's just weird. And, you know, Willow ain't that bad. She's just weird. Which you would expect, you know, as, you know, Will and Jada. <laughs> weird is cool. Weird is good. I ain't mad I'm weird. weird. That just mean you ain't, ain't like everybody else. I ain't gonna hate on that. Which I like weird, because I'm weird. So it really don't matter. But, um, yeah. yeah. Time for the fuckery. <laughs> get it. All right, all right. This is oh, John Shatner. 
he is the that one, the the CEO of Papa John's. You know the cat. Is that William Shatner, brother? I don't know, man. They kind of look alike, oh. but it's funny. <laughs> oh yeah, I done heard about Papa John this week. Yeah, he says. <laughs> He says he, it took two years to get rid of the N-word out of my vocabulary. But he didn't, like, it's taking, he basically said it's taking two years to get it out of his vocabulary. So, so that means... He's still mm -hmm. calling people nigga. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, right, he he's, he's blaming everybody else for being outed. He's saying he's not a racist or whatever, but he's still blaming everybody else be out it in the same in the quote he says it's it's taking me two years to get the the n word out of my vocabulary but uh because just it's not true and I need to figure out who did this. That was his exact quote. So why you gotta get so much of vocabulary if it's not true you said it. That don't even make sense logically. Exactly. The, the, Plus two, two things can sometimes be true, but them two things cannot be true. Like you either said it and they called you out on it legitly, or you have not been for taking two years to get it out your vocabulary. Like, what? <laughs> you know, you know what I, I like. Your pizza about, dry as hell anyway. You know what I like. I like when they accuse when when white people are accused of being racist or whatever, especially um, <laughs> only when they are racist, right? Because their reactions is like, it's like the racist. The word racist is their n word. Right, like, and, and work. It's just I just in like world, in their world, they allowed <laughs> to talk like that, and it's normal. It's not mm. a stigma around it. It's just oh, this is how we talk. So when they get mm. to the regular part of the world where everybody else is like, "Dude, you're a racist," mm. they mm. can't handle that. They be like, "What? What? What do you no, mean? No, me no. But my no. friends don't call me that because well, your friends, friends are also racist, and they, or they oh, deal yeah. with the same shit you with. Because all oh, y'all are racist. That's that's why your friends oh, are racist, racist too. Whatever. You just you need to become friends with some niggas. To add some flavor to that dry ass cardboard pizza he be serving up. <laughs> that's an idea. I, I became friends with people from other cultures, and I got off my I got over my racism because I was a big race, big time racist when I was in college, and I lived in an international dorm. That's right. I didn't like nobody. I didn't like none of them. And I lived in an international dorm, which was crazy. I'm a racist living in an international dorm. Mm. I don't know that I'm racist or that I've ever been racist, but I have definitely been prejudiced. I have I've oh, I had to work through that over my young years. Racist. I was big time racist against every other culture. Everyone. I was talking cash shit, screaming stuff out the windows. I was big time racist. Really I'm, I'm, ashamed of, I'm ashamed of myself during those years. Very ashamed. But I've matured and I think I that's the important thing, man. Like, how you culture. start ain't supposed to be how you finish. So exactly. you gotta have some maturation and, and work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to grow. If you don't yeah. grow, can't be stagnant, man. Can't be stagnant. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't say I'm racist. I can say I was ignorant. I would say that. And it's not like I did something malicious to someone or whatever, because I felt they were different. Or whatever, but I would think they had certain behaviors because I was ignorant of their culture. Yeah, that, that, and I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. I was prejudiced. Like I wasn't. Uh, I didn't have like no I, thing of power over there where I was like, oh, because of this, I can do this to you or none uh, of that. Or I, I, it was more just a. Uh, well, this is what the stereotypes that I've been taught about you, or this is what I've been told about you. So. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm judging you by, as opposed to actually getting the norm and shit. So I, I definitely, yeah. I, just, I think that, I, that that come from the generation we was in too. Like it was normal mm -hmm. to be like a lot. Like even though we were out of segregation by the time we were born, like a lot of places you're still were, were still kind of separated. Like I look at my mentally. upbringing. I started being mixed in with another culture more in middle school and high school. Like before that. It, it was one white dude named Tyler that I knew in my whole upbringing until I was like 10 years old. Same. And that's the first 10 years of my life seeing everything look just like me. So like, it wasn't a lot of chance to get out and see other people because it was just like, I was in that, in that one little bubble. But then when I moved to middle school and I got moved to a different area that was more mixed in that area, then I was like, oh, okay, I go to school with these people and 
I was able to see, okay, well, yeah, they, they not too bad. Okay. It's assholes just in every race. It ain't just they all bad. It's just they get on every color. Yeah, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So I think that was what definitely helped me. But uh I say definitely college was probably the biggest thing, like going to uh when we was at ODU, I think that was the biggest thing for me because it it allowed me to see things differently because it was every culture mixed together. And like, I'm a big proponent. If I can party with you, then I can do pretty much anything with you. And like going to those parties where you might have an Indian and a, a Asian and a, 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 a Latino person and a, a whatever, you know what I mean? All mixed together, a Caucasian person, everybody mixed together Philippine. doing the same type shit. It, it kind of broke down them barriers to where I was more comfortable to like, Oh, well, let me see what y'all talking about. Okay, you all right, all right. You know what I mean? But I think that just comes with growth and being willing to, like, I think that's the problem with a lot of people like John Shatner. They they don't really want to change how they are. They want to stay that way and have everybody conform to them, but they don't realize that that ain't the world no more. Like, this that's one thing technology has done that, like, it brings everybody together. Like, cultures from everywhere are now mingling, talking, learning about each other from a younger age. So it's a whole generation of people that just like, yo, we ain't with that. Like, what are y'all talking about? Uh And I think even our generation, like you've seen a shift from like the way blacks, whites, and other cultures talked about each other in the 90s has evolved even in our generation. So it's like the only people left is them old people like him that's like still stuck on their ways and they haven't been challenged Uh on it because of their money and their power. So they still try to hold out hope. Like that's what that make America great again shit be like. Like it's like them people that just want to hold on to hold what on. was because they see that the and world they having a midlife not, crisis. We're not the majority <laughs> anymore in our way of thought. It's we're the minority now still thinking like this and they scared to shake that because then that mean they got to actually look at themselves in the past 60, 70 years of the bullshit they done been doing. Mm-hmm. That's hard. You know, it's hard to look at yourself sometimes and, and Admit, like, damn, I, I was fucked up. You know what I mean? So I think that, yeah, that was all. Um, that was one of, it, matter of fact, because you since you brought it up, and I like the conversation or whatever. That was like one why I went to ODU instead of because I just I was always curious about other cultures or whatever, I, mm-hmm. or, or whatever. So yeah, you yeah, I I'm smoking with Muhammad or whatever. And it's true. I'm 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 chilling with um Asian homeboy. I always was chilling with Asian homeboys because I had a homeboy uh, named Mark back in high school that was Filipino or whatever. And um one of the dudes that rap, he still rap. Matter of fact, he's down in Atlanta named Mike Sick or whatever. He used to have um he lived right down the street from me or whatever. Had that studio and he had a whole gang of Filipino dudes and we would just hang out <laughs> or whatever. So. I always been interested in other cultures, and that was the main reason why I went to ODU. So that's why I feel like I was more ignorant. But the thing about it is, like, you can be ignorant, but you have, as long as you have that willing to learn and that be so cog- cognitive dissonant from, you know, facts and reality, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you're willing to change. But yeah. Um, Papa John's a piece of shit. So, <laughs> yeah, fuck Papa John. <laughs> so, I ain't calling so, a nigga Papa. Fuck you, John. Exactly. And your bullshit pizza. Yeah, yeah. We, we the only, only Papa we respect is Christopher Wallace. Let's lick a shot for Big Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, it is his birthday. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is all right. On the next on the fuckery list, and y'all know I. Uh, God bless. Oh yeah, yeah. Dang, I just realized something. The greatest rapper rest of peace. died on March night. God rest his soul. Rest in peace, kid. It's because of him. Mm-hmm. At least now, at least I know what beef is. I ain't like Nas doing that time, but that either shit was hard. Mm-hmm. Well, if you jigger, don't hate me for this. It rest in peace to my grandma because she also passed on this day too. Rest in peace. <laughs> I just real- I just realized that. Sorry, I had a moment, y'all. Had it's a moment. all good, man. A moment, but on um, with the show. Um, so this pat- particular politician, y'all know I love picking on him because he's also a piece of shit, and here's his fuckery. Well, the good thing is Mitch McConnell is thinking about leaving. 
the um Amen. his position. Amen. His as well position. he should. As well mm-hmm. he should. The turtle said he's trying to go back into his shell. Amen. But, but here's the fuckery. On the low, he's conspiring uh to try to change laws in Kentucky because Kentucky has a uh, has a democratic uh, governor now. And the mm-hmm. governor, if he was to leave, the governor is the one that can actually pick someone to take his place, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to switch the laws around so he can have like the a committee under him where he can hand pick his successor. So that's the fuckery. Please don't. Oh, don't that the fuckery. Pass. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's also that's against illegal, also it's against democracy itself. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I don't know. Over the past couple of years, Republicans been uh, that's what I'm been saying you, they no, that old guard against man, democracy. They're so used to being getting away with the bullshit, like now that they're being called on, that they doing anything they can. They scrambling for power. Like oh no, they're gonna take our power away. No. It it's about time. Right like they see the tide in the world changing, man. Like worldwide, people is getting over that old bullshit, man. People like, look, man, world too hard as it is. We tired of being separated by everything. Let's get together. The world is changing, and you can't help. Wow. You can't. You sometimes that's just part of Earth moving around the sun. It changes. Yeah. Things is going to change. Mindsets going to change. Just. Uh, society as inevitable. a whole, and, and you know, change is not always a bad thing. No, nope. you know what I'm saying. The one one thing though, uh, with change, there comes pain, and you know, you just got to go through it. Indeed, go through the hurt, pretty much. But uh, Thanks, brother. as far as change, again, this is this is seems to be a thing going on right now. Uh, the next good in the fuckery is. Well, good. The Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel had had a interview with Oprah, or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff about it, but I didn't see the interview, so I have no idea what people be talking about exactly. It's yeah. it's like I seen little you know snippets or whatever, but it's basically what they've been saying out in the, um every time they speak out in the media is like how they've been treated from the royal family, the staff there, and everything, because you know the royal family is more a business than an actual family mm-hmm. <laughs> for real like i mean they're related they're blood related and um it's obvious just the way they treat megan how closely they want the blood to be related and everything but yeah she they basically did a whole um tell all about how they've been treated how they're not um oh family members will put them off to the side and have these they they had talks about how they think the child the child's skin color and how they might not have a royal name and uh, they um, might not get the protection that they had uh, or whatever just what because she's had black you lost me skin protect what right. like no the, Can the you be um, a more specific? i'm lost okay i was with you so, at first as far as they was being treated bad but I, what, this I, what about the child so they won't they, they won't exactly the yeah they don't they like the child skin color because the child black. Yeah, basically. Yeah. They they're having um like they're not gonna say they didn't say exactly which um relative or family member was coming at them, but it seems like it was pretty much the whole family coming at them, like, okay, so we're gonna have this problem if he comes out with this skin color or something like that. Or we don't know if he's gonna be I that protected. I can say exactly what it was. Cause they said it won't mom, it, it won't grandma, it won't granddad. He ain't, he ain't gonna be beefing off his brother with his brother over his, his nephew. It's the wives. The wives are where all the beef comes from. Mm. In that environment, you feel me? And then the men contribute to that because they each have to support their wives. So the one that's over here with his wife, with Megan, he gonna support her wholeheartedly. He married that, regardless of what his brother say. That's his wife. His brother over in England, his wife know when when mother dies, I'm next up. So I got to, you feel me? She trying to step into the role early. So she beefing because um, this is coming to the family. I don't like this. 
brother ain't really gonna say something. I believe it's the wife saying something to Megan about all this other stuff. So the wife is wife. Race, so the wife is racist and then trying to press her racist ideas on the rest of the family. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, That's really? what I'm thinking. Well, he he um I would say he kind of like admitted that him and his brother um Prince Charles, they're not they not cool or whatever. So I, I feel like I feel like Prince Charles pretty much is saying like that part too. I don't think it's just the wives. Probably is the wives also, but you know what I'm saying? I feel like tell you the truth, I uh, to be God honest with you, I just feel like the royal family is racist. They want to keep that blood all white and they want to keep it the way it is, like it's been for the past how many thousand years or whatever, and keep it in and, and keep it pure and keeping it salt because they don't want they it's just like Tiz said, it's the old guard and they want to keep things the way they they have it so they can have that control. Well, didn't they already have the baby? Mm-hmm. No, they, they had a baby. They had um print um Archie. So I'm like, so I'm but they like, having another well, baby. But I'm like, they didn't already had the first baby. So the blood ain't ain't just white no more. We didn't already pass that that hurdle. So uh yeah. Well, at this point, you might as well just embrace it. You got a whole line of black folk that's about to be popping out, and that's what that is. Like that's that's done because their kids are going to be black, and the kids of them are going like it's it's there now. Now, Tis, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> now, Tis, in a logical world or whatever, that's right. But we're talking about rich white folks. <laughs> yeah, this is true. most rich, most rich white folks are. When you get right down to it, they're racist or whatever, because they're rich enough to n- not listen to other people, <laughs> pretty much. And they're powerful yeah, enough. That bullshit. Come on. It's pretty and, much. It is what it is. Now, y'all might well go ahead and embrace that, them little black babies and uh, let it go. No, well, they don't got point, no... The way that succession work, at some point, one of them black boys is going to be the, the king of England or the, 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 the crown prince or whatever they want to call it. Like, he gonna catch his lineage at some point, so might as well go prepare for it now because it's coming down the pike now. Like the babies is here. I mean, they. I mean, oh, that's that's oh, how it, that's how they feel. But you know, they 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 royalty, so they got ways of covering stuff up and this, that, and the third or whatever. And they probably and it looks like they're trying to play that move. But with them doing this interview with um with Oprah and actually bringing everything out into the forefront. Is cause you know, just in society or whatever, just like because they've been, they haven't been as vocal about it until like they they said some things or whatever. But and you know they did that whole move, so you know that was something going on. But they never really explained exactly what was going on. Like Megan was talking about how she felt su- suicidal because of the treatment that they be. They've been having not just off of the royal family, just off of the staff, like the staff treating her like she is not really royalty or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the they also talked about how the tabloids was after uh, Meghan Merkel's parents and everything. And then she found out that her father was actually working with the tabloids and stuff like that. So she was feeling some type of way about that and mm-hmm. everything. And then she even said, OK. Um, if they were getting hunted down by the tabloids, but my mom didn't tell, so I don't know what's wrong with my dad. Um, no, that person, um, Meghan Merkel's uh mother. I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm not deep into the royal family because they don't got nothing to do with me. Megan Merkel's over here, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I want to say she was from America. Over this side. I don't know if she's from Canada or America, but I know she's on the other side of the pond. She's not from over there, though, right? No, not from like. UK. No, no, no she's, she's from, from, she's from, from Canada. Canada. Uh, she's from Won't she on a show or something? Won't she an actress? We can we can Google this. <laughs> we can Google yeah, it. Google I think she's from Canada or California. Someone with a C in that shit. Okay. Oh, no, she is on a. It says right there American actress. Come on, where you at? Where, yeah, um, she was on a soap opera or something. I feel like, and then that's why I was a big deal because people actually mm-hmm. knew her. She won't. Yeah, she is. She, just met. she was. Uh, she's from Los Angeles, California, or whatever. Yeah, she's from okay. That's why they originally had a problem. She, she, you feel like she's from an area that you wouldn't think nobody prominent would come from. 
So that mm-hmm. was, I believe that's what I'm saying. But my thing is, before I go too far, this just crossed my mind. As an American citizen, why should I give a fuck about the Roy family? Mm-hmm. Yep. Didn't we, That's didn't why we I don't know that much about their little inner workings because I damn sure yep. I, 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 I would say the president myself. So I mean, as long as the laws and shit and people getting treated right, that's what concerned me. When it comes yeah. to this Roy family shit, I mean, I understand bad treatment that's being what? public widely viewed now and mm-hmm. everybody's been pretty busy. I understand that. But mm-hmm. this ain't no reason shit with the American with the with the, the Royals, the people from mm-hmm. over there. This has been going on for decades. And the, mm-hmm. the paparazzi was all on to Princess Diana. That's how she died. They were chasing her mm-hmm. ass in the tunnel and she could conflict and some shit. So mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know she probably American, I don't understand yeah, it. Like, as an American, I'm like I, I, I don't understand it. Because she probably we usually do. She probably <laughs> Yeah. She, she probably thought of it like you know, she had the Disney princess moment. You, you from America? You from Los Angeles? And all of a sudden, this prince wants to marry you or whatever. So you think it is a good thing no, that we get over there? Yeah. I ain't talking about major. Oh. I ain't talking about major. I'm just talking about us as Americans. Period. Why do we give a fuck about going with the the, the, the the royal family shit? Because this is how I view it. You feel me? Americans giving a fuck about what's going on with the royals. After we done had a Revolutionary War, we 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 American now. You feel me? That's like. Freed slaves caring about what's going on with the master. Yeah. You feel that's how I view that a, shit. Like, that's I don't a different way to look at it, but that's real. Mm-hmm. That's real as shit. You know, I, uh, I feel what you're talking about. I, I think I'm looking at it more like I just like this because it looks like the old system is slowly deteriorating. I just treat it as a sign of like the old system is slowly deteriorating back oh, yeah. to back. Um and then off of that, um, y'all know y'all probably um uh, they got good morning Britain over there, like we got good morning America, and like the dude, main dude up there is Pierce Morgan, and I'm he's been talking yeah. he he talked trash about Megan all the time. He's like, Oh, what? he she's always like, Oh, woe is me. I'm in a princess living in the palace and blah blah blah, my treatment and this, that, and a third, or whatever. So one black uh black dude that went up there, I forgot. I don't know his name or anything, but I just saw a clip of black dude just going at him like you are always up here talking junk about Megan all the time. And he kept going at it and at it to the point that Pierce Morgan left off his own show. <laughs> he well, just I, I can't Pierce take been this. An asshole, so I'm not surprised at that. I'm not the, surprised at that at all. Yep. The good thing Ooh. about that, though, is he's about to leave. Because of the little rally, almost like he just said mm-hmm. anything just to piss people exactly. off on purpose. Exactly. So, like after they say after like forty one thousand complaints over his um, Megan remarks, he right. is now, yeah, he's now talking about leaving. Good morning, Britain. So well, another little sign. Forty one thousand when they got to two thousand, it's like ah, it's a, it's a lot of people. I'm yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, so I can take another position with the company. I stay on a job. Forty-one thousand. They got the fire. You got to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another little yeah. sign that a little that another little sign that the world changed. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's these three. That's some four, five little cities all over there. All of them don't like you. That's a major mm-hmm. demographic. Or our ratings. You got to go home, boy. Get your old ass out of here. <laughs> Get your oh, old ass out of here. Then they gonna uh, have somebody black to replace him. <laughs> Probably the guy that got him. That would be amazing. I, I hope, I hope it was the guy that got him <laughs> to uh, walk yeah. off the stage. I hope so. Gotcha. Uh, but that would, be, that, that would be good. too perfect. Um, and then the royal, the royal family pull out this guest statement, acting like they didn't know what was happening when they were the ones doing it, but just now because they just showed the um, interview today. But mm-hmm. yeah, man, that's my good and fuckery, man. <laughs> this is good and fuckery, and just the whole theme of it is just like everything's changing. Everything, you know, just slight little signs that certain things is changing. Even even Jay Z just doing all those moves, um, pretty much is just a, a sign to change. Pretty much, 
So my oh, next, yeah, yeah, just like it. The one thing is that I know that when the world changes, people get scared of. Pretty much, they just they're afraid of the unknown. They they're afraid of the unexpected. And then some people go off the deep end and start thinking that the world's going to end. So I was just thinking about this the other day or whatever. Right. Like, um, for example, all right. So, you know, it's been cold the whole month of February or whatever, pretty much. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're getting these sunny days out of the blue. It's just getting warmer and warmer and everything. And... It just looks like a flip out. You have one day where it's like 30 degrees and then the next day is 70 degrees or whatever. So what today, like, well, the day that I thought of this topic, I was like, this is the type of stuff that make people go out and say, the, the weather is acting all crazy. The world's changing. This is the end of the world and stuff like that. So I was, or whatever. So that's why I brought up this subject. It seems like the world been coming to an end for quite a long time. Like, it seems like I've been hearing about the end of the world since a child. Like, how long does it take for the world to end or whatever? Is it, oh, is it that you see something that's different happening in the world or whatever, and you just automatically think that it's just that much of a change that it, it the world's just going to blow up and end or whatever, or is are you are you just going crazy or is it just the earth just going through its natural phases pretty much like what the world was supposed to end 2012 the world was supposed to end 2001 every five like it seemed like every year there's some random crazy preacher saying that he's predicting that the world end or whatever like like is this when is it going to end like when 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 are people going to just give up and just think just realize and say this is not the world ending this is just the earth changing like in 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 general like well i think that's you know come to it's a mixture of things i think it go from religion to people being ignorant on just how many times the world quote unquote has ended in, in mm -hmm. the cycle of the earth like the earth like i think anytime like the world has ended by uh, the ice age. The world was ended when the media hit and killed the dinosaurs. Like it's more of a, it's not even an ending. It's more of a just it's going into the next phase, naturally or whatever is naturally that have been building up for the past era where things were quote unquote quiet. Mm -hmm. I think, but I think when you get people into different religious backgrounds that don't put in science in with their religion. And you get people that are just uneducated in general, like anything that seems massively different than what they used to, it seemed like to them, their world is ending. So they project that and make it a global thing when really it's just your way of life or what you comfortable with is coming to an end and it's changing. You know what I mean? People not, a lot of people not really comfortable with change. So it's like, it's scary to them. So those fringe people that's already a little off Whereas the regular person will just be like, okay, I don't like this, but I see that it is changing. Okay, they'll start looking at it logically. Them crazy people, they just be like, oh my God, this ain't what I'm used to. The world over. And that chicken little shit, you know? The, mm -hmm. the sky is falling. The sky is falling. No, it's just a pine cone, champ. You're going to be all right. It's an acorn. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. A lot of overreacting over like little small stuff or whatever. Like, it yep. seems like. I, like, I don't know what it is, man. It's just like whenever we like, for example, like Black Lives Matter, when 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 that was starting off, I was actually seeing a lot of conservative people talking, just going off the deep end and talking like this is a sign of like. Like revelations or something like that, like they it seems like they just use that to demonize any type of like social reform or anything like that or whatever. And I'm like, I, I just feel like that's just a extremist, a extremist way of thinking um, to just exactly think yeah. like just to think that just because we want some bit of humanity that 
you you're trying we're trying to like bring forth the end of the world like we we're trying to bring forth like the last book in the bible or whatever like it just seems to be weird and then that's that goes along with what i have like how i feel about religion how i feel like religion betrayed me on on, on something because it's like it seems like anybody can just pick up something pick up a book or, or whatever and then just use that to to back up whatever garbage that's coming out of their mouth pretty much like it's uh, it like like or even with the texas thing when when texas came now mind you this is probably a good example of where you would probably just if you're going through it right now in texas with with a winter storm and it's texas you would never expect snow in texas or whatever i can probably feel why you would think that would be the end of the world at that time i i like I can totally understand that, especially if you're going through it right then and there or whatever. But like, I've seen like, I've seen like people saying like the God is punishing us because we're letting this happen and this happen. And it, it is more like social reform and stuff like that. People, people are talking junk about, I, I, I literally seen them like people are talking junk about police and all this change and we letting, um, transgenders have rights and stuff like that, and God is punishing it for us. Like, no, <laughs> no, humans are doing stuff and activities that's causing weather change, which causing climate change or whatever. It's like the the the, the cars we drive, the the chemicals we put. Um, out in the on the earth when we're finished with them or whatever they're changing things in the atmosphere to make climate change and weird stuff like this is happening whatever these are the things that yeah. I, I was still not i don't know i think religion plays a part in it but i also think it's just crazy people like people that are just mm. on the fringe anyway because you look at you can manipulate science you can manipulate data from studies you can manipulate research to back your opinion like if you believe strongly enough in some or if some if you're already a little off and you want to find something that backs up what you're saying you can find mm -hmm. it you know what i mean so i think it's just people that's already on the fringe and already overreactive like overreactionary in their nature anyway mm -hmm. that do this cuz the average person ain't walking around saying the world going in it's those nuts on the end of the spectrum of crazy that's like mm -hmm. it is coming like it's not everybody it's them so like i think it's just like, oh, like you got nuts it's mm -hmm. that when these things happen they get louder mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it mm -hmm. yeah that's what i guess it's all about your viewpoint on anything period all right you gotta understand life in general to understand the end of the world all right the earth is a living being, as we all know. Mother Nature, all, all the elements, earth is a living thing. You feel me? It does have an end date. So in essence, earth is going to end, but it ain't no end no time soon. What you may be saying is as a, as the earth ages, new things happen. As in when the human body ages, new things happen. When you get a certain age, when you wake up your knees, you're like, damn, what is what is her that come from? That's new. What, what, what's going on? Right. Do you get so scared? So when it's more hurricanes one year, why well, get more scared? The earth is Asian. New things gonna happen, just like with your body. Accept it and move on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. You can't change heaven. That's why the fear comes. That's where the fear sets in because yeah, you can't true. control it. Mm -hmm. you know? Fear mm -hmm. sets in when unknown things and changes happen that you can't control. If it's something that you can control, it's not fear there, it's just apprehension and anxiety. Fear sets in when it's something new, changing, that you have no control over, and you just got to take the ride. That's then right. all the fear comes in and everything else sets in. Now, when it comes to religion, it sets in, religion in that topic, I mean, every religion talks about the end of days. I mean, but you got to take that with a grain of salt. Yep. Because you got to, me personally, I take all religions with a grain of salt because I personally try to look at where all of them started from. Mm -hmm. So, me personally, that's a big conversation. I think that conversation for a different day, but 
my whole views on that topic is just real funny. So I'll save that. But when it comes to the end of the days, I mean, when it comes, it comes. You can't stop it. So why be all paranoid about it and be running around? That's the one thing when it does happen, everybody on earth just got to accept it and roll with it. It may be traumatic, maybe it happened in the incident in the flash, but regardless of how it happened, you're going to have to roll with it. It's going to happen if it's going to happen. Yeah. Gonna roll what will be, will be. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I, I don't, um, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in God in, in, in general. And I, it's just that I feel like the, the institutionalization of spirituality is religion and, and religion it, it it causes like I would say it, it does more separating of people coming together than sometimes than actually bring them together or whatever. Now, um, and the rabbit on this, I just want, I just really wish that instead of just saying this is the end, you know, uh, times and everything that we say it's just a new age, it's a new change. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's just a new age. Um, end of the old age, pretty much, and then go from there. Gotta embrace change, man. Change mm-hmm. is inevitable. Ain't nothing we can do about it, but allow it to happen because it's gonna happen whether you try to delay it or not. It's gonna happen. Change is change. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. You ain't gonna look like you did when you were eighteen. When you when you when you're eighty, it, it's just it's gonna shit gonna change. So deal mm-hmm. with it, folks. Just deal with yeah. it. Deal with it. I mean, the Earth is a couple million years old. Like, God damn, what you expect? Yeah, and it's been through more wear and tear in the past few thousand years than it has been in all of the these years. So it's only going to exactly. accelerate so, the changes at this point. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you, you got to look at things realistically. You know what I mean? You can't exactly. have that over overview like, well, it's supposed to be. No, we don't no. know what's supposed to be because no man can tell the future and you don't know what tomorrow's supposed to look like. You don't know the date or the time. Yep. You I, All I you deal is in the mind of the beholder. Like. No one knows what tomorrow holds. So we all have to just, like I say, take it with a grain of salt and it is what it is. Indeed. Embrace change, people. Shit, shit got to change sometimes. Um, and speaking of something that needs to change, here goes the Umar Weekly Update for this week. Um, this one is not very long because he only had one real thing that he did this week or event that I could find. So basically, he posted an IG Live where he's back at the school. So that's a good thing. Anytime he's actually at the school, that's better than him being on the road somewhere yelling at folks. At least he's at the place of that he's claiming to take donations for. So while he was there, he posted a video of him and some supposedly HVAC experts checking out the problems with the HVAC units at the school. Supposedly, they're going to be doing some repairs at some point, but we've seen this before with other parts of the building where he has somebody that he claims is working on some, and you see them at the building, but nothing ever gets worked on. So first off, he shows the HVAC unit. And it looks the exact same as it did two years ago, except for more wiring and stuff has been ripped out uh, the outside HVAC unit for the gym. Uh, it looked like the dope fiends and people looking for scrap metal and stuff like that to tow that thing all apart. It's basically, it's just the outer shell of the HVAC unit at this point. Like the inside is completely gutted. It's no nothing in there no more. So he's saying that he's going to replace that. Now, he could have replaced that two years ago with the 350000 he had left over after he purchased the school, but now he wants to collect more donations. So we still don't know what happened to that three fifty, and now he wants more donations to replace this HVAC unit. And then he still has to get it repaired and put installed once he's replaced it. Then he goes into the school to show the toilets and the shit lake in the gym. And he's talking to... <laughs> And he's t- talking to the Instagram live people like, you know, we this is what we got to work on. This is what we got to work on. Now, mind you, the shit lake been in there for a good year. We've seen that on video documented for a good year where it's just pooling sewage water in the gym floor. This is not a new thing. So why he's showing this as if it's a new thing that we didn't know about. Like, we know that's there. We've been waiting on you to do something with it. We see that. The toilets are all still crumbled up. Look like somebody took a sledgehammer to all of them. So... He's saying that he got to do that, but he got the water off because you can't have water running through the plumbing. 
which is not true because you can fix toilets with the water running. You can fix plumbing with the water running as long as it with the water turned on, I should say, as long as you go in and shut the main valve off when you work and then turn it back on. So you can have running water to the school so that people can get a drink of water while they're there or use whatever bathrooms you may have that are actually working. So that's just bullshit. Um, why he's showing the shit lake in the toilets, I got very confused because he was supposed to be showing the HVAC work that needed to be done, but he started showing plumbing. So I, that correlation made no sense to me. As he's showing the uh, the building or whatever, somebody, I guess, on the live was like asking a question or said, was, was like saying the different things that needed to be done. He got on a rant on a concrete slab outside. He walked out the building, laid on a concrete slab and said, I don't care what needs to be done. Y'all just get it done. And he's talking to the donors and the people that he wants to donate money to him. And he literally said, y'all just get it done. Get on your cash app. Like he's basically like ordering people to send him money for this <laughs> shit. So the oh, video man. goes off. Then he gets on another video. It looks like maybe 20, 30 minutes after this. And he's talking to the supposed HVAC repair team. Now this repair team looks like, if you remember on the old Sanford and Sean show, the little crew he had that hung out on Saturday nights and drunk Ripple together, it was like him and like three other old dudes. This is what this group looks like. It looked like Umada went down to the corner store where he get his tune for 99 games and like recruited some of his old drinking buddies. Like, come on guys, y'all act like y'all coming to fix something. Cause these HVAC dudes, Look, don't look like they know what the fuck is going on. They're not looking at HVAC, mind you. He has them in the gym looking at the shit lake, talking about the plumbing that needs to be done. While he's talking about the plumbing, he's showing around the gym, ceiling panels missing galore. Mold, like this mold growth is growing out of the corner of the gym. And it looks like something from that movie, The Grudge, when, the, when that little ghost hair would come out of the shit. Like, that's what it looks like. The mold looks like. It's like a, a whole entity unto himself. It's a whole creature by itself. Right. Like, creeping out of the corner. Run. And again, these are supposed to be HVAC repair men. So we're talking heating, ven ventilation, and air conditioning. And this is what he has them looking at. He then says that the shit lake needs to be fixed. And he's telling them all of the problems that he's had with the shit lake about how it just drains in and then it'll be there and then it'll seep away one day and then it'll come back another day. And it's not coming from a leak, like a leaky roof. It's coming from somewhere in the plumbing. He then tells them that somebody done poured concrete into the drainage pipe. And he says this as if it was like a solution that made sense to the drainage problem. But I'm thinking if you already got a backed up pipes, you pouring concrete in there is only going to back things up worse. And again, he's telling all of this to a group of old players looking like they just can't, like, like the wino crew, like they fresh off a bottle of Thunderbird. They have no oh, materials, no clipboard to write down stuff. They have no, like, you know, measurement tool. You know how usually, like, something wrong. Like, you know how usually when people come to, like, do a repair, they come with, like, they're going to give you a quote. So they come with shit to measure shit so they can average, okay, this is how much pipe I'm going to need. This is what I'm going to, so when they assess what you need, they can then tell you, okay, this is what it's going to take. This is the price, da, 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 da. These people have nothing. Hands are empty. They all chilling in old jeans. One of the dudes looked like he got the jeans that Uma finally gave up last week on the day. Might be. And like, and these are supposed to be HVAC repair men. They talked about the HVAC none. The whole time they were there, they talked about the shit lake and the toilets that's broken. As always, he continues to beg his donors for money throughout the video. As he sits here in a polo hoodie and Nikes, this is after he told his donors that they should not be giving their money to, to buying grits or Nikes or these white companies. They should be giving their money to him. But he got on polo and Nike in the video. He doesn't acknowledge or think about the fact that more than the HVAC actually needs to be done. Like he needs to get the school up to occupancy code. He, he needs to, first of all, get the gym floors fixed because they are no longer usable. They've had water damage and sewage damage on them. 
for however long this school been vacant. Since like 2015 or something like that is when the old school that used to be there left. So it's just six years of just sewage building up on this floor and breaking the gym floor down. And as a person who has been into athletics and sports for a while, I know that that gym floor has to be completely stripped up. It's and not a floor. whole new one. Like you can't use that for anything sporting right now. Like it would be literally a hazard. Um, the building is still two tones because he hasn't finished painting that yet, because I guess he couldn't get the donors back out there to waste their hard-earned time to finish painting it for him. So he's got another, this, this vitiligo-looking school where you can't tell whether it's black or white. Like, it's just retarded-looking. The toilets are still damaged. The plumbing is backed up. And they're going to have to do find some way to get the concrete out of the pipes. So they might have to, like, actually lay completely new pipes in that building. The classroom have to be deep clean and the carpet and all has to be changed because you got dirt and paint cans and all kinds of shit that's just been sitting for six years. And you know, if you have a, a house that just sits for two years, a year with nobody in it and nobody's going through to like do any maintenance, like clean it up on the regular dust and all that stuff and, and insects and all that stuff, like it deteriorates the fabrics of the carpet and all that. So the floors have to be completely redone in every classroom. Okay. The wiring mm -hmm. has to be, still needs to be fixed and put back up into the ceiling and into the walls because there's loose panels and like just live wires just hanging out everywhere in that building. And this is all on a six month deadline that he's now given us. He said the school got to be done in six months. The work that he's trying to do is going to take at least nine months to be completely finished at the pace that... Like if he actually started today using the donation money today and just started using every single dollar that somebody sent in and actually put it toward this school, it's going to take at least eight months to a year just to get the major repairs done. Much less if he continues at his current pace where nothing gets, where he has somebody come in and then another year passes and he just brings somebody back in to look at the same shit that the guy works because he never actually pulled the trigger on fixing anything. I'm pretty sure these dudes that he had were just his buddies because none of them looked like he like they knew what the hell was going on when he was telling them the problem. They were in there, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Smoking them libations. Yeah, they were definitely on them libations, heavy. And now he takes them outside at the end of this video. So he didn't beg for money. He ain't talked about nothing about the HVAC. And then he takes, takes us outside for the last video. Last video was just these same men that were there for the HVAC pulling the ladder that we just saw stacked up in the gym down from the side of the building as if they had been up there doing some type of work. And Umar is yelling, oh yeah, yeah, you know, they got to see that. They got to see that. Let them know we working. You're pulling a ladder down, sir. We don't even see you up the ladder doing the work. We just see you lowering the same ladder that I just saw stacked up on the gym wall and when you were inside the building. It's at this point just getting comical because like the facade he's trying to put up at this point is just, bro, just say you ain't making no damn school, man. Like just stop. It's just like, what are we doing here? So that's really all I got for the Uma update this week. We do have a new scammer alert that we'll be coming with soon, though. We're doing the research right now. We'll probably debut it on this next week's show or on our live show mm -hmm. uh, this weekend. But uh, what's her name? Mbutu? Mbulu? Mbula? Mary, Mbula? Miriam Mbola. Miriam Mbola. If you already have heard this name, I wouldn't be surprised because just the preliminary shit that uh, faced and introduced us to is... This lady is, she's, she's on Umar's level with the amount of scamming she's doing. So it ain't just men, black men out here scamming our people. It's black women too. It's just sad that it keeps coming from our people. But we will have updates on her added to the list because we got to get rid of this, this scammer culture out of our, our culture. It's, it's one of the biggest things holding us back from like really, like we're in a position where we're on the precipice of greatness and we can really start to use our voice to get the changes that we really need and shit like this is holding us back because instead of us focusing on the real issues in our society or focusing on the real people that could be real black leaders we got people donate money to people like Uma and Miriam and it's just 
it's just sad. So more to come on Miriam uh, in the coming week for sure as we get our research together and compile this evidence. But Uma don't even got a Wikipedia. Uma <laughs> has nothing. Nothing. Not an Amazon page, not an Etsy page. He ain't got like a uh, nothing. There's nothing credible, like nothing that says this is a credible source to send your money to. Nothing. His own mouth and his own actions. I do not understand how people are still doing this. But that's it. He said the same thing since 2014, and nobody has seen any evidence of it. It's but it's he's still going. Like I don't understand, but. His ancestors it's, is it's coming. His ancestors are the ones that actually sold us over here. I would That's not it. be surprised. I would not be surprised if it was a bunch of Uma looking dudes talking about, uh-huh, we got them good slaves. Uh, you can give them grits. They like grits. And, 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 and make sure you leave me with one of them white women to rub my big toe with guacamole. <laughs> like, fuck out of here, man. Um the lawsuit is still pending, though, so I'm still waiting on the next uh, update on that because it's coming. Like, you can see the writing on the wall that this is going to end in some type of civil or criminal litigation that finally brings this to crumbling down because it's getting more and more outlandish and it's, it's just... Uh, but Ridiculous. that's my... Yes, yes. But that's my weekly Uma update. Uh... Yeah, it's just sad this week. I, I I ain't even got too many jokes for it. Like I really watched this vid these videos this week and was just like, this is and I just you just watch the black people in the comments. It's just like, oh my king. Oh, he's so great. No, people, what are you looking at? What the hell are you looking at? Their fantasy, their own fantasy. Like, and they it, it really saddens me to see our people that just at a time like this in the world, continuing to get duped Everybody by our people. Somebody, somebody, yeah. I guess, Everybody man, please. You know, you know change what I your, Change who you're going to follow. If you got to follow somebody, at least, like, it's like an addiction. Like, if you got that addictive trait, don't go to drugs. Go to working out. Go to eating right. Go to reading books. Like, find an addiction that's going to at least grow you and help you, not following leaders that are going to Black people end up got, just taking your money. Black people got the black messiah syndrome, always waiting for the next black messiah. But the That's people all. we putting our hope in for that, it's horrible. I was down with, okay, if you want to go Martin, okay. All right, I can roll with you. You want to go Malcolm, okay. You want to go to Black Panthers, okay. But this? They're like, they're like great back. He's done great nothing back. to Martin, deserve Martin. this. Nothing. Like great value, my ex. <laughs> Man, even great value be, food be tasting all right. It, it ain't that bad. The old Uma is like the shit that got Uma, that went rotten on the shelves and they done threw it out back and somebody done rolled up on the dumpster and oh we can we can use this. Change the Xbox. He the, he the, he the type of food that give you dysentery. <laughs> Straight up. But uh that's this week's Dang. Uma weekly update, man. Um, now, from from that to this, this this next topic is a little little different, but uh, I saw some news about it this week, and I just wanted to kind of open the conversation up. It's a conversation we've never really had on this show, so it's a little different than the stuff we usually cover. But basically, uh, South Dakota and Mississippi have recently passed bills that are not allowing transgender people to compete in sports with people of their new gender. So like a, a dude that has uh, transitioned into a female, they can't play female sports. A female that transitioned into male can't play male sports. Um, do you th do y'all think transgender people should be allowed to play in sports with people of their new gender or no? That's a good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's a touchy subject. If, if y'all yeah, need some process of time, I understand. Oh, no. I've already processed mine, but just because I know Pat's answer is going to have me rolling because he's going to be trying to be so PC. <laughs> Pat, you go first. 
<laughs> All right, time to just I'm walk I'm right I'm into I'm the time to work right into the lions, then, man. Right into the lions, then. All right, lions ain't that PC, man. I don't think so. Like, because at the end of the day, genetically, like this is how I kind of felt like with uh, Caitlyn Jenner or whatever. Like, you know how Caitlyn Jenner had Woman of the Year or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like that that there's women that's been women longer than he's been a woman that probably deserve Woman of the Year. So you decided just like a year ago, you're going to be one. And then now you you think you can get all the benefits that are designated to women. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like that's like that's I feel like that's disrespectful for women that's been women all their lives or whatever and they had to fight as women all their lives and, oh mm -hmm. and and now it just sounds like another way for a man to take away from a woman if you really just think about it like that like um here's my PC moment I might be wrong I might be ignorant but to me that's how it is I in in general like you can't just change genetics. A woman told okay. me this. This you just can't change genetics. We we haven't got that science yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or whatever. Okay. So, so, so if that's your viewpoint on that side, is that the same way you feel about a woman transitioning into a man? Now that I didn't really even think about on on that though. Like I don't say. Mm -hmm. I f that's a tough subject because it's like if she transitioned into a man or whatever, and she tries a man's sport or whatever, will men even care? Yeah. That it okay. Like, that like that's that's where because I'm 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 not I'm not a sports head like that. Gotcha. So. Will men even care if they got to it? If they are, would we? Because men are genetically built to do sports more, just in general, than women. Like I'm not. If you have a woman competing or whatever, now it's like the only thing I would be worried about is how that she going to be treated if she goes into a man's sport, because now you're mm -hmm. around a bunch of men and men don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, I don't know, like it, with that is, I feel like it's like, all right, women, if you want to go into a man's sport with your new gender, enter at your own risk. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same yeah. time, that's not fair because now I'm saying women can do men games and you know, it's just all confusing. Man. You go ahead, face. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna piggyback. I'm gonna piggyback off your comment because that's why I asked you how you felt about women transitioning to men because it is a woman who is current who is currently she's already transitioned to a man and she's a professional boxer. Mm -hmm. That's like I said, man. Yeah, she, I, believe, I, believe, I, believe, I believe I believe she was on a sport cover Sports Illustrated um last year sometime. Mm -hmm. And my wife showed up. Like, what the fuck? But this is my thing. My viewpoint on it all. I don't go fuck what y'all want to do. Do you? You feel me? But if you step into that arena, no, you step into that arena wholeheartedly taking those chances in the in your new role that mm -hmm. you you chose. Your new role that you chose. However you you feel inside, that's what you chose to become. So if you're a woman transitioning into a man and you want to play a man sport, if you step onto that gridiron and you put those pads on and they allow it, you get your block knocked off, you get your block knocked off. That's all right. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh, my God, the transgender. No, they're going to be like, number 24 is down. Okay. Get her, get his ass off the field. Get somebody else on the field. <laughs> yeah. Now, when it comes to men who transition into the women, Going into the their sports, same thing. I don't give a fuck do what you do, but at the end of the day, realize 
If those women gonna go extra hard because they know you got traits of a man and genes of a man and the man's strength, they gonna still give you them blows. They gonna give you even harder blows because they know. You feel me? Like they gonna be aiming for you, be gunning for you. So this is like you putting a target on your back. You feel me? Like I have no personal feelings at, at all because one, <laughs> I don't play no professional sport, so I don't care less what y'all do. Two, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> no, Wasn't no, a movie to each his own, but my whole thing is, if you're willing, just like with any situation, if you're willing to take your step into that situation, you need to know the circumstances, the pros and the cons. And if you're willing to take that full step and take the other step behind it, knowing all the information, hey, decision is yours. Whatever happens then, it just happens to you. Now, in youth sports. I feel it's something different. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? as, as adults, that's one thing. Do what you want to do. But in youth sports, you have to sign your child up for youth sports. You know I mean? mm-hmm. You know wholeheartedly if you if you're allowing your child to transition into whatever they want to be, you know wholeheartedly what what harm you're putting your child in the way away of. So at that point, mm-hmm. I feel there's neglect on the parent at that point. You feel know I me? Mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, so, I'm glad you brought that um, up. That's just like what's the movie with Rodney Dangerfield, Ladybugs, when the bl- little boy. That's what I was thinking. Was that the was the movie. Team. Yeah, like, that's oh, the movie. The that, that, was that, that's, that was the movie I you was thinking me? about. Yeah. So, but look in the other direction. You feel me? Like what if it was a little girl transitioning to a boy and. Her her dad want to get out there. You want to be a boy so bad? Get out there on the, on on the football field. I'm pretty sure it was a movie Definitely. about that too. You're willing, you're willingly putting your little girl in, in a harm's way. You, I'm sorry, your your little boy now in in harm's way because you know mm-hmm. that don't need to be happening. So, so I had I had a point like when he brought that up. Um, do what they're allowed to do. Like, I almost feel like, especially when you brought up the the children's sports or whatever, the coach knows that child is genetically a man. You know what I'm saying? That's That almost feels like you're cheating. Like, you know that, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a good chance that they're going to dominate whatever woman's sport they're in just because genetically they're not a, uh, they're not a woman. Well, I should say not a girl and that because they're a child pretty much. So like I just feel like that's a lot of that's that's funny too. Like I feel like that's you're cheating on that on that side. So I mean, yeah, it's it's a touchy yeah. subject. I mean, for me, it ain't yeah, that touchy. I don't. I wouldn't let my as a parent. It's gonna sound fucked up to some people, but so what? I'm me, and I really don't give a fuck what nobody think about how I feel about some shit. So as a parent. If my child, if the not came to me that my child was on the team with a transgender, like if my child, when my child is older and they're in high school and they got to play high school sports and people in high school get undressed in front of each other, I'm not going to be cool with that shit. Mm-hmm. Me personally. If that knowledge comes to me, I'm like, I, I, my child got to get pulled off the team. I'm not comfortable with that shit because you put my child in situations that they're mentally not ready for right now mm-hmm. and they haven't been exposed to and I wouldn't be the one to Give them their knowledge, not just throwing the shit into them, just just because somebody else feels a certain type of way. That's, so I mean, me as a parent, mm-hmm. and if that situation ever arises, I, as a parent, would pull my situation, pull my child out of that situation because that's I'm, I'm sorry, that's just me. Right. I don't want my child around that shit. And then like, it's a lot of shit our children are exposed to extra early nowadays because everything is based on how somebody feels. I mean, mm-hmm. it's still childhood innocence. It should still be some some type of thing. You feel know, like we should still have some type of childhood innocence. Yeah. We always say kids growing up too quick, kids growing up too quick, but now we're forcing them to grow up with this new era of everybody being accepting of everything. Yeah. Can't accept everything, man. When you accept uh, everything, well, then it's a chaos. Because they you try to please everybody, there's a reason why some people need to be mad. You feel know, like, Everybody doesn't get their way. When everyone mm-hmm. gets their way, it's chaos. 
It's total chaos when everybody gets what they want based on how they feel because you're mad and you're crying. Just imagine having a house full of kids. Everyone of them wants something different. And they want one of them, everyone of them crying. You feel me? Two of them want the same toy. And they crying, they crying, they crying. It's only one of the toys. You can't please both of them, man. Can't get everybody what they want. Y'all gonna spend this world, spend this, this fucking world in the, in the out of fucking space even more. Uh, Y'all uh, thought 2020 was chaos. Keep giving everybody what the fuck they want. Yeah, I I think for me, since I don't really care about the societal piece, like I don't care what you're doing. Like I'm real big on libertarianism in this way. Like I feel like everybody had the right to do whatever the hell they want to do, except for in private establishments because those usually belong to somebody. I think for me, just keeping it with the sport, like I don't care about that woman of the year shit and all like that's that's a fight for people who care about that a particular award. But I like sports. And I participated in sports for a long time. And I, I just look at it from the danger aspect. Like when y'all were talking about genetics, like you can't change it. You can't change the way a bone structure in a man develops. Exactly. You can't change the way muscle density develops necessarily. Like you could take hormones to kind of slow down those effects or reverse them a little bit. But for the most part, a man's body is designed genetically to be built a certain way. So even with all of that, he's still going to have more dense bones He's going to be able to withstand certain things more than a, a woman in certain areas. Like that's just genetically how we made up. So until they can change that, when it comes to sports in specific, I don't think a male that the transition to a woman should be allowed to play certain sports with women. Like if it's a sport where it's already like gender don't matter anyway, then cool. But I feel like a reason, the reason a lot of sports are separated by gender is to give equity because if you put both genders on the exact same playing field like in a sport like football even even if you have outliers like like there's a girl now who's who got like a, a division one full ride scholarship for football as you move up in level there reaches a certain point where even if you are amazing as a woman it's going to become more dangerous for you as that same body because your body is never going to be able to reach the exact same physical traits that a man naturally has. And if y'all are equally working the same hard, y'all can take steroids together, all that, the man is going to naturally be just a little bit bigger, just a little bit more dense. And when he hits, his body is going to withstand that impact a lot more than your body. Like, that's just how that shit works. So you're, you're literally putting those females that transition into males in a higher risk of danger just for the sake of saying that they're able to do it. Like, to me, if you're going to, like, that just don't make sense. It's a reason that the lingerie football league or the women's professional football leagues or all these women that play professional football, it's a reason that you don't have one in the NFL because on that level, it's a difference between your maxed out 250-pound body going up against a 300-pounder every single player. And this 300-pounder is... 300 pounder is chiseled, dense bone man. It's just different. And wow. your body's gonna, your body's gonna react different to it. And you're gonna be at a higher risk of like getting a major injury that can change your life. If you're a male that transitioned into female, same thing. Like I saw some video where it was like a woman's basketball league. Now, th these women out here playing basketball, and this big six foot eight. 275 pound dude that then transitioning to a woman is out here playing with them. Joanna, it doesn't, it's, it's just different. Like if you look at the best WNBA player and put them up against the best NBA player, it's a reason those two sports have separated by gender. It's not to be unfair to women. It's literally because there's a distinct advantage. It's a reason pros don't play against college players. It's an advantage. Like, it's just different. And some things are just like that. And if you want to be a transgender in golf, I don't think it matters as much. But even then, a male is going to have a little bit of an advantage because his dense bone structure is going to make him drive the ball longer. So he's going to be hitting 300 and some yards where you might be hitting 200 and some yards. And that makes a difference. Like, I, I feel like any sport that's already separated by gender, transgender should not 
necessarily look to go into those sports in those arenas. They should have their own space the same way those two genders have their space. Yeah. Like they're almost their own entity. So like you can have a group of transgender <laughs> male to females playing against each other. And I think that's fair. They all started with the same genetic makeup. They're all now in similar areas of transition. Like it makes sense where they won't hurt each other at a higher rate or get worse injuries because of this. But okay. shit separated for a reason in some things. Like it, it's, it literally is. And we can't be so stuck on equality that we forget equity. Like it's not equitable to those people in those sports to have these things, like these, these different um, situations arise. Like, I shouldn't be out there on a football field thinking, am I going to literally, could I kill this person because they're genetically made different than me? That shouldn't be a thought. Like we should be able to play free. And I feel like, again, we've separated genders in certain arenas, not for a lack of equality, but to provide equity. And I think that has to be the number one thing we start looking at going forward is like equity. Everybody is not the same. We have to recognize those differences, embrace those differences, but still be realistic about what those differences actually mean. Like, I'm not gonna throw a, a Spanish child who's only spoken Spanish his whole life in the middle of an English room and expect the same outcomes I would from an English, a natural, like a person that's done English all their life. Like, it's gonna be an advantage to the English person because they know this language in and out already. They're not learning, there's no difference. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, so you gotta be equitable out here and not just do shit on the sake of equality all the time to me. So question. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if they could create a transgender whatever type of sport league mm -hmm. that one, it'll be profitable and two, that it would be sustainable? Yes. If they did it in a, in a smart way. I think what happens in a lot of like, I think we talked about this when we were talking about, uh, what was it, the WNBA that one time on, on our show? Like, I think you got to do it with the business model of recognizing where you are. Like, you're a startup league in a niche genre. You're not going to have, you can't go into it expecting to have the exact same outcomes as something that's more established, already has built up a fan base for hundreds of, for 100 years, et cetera. Like, I think that was the problem with even the XFL. Uh, when they came out, they wanted to have the same everything is the NFL, but they're not realizing that the NFL has built to this point. It was a one point where uh -huh. the NFL won't shit and college football was more important than NFL. So like everything has to get there. And I think if they come in on a small scale realizing, okay, we're going to appeal to our niche audience and we'll grow our brand out over time. And as we actually have the, the fan base to sustain growth, we'll grow then. Until then, we'll be at whatever level we're at as we build. If they do that, I think it could be because you got, like the, like I said, man, it's a generation of people out there that don't care about none of this shit. So they would still support it. And it's a lot of people that are not transgendered that are like, what they call it, uh, cis, cisgendered or straight. Uh -huh. straight I don't know Wonder the terms. I'm, I apologize. I don't know the terms. I'm ignorant on a lot of these terminologies, but the people that are straight, they are still supporting these people because a lot of them they family and stuff so it's 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 a group of people out there that would definitely support but they can't come into it thinking that overnight they're gonna be as big as whatever the established league in that sport is you know what i mean like you ain't gonna come out with a transgender uh baseball league and think that it's going to be the same place the mlb is like it's just you got to get there. Can you get there one day if you take their same model of starting off small, building on it, building on it, building on it over time? I think so. Because you, you got them television stations that pop up that are like, it's for certain niche communities. It's just for the, it's, it's targeted at these particular groups of people and they are starting to grow and get bigger than some of the major television networks. But it's been over the past 10, 11 years that they've been building to that point as mm -hmm. opposed to like coming out the gate we're going to throw billions of dollars at it and then you have nothing to recoup with because that's not the money you're going to generate. So I think 
if they don't follow the flaws of the way that WNBA came out or the XFL came out or these other smaller leagues that tried to come out on the same level as the largest establishment, they can work it. Like, I think a smart way to do it would be like what AEW did when they came out. They're a smaller league than WWE as far as professional wrestling, they're a smaller entity. Uh-huh. But they they stick to, they don't try to go over the top with interests because they know that's going to cost way more than their budget. They keep it more uh-huh. on their, what they can do best and they appeal to their audience. And as they keep giving their audience what they want, that audience will continue to grow over time. And they'll have the money to, to literally be WWE's equal. But at the moment, they're not even trying to play that way. And I think if you had the right mentality on it, I think they can do something with it. Yep. It's definitely, That's I feel what... like it's definitely a community out there that would look for that and would thrive off it. I think the biggest thing though is that the transgender community is kind of like the black community at times. Like they are very separated in what they actually want. Like you have a group of them that look at things one way. You have another group that's like, we got to be equal in every single place. As a, And then you have another group that's like, we don't necessarily have to do what the other genders do. We can be our own entity as long as we're respected and as long as we're not treated unfairly or disrespected in our daily life. I think that's to be the biggest thing is like, have your own league, I think that would be supported. I actually think other sports league, especially today when like PR is what it is, they will probably throw support to it just so they can get the kudos of saying, hey, we support them. Use that platform and then keep building your shit and you're going to have people that come over because if the product is good, people going to come to it. You know what I mean? Like, what's That's what's any up? business though. Yeah, yeah like That's, people will come no. to it if the product is good. If the product is shabby, or if you done overshot your budget, so now you can't sustain this product you done initially put out, then that's where the issues come in. So to, to I'm sorry, I rambled, but yeah, to answer your question, face, I think it could, it, it's possible if, depending on who runs. Man, if they do it right, they would make so much money because I you so. look, look at the gay community and how much money they bring in, in general. Yes, they're with, one of the biggest consumer bases, period. Ex- exactly. They, and they have like influence and in everything. So I'm pretty sure if done right with the right support, you know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to watch it. Might not be me, not but exactly. somebody's going to watch. It. Yeah. And that's the but thing. I, I think at this point with the way media and stuff is, there's so many different communities. It's not like where it's just one block community that you're appealing to. Now you can literally directly market to the people that are into, that are looking for what you want. Mm-hmm. And as long as you mm-hmm. deliver on that, as the as that group itself grows, but also as your product continues to just be good, people from other communities will slowly trickle over and be like, oh, well, what's that? Okay, well, why is all these, why is this group of people so hyped about this? What's so great? And as you will get some of that trickle over effect where you will start to build your base outside of your initial demographic. But I think it starts with just targeting those people that you know are looking for that. For sure. Okay. For sure. But yeah, man. Uh, transgenders, um, do what y'all do. Just be realistic about it. Like, Genetics mm-hmm. are genetics, and one day we might get to a point where you can, you know, if, if that's what you feel, and you can inject a certain thing, or you can take some, and it will literally change your genetic code to like fit who you feel as a person inside. But until that day, we got to look at things and be realistic that things just ain't necessarily safe just because you want to do it. Like, mm-hmm. it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, men can't have babies. It is what it is. It's just not genetically going to happen. So we got to deal with the fact that we're going to be depending on women for that until some change. So that's like life is life. Life is what it is. And until genders are like able to be controlled on a genetic level, there's going to be certain differences that we have to be okay with. Like everything don't have to be the same. It don't have to be like you can be different and still be valuable. And, and just recognize that you're different. Like, it is what it is. Man, the day that the uh, genetics can actually be changed. That's when we, we have that. that choice. Yeah. That, that's, that's an ethics situation that, um, yeah, that's an ethics situation for the future for you right there. 
Because yeah. now, now it's like, all right, we're playing God. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, you I don't think nobody should create life, but yeah. I'd, be for, I'd be for an adult that's 18 or over and they want to just like you go get a boob job or, or get them fake muscles. Yeah. Words, whatever. You want to go get a genetic change to fit who you've been feeling like since you was a kid. Cool. Do your thing. Like, yeah. I think that should be like, you should have that right. Go do your thing. But, you know, it should we ain't be. There. Yeah. It should definitely be like an age limit, like cigarettes yeah. and and alcohol and everything. Cause yeah. you gotta but now now it's like you gotta give give that child a chance to develop and grow into the person they wanna be before, you know. Get yeah, into that, right? That's on most things though for me. Like if it's an adult type of discussion, adults should be making that. Like no kid should be making adult decisions as a kid because your brain's still developing. You're not you're not there yet to make a, a rational decision that could affect the rest of your life. Like, mm -hmm. Big fact. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Let, let us know what y'all think out there. And teach me some yeah. of them terms because I damn sure don't know. I, I know I done butchered some terms tonight. I don't, I don't, I, I'll be honest. I'm ignorant and I'm willing to learn, but I just don't know. I'm 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 ignorant too, so and, and I got I get to a point that I just you know what I'm gonna just avoid this because I'm probably gonna say something stupid and it might offend somebody and I don't want to do that. Hey man, I gotta, I gotta be able to put my ignorance out there so that people can teach me because I don't mm -hmm. know and some of the research mm -hmm. I don't know who's telling the truth, so I'd rather hear from somebody who's actually experienced it. So. Oh yeah, you yeah. happen I to got be a people person that's transgender or something? You watch our podcast, man, or listen to us. Please school me, you know. I, I'm know willing to learn. I just don't know. Now, my top five for this week. I thought I'd change it up instead of being angry or just listing some random stuff that I was thinking about. I figure I, I try to help somebody else out there again this week and list my five my top five ways of how to make a difference. Okay. You feel me? It's five random ways. I mean, there's more than five ways to make a difference, but these are the top five ways that I came up with while just sitting back thinking this past week. So, number one, of course, everybody knows you can volunteer your time to a worthy cause. Very many people in places need people to help them, but they don't have the money to pay. Do it from your heart and volunteer. That's true. Mm -hmm. Second one. Also a good way to get a job if you're struggling with getting one. True. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. You volunteer enough at a certain place, and they'll see your work ethic, and they'll try to offer to hire you. I mean, I know um, what Goodwill does that with volunteers, and also people who are on probation, and they're working off in community service. Mm -hmm. so they, um, you do your stuff there, they, they'll see your work ethic, and see you come to, come to work on time with good attendance. They'll offer you a job at the end of your servitude. Not, well, not servitude, but end of your mm -hmm. time with them. Say. Facts. Now, I got my career off of it. Now, the second one, is a little bit harder, but become a mentor to a younger person. I mean, mm -hmm. At some point in all of our lives, we need a, a little positive guidance, whether we know it or not. Maybe a little hard at times, but young people need somebody to listen to them. You feel me? At the end of the day, a lot of people got are going through stuff and they got nobody to talk to, nobody to vent to, nobody, so they got it all pent up. And with the time and era we're living in now, a lot of those people are young kids. You feel me? And that age range goes from anywhere from six to 18. And they need to say something, but they have nobody to actually sit there and listen to them. Uh -huh. Become a mentor. I mean, it's different. There's a lot of different mentor programs out there you can go to. I mean, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club. There's a lot of different stuff you can do to try to help somebody young or younger than you. You feel me? It ain't got to be a kid. It can be somebody in their 20s. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know somebody at work, you see them fucking up all the time. You know the way to get them out of it, offer them some advice. They ain't gotta take it, just offer it. You feel me? Like each you one, know, and, you know in, in, in your heart you're doing something good, just offer the advice. Don't hey man, if I was you, I do hey man, you know, this happened to me one time before um, I did this and helped me out. I don't know if you want to take that piece of advice, but go ahead with it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's real. Offer it at least. You, you feel me? Like be be that OG that people need sometimes. Don't sit back and let a man keep fucking up. If you know he, if you know you got the key to the city and you can help him not fuck up, help him do that. Help him not fuck up. That's real. 
That's right. Now, third thing on my list to help make a difference is simply just having a conversation with somebody you have nothing in common with. Hmm. It may seem like having a conversation is not in the realm of this list, but you'd be surprised what can come through with insight and growth or having just a simple, honest conversation with somebody you have nothing in common with. That's how you learn about In my line of work, you feel me like every day you encounter people with different cultures, but you never stop and ask, and ask a simple question. You may think it may be intrusive, but you may be thinking, nah, I ain't going to ask this. You'd be surprised. People are a lot more talkative than you think. Yeah. Just simply, yeah. you see somebody, you, oh, you got an accent. Oh, man. Anybody I meet with an accent, ah, where you from? Well, why, why are you asking that? Because your accent. I just want to know. You got a peculiar accent. I don't have an accent, so I want to know where everybody with an accent is from. <laughs> People tell me, I sound, I sound a certain way. I don't think so, but hey. Where are you from? I met people from Boston, Romania, They're different places just based on, on the accents. You feel me? So, I mean, have a conversation. You find out different about their culture. You find out different about stuff that y'all may have in common that you thought y'all may not, but that conversation, it, it brings mm-hmm. growth and, and builds bridges. You feel me? Like, That's real. I think, I think people will be following your advice when they see me out and about. When when COVID was around, I was like going to bars or whatever. I think people be taking your advice because like, you know what? I want to randomly talk to this guy. I just be by and myself, and then all of a sudden, hey man, how you doing? And blah blah blah. I'm like, why is this guy talking to me? I was like, all right. Just but that explain. learn about somebody new. I guess so. But yeah, that, just say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now the fourth thing. Give to a charity that supports a cause that you can champion. Now, important thing there, give somebody who supports a cause that you can champion, a true cause, nothing that's fake, not no, nothing that has no backing, some true factual that you, have, you can have sustainable data on that mm-hmm. you can support. If you're going to give to that charity, me personally, I often give to the charity that um, does research for juvenile diabetes. So of okay. course, my oldest is a type one diabetic. So by me giving, I know I'm I'm assisting and aiding in positive research for possibly helping her in the future and other people and other kids in the future. That's and I know, right. hey, I'm just helping out too. Feeling like I I know I'm helping. Out. I mean, I be giving a lot at a time, but the little bit I give, hey, it does help out. Yep, every little bit helps with something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the number five thing, I think, and, I, and I'm directing this to all black people. You feel me? Like, whatever culture you are, I have no problem because I'm not a racist. I've grown and I have uh, become a more accepting soul. But when it comes to black people, this really hits home because I see it more often. Pick up trash in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. The trash, mm-hmm. the trash yeah, you walk by and throw down. On the trash crew, you just me? walk around the neighborhood and fill up some bags. Yep. You feel me? Like the trash you walk by and throw down, it only contributes to, contributes to the dilapidated nature of your community. You want your neighborhood to look better, you can constantly complain about it, do something to assist it. Every little bit helps. That piece of paper laying on that front yard that you got to walk by to get on the bus, pick that piece of paper up. It's a trash can everywhere, man. Pick the shit up. That's we all got to wear gloves. We all got to keep gloves with us now. So, I mean, hey, use the glove. Personal Something. responsibility for your own community. Yep. You feel me? Like, it used to be a time where our communities were places of pride and culture. But today, yep. we only see about ghettos, traps, and places of despair. Small things like picking up the trash can go great lengths of revitalizing people's neighborhoods. You feel me? Like, small things That's like real. that. You never know what they can spark. Just small trash pickups. One person can start a whole team of people like, man, what you doing? Picking up trash. Why? Because the neighborhood look like the neighborhood look just like this. Look like trash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want my na- and I don't want our neighborhood looking like this. You feel me? Like we gotta take pride in where we live. And if you don't take pride in where you live, how will anybody else take pride in where you live? You feel me? Like, take care of your house. You can't expect your guests to. True. Exactly. There's so many cities out there that people talk trash about and people get the people that mad that they, they live there. Well, yeah, y'all say, y'all say they look like this. Yeah. You say they look like trash because y'all got trash everywhere. Don't nobody care. Y'all randomly throw shit out the window. Don't give a fuck like 
y'all walk by shit, like, be human. You feel me? Like, that's where you live. Are you going to throw trash around in your house? Inside your house? You got to step over there today? No, nah, you ain't. And if you do, you just a nasty ass motherfucker. <laughs> Don't be like that where you live at, man. Support your community. Love your community. The more you pour into your community, the more it should pour back into you. But I guess that's not a thing no more because the time of community, it seems to have faded. And most of us, at least most of America. But we need to come back to that time of community and community strength. Because in those days we had true community strength, a lot of BS is going on in a lot of communities that was not going on because you had that strength in community. That's big facts. We need to go back to those times. Maybe a little old fashioned thinking to me, and, but hell, it's a lot of neighborhood problems that a lot of people have in their neighborhoods with drugs and these little young gangs and little young people with nothing to do because they don't want to go to school. I remember back in the day, everybody used to whip their ass. Yeah. Yeah, it was a community. Mental neighbor would catch you. Oh, your, your mom had work. Your mom had work. Where you out here? Because mm-hmm. I want to be. You want to be. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. But nowadays, everybody's scared of somebody coming back and shooting them. Yeah. Whip their ass when they're young. Uh-huh. <laughs> Put the fear of God in their ass. Community starts with the little kids. Yeah. The age of takes saying, a village. It takes a, it takes a village. There you go. Take the words of my mother. It takes a village, right? Mm-hmm. Whip their ass when they're kids. Put the fear of God in their ass. So when they grow up, they'll know what consequences truly are. Bring back, the the Bring back the community. Bring back the community. Start it with picking up trash. Make a difference, man. Don't sit here and complain about you wanting things to change. And I wish this and all that. You could be that change. One person can change something. You feel me? Uh-huh. It's a collective. It's a collective of many ones that make a great change. Yeah. But every great Somebody change is started with something small. You feel me? Everything great starts with something small. Nothing great happens all at one time. Boom! This great thing happened. No, it was something small that sparked it all off. In every instance. That's true. Be that something small that sparks that sparks that big change, man. Help your neighborhood. Help your community. Survey says, and that's all. Lies detected here. And that's all. The face top five, man. Right on. I like that one, man. That's a that's a cool way to kind of glide out the show then, uh, this week on a positive note. Fix your communities, guys. It's, it's our community. You're the only ones that can build it, man. And speaking of community, that brings me to our Black Business of the Week. Uh, this week, the Black Business I got is called Champion Candle Company. Champion Candle Company. That's Champion Candle Co. Dot com uh, at Champion Candle Co on Instagram, Champion Candles on Facebook. Um, it's basically a candle, a handmade candle company. They got candles of all fragrances. Um, if you are into that aromatherapy, if you are into like just burning a nice candle in your house, like like my family is, like it's a real good company. Their candles are high quality, handmade. Um, the smells are amazing. They got great fragrances, but the fragrances are not overpowering. Um, sometimes, you know, candles can have that where they almost make you nauseous. It's so much of that intense smell. With these, oh, like, yeah. you can light them in your crib. They burn well, and you ain't got to worry about it overpowering everything to the point where you it gets to be too much. So it's a great company. Um, Black-owned, as always. Um, you can check their testimonials out on their Instagram and their Facebook page or their website. Um, they got great reviews. And they're just a great company, man. So if you need, if you're looking for candles and you're into just, you know, taking your bath with candles, uh, setting the mood with your lady, or just, you know, adding a nice fall or spring or summer fragrance to your crib, you know, just for the holidays or some Champion Candle Co. Champion Candle at championcandleco.com at Champion Candle Co. on uh, Instagram and Champion Candles on Facebook. Great company. And as always, they are black owned. So support black businesses, my people. But yeah, man, that's all I got for y'all on that one this week. Uh, anything y'all want to say before we roll out, or anything y'all want to bring up before we roll out, guys? Uh, well, yeah, we have we have one seventy subscribers, y'all. Just wanted to bring that out there. Y'all can be yeah. anywhere in the world, but y'all here with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Continue blessings on the support, man. We appreciate, appreciate it. it.
Because we gonna keep on world. making it. We're gonna keep on rocking with the content. Oh. So we appreciate y'all joining our conversations. And as always, man, please keep keep joining us in the comments and in the and in the chats, man. Like it's how we grow. We can't, you know, we're not experts out here on nothing, just like most of the world isn't. So the only way we can learn and grow is by hearing other perspectives. So feel free to share yours with us. But yeah, man, 170. That's that's pretty fucking big, man. Yeah, right. And there, I, remember, I like that. I, I, I remember we was we was like, oh, we want to get a hundred a hundred followers or a hundred subscribers by the end of uh by the end of our first year. Mm-hmm. And we not even a full five months in, man. And look at us. Yeah, be anywhere in the world. But, but they were here. Appreciate the support, everyone. Good looking out, Pod it. Squad. Yeah. Good looking out, man. But well, yeah, man, uh, that's our show for the week, guys. Um, as always, make sure you check us out on all podcast streaming platforms. Um, as always, this will be dropping at Wednesday at midnight. Um, buy me a coffee and Patreon members. You will be getting this, the full unedited, uncut episode tonight. Um, literally before I go to sleep tonight. So it'll probably be like maybe one, two in the morning, but it's coming. So you will get that a full day before anything drops. Um, yeah. Join us on our Patreon. Um, you can do that by just going and becoming a member at buymeacoffee.com. You automatically get access to our page, um, our Discord link. I mean, Discord, where you can chat and talk to us directly, give us ideas on topics, um, talk to us about topics we've already covered and share your perspectives with us directly. Jump in the comments or the chat. And that's all I got for him. What y'all got for him, guys? Once again, always go to teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners. That's P O D N A S dash closet. I know y'all know how to spell closet dash one for all your partners, merchandise and apparel. Um, also, you can also check out our other store, teespring.com backslash stores backslash space. That's P H A C E dash co. CO dash two. That's right. Support the material, support the merchandise. Got clothes, short sleeve, long sleeve, hoodies, kids' apparels, bags, phone cases, everything. Come check us out. Everything, everything. Everything. Where the merch, where the merch resides. <laughs> yes. Come on through. Ooh. Get your <laughs> Get geared up. The weather is changing. Styles are about to be changing. Go ahead and be the first one with your partner's gear before all your friends. Indeed, indeed. What you got for a bit, Pat? Uh, same old, same old, man. Uh, y'all know the Instagram, at the partners, Facebook, Tiz, Face, Pat, are the partners. Or just in um in the search, just type in T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S, and that's where we're at pretty much. Um working on a few things behind the scenes right quick, but got to get stuff up together. Then we'll, we'll give you updates along, along the line and everything. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, as always, man, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, along with. The other third, the Padawan here, along with. You know his face, and I'm trying to catch up with the race. Catch it, catch it. Touchdown. Well, as as Faye said last week, we here, and now we out. Peace out, guys. Thanks go. for joining us, man. What's up, guy? Welcome to the partner. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I want third of the partners, your boy Tiz. It's the other third, 
right here, the Padawan. I'm all uh, aggressive and shit on my intro. <laughs> Rah! Rah! Yeah. With... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> You should have aimed for the head. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> had to catch the last episode to get that. But uh, yeah, man. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's the twentieth episode, man. We have made it to twenty podcasts <laughs> under our belt. That actually takes us to this week's Umar Johnson update. And um, I might go a a different way with this one this week. So we're going to see who really uh, rock with our content after this week. Um, So first of all, go go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to be in rare form tonight. (laughs) I saw your short video earlier on commenters. And you know me. When I see you putting stuff, I be want to jump in real quick because I be want to say, but now we're on the podcast. I'm going to address a lot of things. Um, (laughs) This is so awesome. Good or bad. Good or bad. We welcome all, all, all comments. All of them. But if you're brave enough to put it up there, leave it up there. We ain't in the eight. I know this may be the era of I'm going to put some up and delete it. Put some up there and keep it. It's yes. not personal. We don't personally know nobody. We That's know it. each other. That's it. But your comments, we build off your comments, positive or negative. So with your opinion, even though everybody has a, has opinion, just like an asshole, most of them stink. We still welcome your opinions because now we're asking for them in your comments. Exactly. So if you're going to add a comment, leave it so we all can see it and receive it. Yes, that's, that's gonna the key. Me, that's gonna you want your message to be received. Absolutely. You want your viewpoint to be received. If you want it truly to be received, don't throw it up there for a few seconds because you heard something that you didn't. Oh, they said this up. If you were paying attention to the entirety of the content, once again, take an age-old thing they used to say, don't judge a book by its cover, but now we're going to say don't judge a recording off a segment. <laughs> Listen to the content, people, but comment how you want. But please don't delete them. Good or bad. Indeed. Indeed. And to add on Sorry, to that, brother. and to add on to that, uh, please keep them up there because I be at work all day, so I don't catch them, and I I miss out on a lot. And I want to talk shit to y'all too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I be missing I mean, out, man. Hey, look, man, our, our be... platform is built off of having a conversation with each other that ends up being a conversation with all of y'all. So if you're listening to this, like I'm gonna get into it when I get to my tears tape, but what Faith said is absolutely correct, like. We're not afraid of having the conversation. We're not afraid to learn something new, find out we were right, or possibly find out we're wrong. But like we, the part of the, the process of this podcast is just us learning from other people and having big conversations that we would have with each other, but have getting to have them with all of y'all. So don't, like he said, don't delete them, man. Don't delete them. It's unless you're oh, getting disrespectful shit. or something. <clears throat> Outside of that, man, as long as you're keeping it respectful, you can disagree. You can tell us, hey, I don't think that y'all right on that. Are you wrong? Or this is why I didn't really care for that. That's cool. Like, it may be something we miss. We're not experts on everything. We just got opinions on everything. So, you know, keep it right. Don't edit um, shit. But yeah, so I'm going to start with the Umar Johnson update and I'm going to take that into the tears take. Um, so, Umar. St- Pretty much the only thing he's done this week is post a bunch of shit about his books or his little book signing tour. And uh, he was on the end, post a couple radio things. So he went on the radio this week. He spoke on Derek Jackson again. Um, you could tell that like, he's still 
continuing his habit of like riding whatever the current wave, wave. came in something. Yeah. Um, he's still saying that alpha males uh, can, are unable to be monogamous, but I actually agree with some of the stuff he said as far as like be, men being honest and just saying, hey, I'm not going to be able to be monogamous and giving a woman a choice on whether she want to rock with that or not. So I, I'm not mad at that part, but yeah. For some reason, he's not back at the school. Um, he didn't really say a lot about the school. Um, the radio host did not ask him about the school, so I'm pretty sure that he had some kind of way of where he sent some stuff that he wasn't going to talk about ahead of time or whatever mm -hmm. the case, because to me, any radio host that hosts this guy should be asking about the school because that's what he screams the most on a regular basis. So if that's yeah. what he's supposed to be doing, let's hold him accountable. He also put himself on a five-month um, plan where he says he's going to have the school grand opening um, at the end of August, beginning of September. So we got him on the clock for that. We're going to be keeping track of that. And I hope to see a fucking grand opening on If I Tune Day Drive or Big Papa Boulevard, whatever the fuck you call that street that he, whatever. But yeah, I'm hoping to see the actual school do something. Um, but we all know it's not. Um, we're, those of you who are like me, who have followed this guy for a long time and who are actually supporters or you've donated like myself, you know it's been a long time coming and it ain't no damn school. So we'll see if that happens. I'm also going to start holding them accountable for. Excuse me, I had to give me some water. I'm also gonna start holding them accountable for uh, these little programs he said he's gonna start that you never hear anything about after the initial startup. So he said he got a book club coming out next month in Camden, New Jersey. So I'm gonna be looking for a book club next month. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if he can actually hold true to anything he's ever said. Now. That's really all Uma did this week. The Uma sector has mostly been a buzz this week because of this Uma sector beef going on between content creators that are for Uma or against Uma or I don't know what the hell their stance is at this point, some of them. It's just, they basically have gotten to the point where the, the lawsuit that I was telling y'all about from the August Archibald guy, that got dismissed without prejudice. Uh, the actual plaintiff or whatever withdrew the uh, lawsuit because of some type of witness tampering or witness intimidation or something like that that was claimed, some weird like that. So apparently the people in the Umar sector was like bullying the dude so that he would get rid of the lawsuit. Um, also people that are like the good guys and these other groups that are for Umar or against Lyndon Allen mainly, um, they have gotten together and they were like, counter suing people the shock him rod do was counter suing somebody saying that she was the plaintiff even though she's repeatedly stated that she's not the plaintiff so it's just getting ridiculous um goofy shit i mean, I mean the goofy <laughs> shit but not the goofy shit is the kind that we with it's like the goofy shit like y'all sure y'all grown <laughs> y'all tripping like y'all acting like a bunch of little high school folk like like we need to act like we're adults people <laughs> um, I don't know about everybody's channel, but if you watch our content, I keep saying it on most episodes. Our focus is not on him being a speaker. I don't care about that. I don't care about the people who make videos for or against him. That's their business, just like it's our business to have our own podcast. So whatever you want to talk about on your YouTube channel, whatever, that's you. But what I do care about is this school promise that he made, because I donated to that. And it's a lot of other people, thousands of people that are donated to that as well. And we want a fucking school or we want an explanation or we want you to just stop the lie. Like something has to give. So that's why I'm on Uma's ass. The rest of this shit, um, cyberbullying is not cool. Doxing is pretty much illegal. And y'all channels are not growing from this. It's the same people just going back and forth. So it ain't like you even... Get no YouTube check off of this. That's crazy. Like you're just making yourself look like an ass out here to be for people that you don't know. These ain't people that you hang out with or that you see every day or that you got to roll through the same neighborhoods and interact. Like these people on YouTube, grow the fuck up, people, and get back focused on the school. If you are 
person that makes videos against Umar because you truly believe that he is a scammer and that it, he needs to be stopped because of that, get back focus on that. Because the rest of the shit is just, I don't know. I it, it make me really almost embarrassed to make videos about something that I'm actually passionate about because I'm invested in it. I, I put money into Umar's coffers. I've asked the, the questions the right way and I still haven't gotten an answer, uh, explanation or nothing. So that's what I'm shooting for. But that ain't what we do. And if that's not what you really do, go ahead and make you some content based off the shit that actually you're passionate about. Something that's going to actually grow your channels instead of beefing with each other, putting lawsuits on each other and going on each other panels talking about you getting body bags like you in some presidential debate. Like, shit, YouTube. Y'all arguing over bullshit. So grow up, people. And then lastly, because of that nonsense, it kind of takes me into what's been happening lately. So lately, as our channel grows so ever hum humbly and modestly, I'm noticing, like Faye said, people that are, and it's only people that are for Umar, because they it's never a negative comment or a comment against something crazy or nothing like that or we putting stuff up and deleting it. It's only the Umar people that's, that support him and are against what we're saying about him. They come in, they leave a comment, they accuse us of pandering in one comment, they accuse us of, uh, well, what y'all gonna do? I'd love to see what you gonna do as a black man. Then when we respond respectfully and explain, oh, pandering? Well, 80 to 90% of our content has nothing to do with Umar. Our largest video out is Pat talking about Justice League. Yep, like, this, this is not an Umar channel. Tiz invested his money into FDMG, so Tiz going to talk about Umar till I get an explanation or till he stopped this bullshit and stopped scamming my people out of their bread. But when I answer, answer so respectfully, y'all, it was so tactful. Even asked for, well, what, a, what am I missing? You, you talk back to me. Let me know something. Then they delete the comment. Stop throwing rocks and hiding your hands. Had a conversation because we open to it. And that's my tears take. Grow up. Stop acting like children because this is a grown-up channel. When we, put out a, when we put out our content every week, we click no. It's not for kids. We're expecting people in our age range, or at least that are adults, to come on our platform and act like such, which is why we want to have a conversation. So if you disagree, honestly, cool. Leave your respectful comment letting us know that, and then let us have that conversation. But don't come on here accusing us of bullshit or saying we're not doing enough for black people, when actually, I lead more children's lives than Umar will ever do in real life. We are up here as black men who are stable, taking care of families, taking care of households, doing our women right, like, yeah. So stop deleting your shit, had a conversation with us. And if you are a person in the Umar sectors that's beefing back and forth and shit, take that shit down the road somewhere. Cause there's real people out here like me, like the partners that actually are just against people that be scamming our folks. That's really what it is. And who are really with that real shit. Right. So you take away from all of that when you come in and you do the bullshit. So don't bring the bullshit over here. If you're going to come over here, you disagree with us. Cool. Let's have a debate. Let's have a conversation. You might teach me something. I teach you something. We all learn at the end of it. And, and it's all great because that's what we here for. But all that other shit, don't come over here with that. Because then that made me want to get with the goofy shit. And I'm with a whole different type of goofy shit. So please let me stay in my little civilian lane, my little new lane, my little kumbaya, I must stay. And yeah, that's the test for the week. At your age, people, not your shoe size. Um, yeah, and speaking of shoe sizes, um, not sure who had the biggest foot in this one, and this is a horrible transition, but yeah, <laughs> Quavo and Saweetie got into some bullshit last year in the elevator, and that's now a thing. <laughs> and that's now a thing. Um, so have y'all seen the video, like the full video on TMZ and all that? 
All I know is an altercation. All I know is when I when I finally get when I finally get famous and finally get with someone and I'm not single no more, we're taking the stairs everywhere we go. (laughs) Because evidently the problem is elevators. That's what I think. Now goddamn elevators separating black love. Take an escalator, something, or just be me, or just come down to the lobby. Just come. Want to learn how to teleport? <laughs> but um, when y'all watch the video, I was, I guess, I'll start the conversation off by like asking y'all, like, who, who was in the wrong, or like, who was in the wrong mode? So, like, how did y'all see the altercation? Because I've seen a lot of stuff one way, seen some stuff the other way, but I'm kind of just want to see what y'all think first. I think my perspective is going to be kind of different because I've been in uber toxic ass relationships in the past. So I think my, <laughs> I'll speak last. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I can't really tell shit because everything was moving so fast. Like, and you don't know what they were, what was going on in the hallway before you got into the elevator. Like, you saw a lot of movement in the elevator or whatever. And, you know, like, I don't know, man. Like, I can't really, you, you can't, I say, usually you judge who is in the wrong by who did the first thing, right? But we were, the video is at the very end of the first thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really tell who is who. So when I look at stuff like that, I'm looking at it and just be like, all right, this is none of my business to say anything. Because if I say, all right, he's in the wrong, if he started it, it's, that goes without saying. If it, you know what I'm saying, like if I say Sweetie is wrong, you know, like that goes without saying. We just don't know until we get like the whole ordeal, but we already know they're like in a toxic relationship, so you can't, yeah, <clears throat> like, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so my biggest problem with it is, first of all, I'm gonna say I think they both wrong. Um, mm-hmm. For them to even get to the point where I, I've kind of analyzed the video as best as I could with the clip that's out, you know, like Pat said, it's really no way to tell what led to that point. Mm-hmm. But I do know that for you to get to the point where obviously these are some facts that you can look at in the video. Obviously, Saweetie really wanted to destroy his PS5 and his Call of Duty or whatever that was because she kept grabbing his bag. The whole thing was over this bag. At least the part of the video that we see. So for you to get to the point where she wants to take your stuff or she's gotten to the point where she's taking your stuff, that's toxic as fuck. That means you went way past the argument. Y'all are just acting stupid. Now. And you're in the hallway yeah. embarrassing the fuck out yourself. So you're in public acting like this. But then to get to the point where she then swings on him. Because that's where the video first cuts on. She's taking the bag and she turns around, swings on him. He backs up. Mm. She then tries to toss the bag into the elevator. And I don't know whether she was going to bounce with the bag or keep him from getting the bag or what. But when she tried, when she did that, he then, she then tried to like hurry up and I don't know, but like get away with the bag and she Mm -hmm. she didn't get a chance to toss it because he ended up grabbing her arm and spinning her around. Then both of them went to the elevator. He dove on the bag like it was a loose fumble in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and, and he fell on the ground first. And because she didn't let the bag go, the momentum took her to the ground. Then she lays there. I don't know what she was saying, but lays there like a dead deer for the rest of the video. Now, I, I, I think they're both wrong. She shouldn't be swinging on him. He shouldn't have grabbed her arm and swung her. They shouldn't have been fighting over no damn bad. They shouldn't have been arguing and acting a fool in public. But I see an overwhelming majority of people saying Quavo is an abuser and he's a a domestic violence guy now and all of this stuff. Why is it that society blames men in every situation while making the woman the victim? Like, what the hell is going on with that? That's what media designed us to think first. Like, that shit is so uh, fucking fair. Like, Johnny Depp got his ass beat by his wife. Solange beat the shit out of Jay-Z. Like, Mm -hmm. and everybody applauds the women for beating beating up a man. But a dude 
grabbed the girl's arm to keep her from th destroying his property and jumped on the bag and now he's an abuser? He ain't right for doing it, but he ain't an abuser. <laughs> Y'all see why I'm single? <coughs> oh, yeah. You ready? You ready? <laughs> huh? You ready for it? You ready for it? Nah, nah. Yeah, ready? Yeah, I'm ready because I'm gonna get Ian Ralph. He said it. <laughs> I don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> here, here you go. Now, as I've always said, I've been in a very toxic relationship in my past before I got married. Um, I've been the most toxic person there is, and I've been with the most toxic person there is. You see me? I've been in verbal, verbal altercations. I've been in many physical altercations. I've been slapped, punched. Somebody tried to hit me in the face with a laptop. I pulled my pistol on people. I pulled a machete. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. Exactly. Alibaba. I've been there those years. I, I, I was there in those years. And I've been in their situation. Um, I've been in the Chris Brown and Rihanna situation. Um, I've been in the Bow Wow situation. Now, see, each one of those situations ended volatility and with violence. All but one that everybody blamed the man. Only time the man didn't get blamed was Bow Wow. Bow Wow had all them scratches and scrapes and everything on his face. Everybody was clowning him. Oh, you got beat up by a girl. Yeah. Let that but look at the though. exact same situation. But look at the exact same situation. Chris Brown and Rihanna. Same thing. Man, female. Around the same age range. But female ends up with something on her face and, oh, he saw this, he saw that, oh, he saw this. Won't nobody clown to her? Yeah. Once again, remember the women's suffrage movement. Equal treatment. That's my angle. That's what I see shit at. Because regardless of who right and who wrong, two people participating in this action. So at the end of the day, you both put energy towards that negative outcome. You're both wrong. Facts. You feel me? Now, you clown a man because of masculinity. Oh, you got beat by a woman. Right. Uh, I, I, I chose not to put my hands on I, I got. I chose not to put my hands on a woman. Good. I'm, I'm a man. Not I got beat up by, okay, cool. I take it back to when I was in sixth grade. I got to fight with a female. I chose just to grab her and not hit her because I was always told you don't hit females. You feel me? Right. So while you hitting me on my back, hitting, oh, you got beat up by a girl. No, I, I was raised not to hit females. I don't know what y'all do, but <laughs> I don't hit girls. So that's the way I see it. Growing up, being an immature man, an immature young man, you get into physical altercations in your relationship, and it's all about a thing of pride in the heat of the moment. And pride kills men and women. Yeah, You got to let that ego go. So Next what she said this so what she said this to you, man. She, she she tried to slap me. Okay, walk the walk the other way. I was always yeah. told if there's ever a point in a relationship where you feel like you're gonna put your hands on another person, in it's time that to relationship. go. It's time to go. Right yeah, there. absolutely. Right there in that relationship, because at the end of the day, you have to be more self aware of yourself and your own personal actions and what you could possibly do to somebody. You feel me? I know me at this point in my life because of the things I've been through and the relationships I've been through. So I'm totally self-aware of how far mentally I'm willing to take in anything. So I know when to opt out. Yeah. I, I know when to take that step away. R regardless of who I'm dealing with, man or woman, because I have to I'm think take it. it there. Yeah. I know I'm going to give it to you tenfold. Yeah, I'm a, I know be all the way. Yeah, I got to I'm gonna go all the way because if you come in with that same energy at all times, I reciprocate times ten. So yeah, I have to let myself. Yeah. I have to take that that road less traveled. I have to take the road. Let me not choose that. Let me just take myself out of the situation. So whatever you choose to call me, you can call me the bitch. You can call me the punk. Or you got this by woman. Okay, whatever. I'd rather save face and save my freedom. Yeah. Regardless of anything. Like my mother always told me, people people always talk about people talking about Jesus. Are you better than Jesus? Take a thing about that. Hmm. Does what yeah. another motherfucker say to me matter to me? 
niggas clown Jesus, niggas talk shit about Jesus. I ain't better than him. So yeah. do I really expect people to have something to say about me? Positive or negative? People who don't know you gonna talk about you. Big fact. Who gives a fuck? And that situation in that elevator, we call a snippet of a bigger situation. We don't know what happened in the room. We don't know what happened the night before. We don't know what happened at all. All we see is that small snippet. And we're basing our whole judgments on a small snippet. Right. And we're trying to pinpoint who is wrong, who is wrong. We don't know the situation. We can't hear shit. We don't know nothing. So we can't I, say who is wrong. I know we somebody know swung a punch and somebody but, did not. Exactly. You feel me? Like, all I know is both people contributed because we don't know what he did before the elevator doors Indeed. opened. Indeed. And we still don't know what she did on the way to the elevator. And we don't know what was said in the room before they got out the out the room. Big facts. Big facts. With all these missing details, the yeah. masses are still quick to judge and label the, the man. man as that's a, what that's as the, the shit that killed. Label the man as the oh he did this oh he's so he said why? It's like are we gonna be full equals right. or are we gonna right. just settle for these double standards? Because at the end of the day, exactly. like we can't have it both ways. You can't say men and women are equal and women deserve to be completely equal and all genders should have the same equal rights and equal everything. Okay, but well, that means that when a man gets swung on or a man get beat up, keep that same energy for the woman that's swinging on him as you would for a man swinging on a woman. Like, it can't be that. Like, that shit be pissing me off. Like this. It's not fair. Like, like this. Come on, man. Like, you remember the, you remember the comedy movie? You remember the comedy movie that came out that was all about domestic violence, about a woman beating up a man? Anybody remember that out, domestic though. violence movie? You remember, anybody remember, remember that movie? Yeah. I think I remember yeah. that joke, man. Norbert. Yep. Yeah. Norbert was about female domestic violence. She beat his ass, and that was a comedy. Reverse the roles. It becomes it's a, a lifetime. Bad, it's a lifetime Tyler, movie. Bad Tyler Perry movie, yeah. It can be a horror it's movie, a movie too, written a different way. It's a lifetime movie. I mean, look at it. The reverse of Norbert is the movie enough. Mm. That's all it is. Start with the double standards and get equal treatment. That's it, man. Women want equal. Women wanted equal rights on all platforms. You want equal pay, and equal everything, and I'm down to give it all because I feel God made you as our equals, not less. But if you want you equal treatment, same you have to accept equal blame when you wrong. Treatment. You have to accept yeah. the equal treatment on all levels. It can't be equal when you want it to be, and not when you don't. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Can't be both you ways. Want it, take it all. Take the whole hundred percent. You want equal? Here you go. Well, well Marlo on the wire said, "You you want it to be one way, but it's the other way. Uh-uh. It's simple as that. You can't have it both ways, man. That double standard shit is played, yo. That shit pissed me off so bad. The way they were just ripping Quavo apart, and I'm like, but I ain't mad at you for ripping him apart because he plays a part in it. But rip her apart too." Yeah, and the video it. starts with her swinging on him, and that's the only punch seen in the whole video. Her, what, what, what started <laughs> the source up from her? What started the source, uh, the source of all this negativity in the first place? Now, some people may say it was um, when she was on Justin LeBoy show with her ex Justin Cohn. Well, this elevator some, show was from last year, so it can't be that. Oh, okay. So yeah, the no, Ella, that's that's the other shit. I thought it was some current. Shit. The shit came out <clears throat> this week, but it's <clears throat> it happened like last year sometime. So oh. it's been a it's been months, if not a year, of whatever this type of behavior going on more than likely. Because I'm sure for them to get to this point where she's comfortable so speaking, who got paid to turn that footage in? Show and all that. Like, oh, I'm sure it was her people because. They break up this week, and instead of everybody clowning Quavo or going at him about being a cheater or whatever, they were saying she looked crazy on Justin LeBoy's show and saying that she looked wild out here the way she carried it. So uh-huh. what they were saying, uh, some I don't remember what radio shows I listened to. I was listening to somebody, and they were saying that, like, it seemed like Justin Le- uh Sweetie people probably put the video out as, like, PR to try to, like, flip the narrative and, like, see, this is why she left, and you know what I'm saying? She's not the bad guy here. Quavo was the bad guy. Da, da, da. So I if I don't know that that's the case, but that's what somebody like hypothesized or whatever. But they got a motherfucking personal relationship. 
about that shit. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that let them they, uh, be. believe black I women, be. but believe black men too. Believe black men too. You know but what? Believe black women because they definitely don't get believed a lot. But have it just, just even if, if we go, if we go give it all even, let's even everything. Be logical, be, reason, and reality. But aren't they all on the same label? I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. Let me look this know. up. I think they're all on the same label. I think Saweetie and and the Migos are on all on the same label. And if they are, you might be right. I don't know. If they are, now, hold on with me, because I, 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 I need to find this out before I say what well, I, I know. To say. I know Cardi, when she got with Offset, they, they started doing business together, so I wouldn't be surprised if Saweetie did the same thing being with Quavo. Uh, it would make huh. sense. But I don't know what label they on, but I know one thing. Warner, Okay. She's she gonna have water. a rough time with the music because I already didn't really care for her raps. So I don't know where she gonna get some uh some hits from now because <laughs> she ain't got I've no more people help. Oh, I'm saying is, tap 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 in, tap tap tap, tap in. The girls like them. Tap 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 in. Yeah. yeah she be trying I, to I ride the little something. city girls and uh bag and style type wave. It's a it's a way. But Meg the Stallion and the City Girls actually can rap, and she can't, so it don't really go. Mm -hmm. But um, she just be girl. taking a bunch of old nineties beats that we used to rock to in high school and rap over them, basically rap, rap over the revamp version. Of them. I'm not yeah. that. Man. So, I'm sorry, I just have my own particular taste of music, people. Uh, <laughs> hey, she was. Good. She's on Warner, I like, but I, I like I was, the biggest thing she's known for though is being with Quavo. So that tells you a lot about. Yeah, I was I was thinking honest. now possibly that this could be a rollout for something because if, if it's put, a rollout, this a dumbass rollout because it don't make Quavo look good and he the money. But, like she look, ain't had no album bigger than Culture Three. But look, look at all the dumbass rollouts that's been going out for the past past four years now like it's always some dumb shit or some fuckery going on and then the album drop it happens every single time like shoot I um argue with you there. i would like to but i don't have a good argument against that right now you probably right every now. single time like it seemed like all There's right some weirdo shit going all right on. kanye's doing some fuckery all right okay jesus Random gospel Random gospel album. Okay. All right. Who's next? All right. Drake. Drake's out here flirting with somebody's ex-wife. All right. Oh. Drop three billboard bangers. All right. All right. Yeah. It's always some fuckery. You know what I'm saying? Like, bad publicity is good publicity. I hate that. I hate, I hate that age. It's not that age, man. I've learned that. I learned that when in college, so I and I learned that in like marketing class in high school. So that shit's been going on. It's just now we're at a, a more, uh, it's more media and mediums to put the media out. But it used to be you face. would make a mistake and flip it mm -hmm. because you was already getting beat up. So you'd flip it to try to you know get the marketing out of it. Now it's I'm seeking the dumb shit. Not as but, a mistake, and I got caught, so let me flip this narrative real quick. Let me get the PR team, and we're going to make this into the... We're going we gonna to get some money out of this. No, it's like, I'm doing the bullshit for the attention. I just want people to keep looking at me. Please, but, follow me on IG. Please. Uh, catch, catch what I'm getting at. Now, right, there... Uh, now, back then, they had plenty of time to, like, think of a plan of action and go forth and cover some shit up. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. you don't got that plan of action. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't got that that planning time, Batman. You you got to think of something right then and there. So and that's it's like, the first thing. yeah. So now all fucking you can up do, that much. Yeah, all you can do is go along with the fuckery. I think that's how Takashi got fucked up. For real. Man, they for gotta real. Stop fucking doing the fuckery, <laughs> man. Like this shit is like just going along with it. Improve people. Improve. Like now, now it's like. Give me something to talk about. Yeah, because I still got to get this segment going. 
Yeah. Content. Man. Well, shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Weedy has just opened a whole can of worms, and people out there, please stop doing these double standards. Uh, we gonna be equal, or we not? But we can't have it both ways. Please stop trying to make it cross over. Stop with the bullshit. And young people, stop doing this stupid shit where you got to make it a rollout. Roll it out because you got some fucking good music, not just because you slipped up and done some dumb shit. Like, it's corny. But I tell you what ain't corny. We got a new segment. Uh, Faye started it last week uh, interviewing me. And it's Get to Know a Partner. Um, So this week, you got to know me last week. Um, So this week, the Padawan is going to be interviewed. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, man. How you doing, Pat? Um, I'm a good man. I just got off work earlier, so I'm, I'm I got a little rested. I had a little bit of a Red Bull, so I can charge myself up, man. Right um, on. So you, you ready for this? Oh hell no! Nah. But yeah, we can go right on <laughs> in it because that's how I do life. <laughs> hell no! <nah. laughs> oh hell no! Nah. <laughs> well, what was your childhood like, Pat? Um, my childhood was pretty cool. Like, I I was going through a lot of stuff, but it's kind of like, let's say, I was living in it. So I didn't know something was wrong until later on. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, my mom and my, um, my real dad separated or whatever for whatever reason. And I couldn't figure it out until I got, became an adult. Why? You know what I'm saying? So- That's real. Uh, I lived in the same na- uh, same neighborhood. I was in a neighborhood where uh, my grandmother was like in charge of the neighborhood um, in Portsmouth. Uh, so pretty much most of my neighbors was family. And then like uh, I had my red da- real dad side of the family. They were living there because basically my grandma was the manager there. And right. then um, my mom's side of the family was there pretty much. So I was, everybody knew me around the neighborhood as, you know, little version of Pat. Now, he's not Pat, but my real dad's you. name is the same as my, uh, my real name. Okay. Gotcha. So, look, uh, yeah. Pat. Yeah. So, my mom's parents, they, they didn't fuck with my real dad or whatever. So, I kind of, from time to time, he used to work as a maintenance man in the area. So, from time to time, I see him. And then I, you know, just because I'm curious to know where I was. At, at its, um, I remember I was in kindergarten and a, the teacher I had asked about my family. I was like, I don't have a dad. I live with my mom. And that was it or whatever. And it wasn't until I said that out loud that I realized, wait a minute, that shit is not right. <laughs> Some, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. majority of the time, I kind of like... Uh, in Portsmouth, I mean, we live, uh, Portsmouth is not like the richest area in the world or whatever, but my mom was a school teacher. She provided, my dad still provided whether I knew about it or not, you know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. Um, Everybody knew me until I moved to Chesapeake in third grade and I went from being in an all black neighborhood into mostly white. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was a culture shock. So, like, I don't know. I and it, it was weird because, like, I'll come back to Portsmouth and then they'll be like, You talk white. And I'm like, I don't Talk white. My mom's a teacher and I talk right. So, I don't get my ass. <laughs> I talk right. Uh, <laughs> I talk right. So, my mom don't whoop my ass or whatever. If I get a bad grade, that's all. You know what I'm saying? So, right. uh, I've always been a weirdo, I've always been back to myself. Um, for the most part in Portsmouth, cool, uh, like my childhood was cool. Had like chilled out with friends around the area. Like I, it was so cool to the point that I could stay up late at night, and I'm five years old or whatever because fucking neighborhood is my family, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so you see wild shit at nighttime, pretty much. Yeah, but, Portsmouth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. 
what have you learned from your transition into adulthood from childhood? Time wait for no man to do the shit now. Hmm. And I learned that shit the hard way every fucking day. Sometimes you say it. Sometimes they say it. <laughs> uh, you know, every type of way possible, just fucking do it or whatever. I, and I had to learn a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do on my own or whatever. But I just, it, it wouldn't, I went, it wouldn't get learned until I just go ahead and do it. That's, that's pretty right. much the biggest thing right now. Probably others, but that's the one thing that pops out the most. That's real. That's real. That's mm -hmm. a big lesson to learn. I think we've all had to learn that at some point in your life. I think that's a, a rite of passage <sighs> for all adults. So I ain't mad at you there. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, what was your dream? I had many dreams. My dreams be vivid. Or oh, whatever. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do the the childhood impossible shits and then I'm gonna say what the real dream was, pretty much. Um I was a kid, so I wanted superpowers. <laughs> that was bad. All right. Um and then the Batman movie came out and I was like, oh, all right, the only way. All right, so superpowers ain't real, but I can still be a superhero if I get rich. So my next dream was I need to figure out a way how to fucking get rich in fucking Portsmouth in the 80s. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I got into drawing when I was like five. My um, my aunt, my aunt, uh, my youngest aunt or whatever on my mom's side. Mm -hmm. She used to draw, and she made this painting of, what's that character? Strawberry Shortcake looked just like it. Mm. So I looked at it, I was like, oh, you did that? I want to learn how to do that, too. I think the first drawing I drew was like a car. It was like a box <laughs> and wheels or whatever. Yep. We're going to pretend it was a box Chevy. But, yeah, it was like some boxes and wheels or whatever. And those boxes right. and wheels turned into... Batman over and over again and then when X-Men came out I drew Wolverine in so many ways clawing people and then I just started making my own characters because <laughs> I got bored of just looking at everybody else's characters I was like man That's I funny. could do this shit <laughs> like you know you watch you watch cartoons and stuff and I'd be like hey, hey, your favorite character do something but he don't say what you would say like mm. you know what I'm saying I was like you know, if that dude b turned his arm into a big ass cannon and blasted me and I survived, oh, I'm talking mad shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's talking shit the whole time. He got a whole speech. How dare you go against me, bitch? You, you know, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching Wolverine. I'm watching the, all, the closest person that gets close to what I would say is Wolverine, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, but so my whole then that's when I got into the dream of like, you know what, one of these days I'm gonna get my either my own cartoon or my own comic book, pretty much. So yeah, <laughs> biggest okay. dream. Now, my own now comic. I know the, the origins of Godlike. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um what are your life's biggest influence? Um maybe give a personal and uh a celebrity slash professional type of influence? Uh, my biggest influences, I would say my biggest influences, my mom first, of course. Oh, that's real. Uh, and then my grandmother, because my grandmother, now, all right, my, my grandmother is just a beast. Like, pretty much, like, when I, um, my grandmother, um, uh, I love my grandmother on my mother's side, but I'm talking about my grandmother on my real dad's side. She was the manager of the neighborhood I was and yeah. I was living in when I was younger. And um, she taught how to read at a time that was like illegal to read. Wow. You know what I'm saying? She learned how to, she went to college. She was like one of the first people in her family to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was her against the United States of America, and she won. And that way, she could actually do real estate anywhere in the country. That's like, crazy. I seen her. I seen when I was young, I'm in her office, and I seen this white man from, 
I think HUD or something, go into the office, right? And he, he looked like, when you first going, he looked like he was ready for business. He about to <laughs> shut some stuff down, you know what I'm saying? Puffing right. and puffing. And then when he came out the office, he like looks just as sad and, and shit. I thought he was, I was like, he was apologizing and everything. And I was oh, like, wow. And she basically said, and like my grandma was so great at dissing people in the most polite way possible. It was like, <laughs> like my grandmother would call that nice and nasty. Yeah, she was like, oh, you know, she basically said, no, it's okay, baby. You just dumb. You just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you just dumb. Like that's all. You don't know whether to say thank you, ma'am, or feel All right, you came in here huffing and puffing, thinking that. Uh, this the um, this nigga lady don't know what she's talking about, and she happens to know what she's talking about, and and she got mad respect when she passed like the the um one of the sinister uh, senators of like in for Virginia um sent somebody to speak on his behalf because he did a, oh, she wow. did she did a lot of things in Portsmouth on the low like she it's got people time. people a house of equity like. Oh man, I feel like my grandma could be. She done some black history on the low in Portsmouth. You know what I'm That's saying? Real. And and the mayor even said she sent somebody too. So that was one of my main um, main influences or whatever. She's also an inspiration for like part of my book or whatever. Like oh, wow. One of the characters in my book, whatever. She controls the town and it's a town for like refugees. Whatever, so it's kind of like a homage to my grandma because that's that was her job, pretty much. That's and then true. I would say, celebrity wise, I would say, you know, you have your celebrities going up, and you always think they're cool or whatever. But the person I sat there that I really actually wanted to be as a person, um, man. Uh, the first black person I saw was Michael Jackson when I was young. Be honest okay. with you. Okay. Be honest with you. The first black person I saw was black. They just like did magical shit and everybody was cool with whatever he did. 80s Michael Jackson or whatever. That's real. That's or real. whatever. Then when I got older, I would say, I'm going to just say Stan Lee because. Mm -hmm. When he started Marvel, he was in his 40s or whatever. And I'm like, you started that shit in your 40s? Like, that was, that's like really late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Compared yeah. to Especially a lot of how long that shit went and how long he was alive still running that shit. Mm -hmm. like, that's a whole 50, 50 more years. That's somebody else's whole life. <laughs> exactly. That's shit. Crazy. One third of mine. Right. Like well, one one third of that is my life. So just saying to myself, okay, I could start this shit now and at least see this, you know what I'm saying? Because Stan Lee, you know, I'm pretty sure he has a little bit more privilege than I do. So mm -hmm. he got to see his own character swing in front of him when he was like 90. Uh, I need to hurry up and do this now because black people life rate <laughs> pretty much. That's but real. Yeah, but him and um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. I, I love Spike. Okay. I love space. And it's just the simple fact that I can see I the passion, the I passion he had for science and um, the way, I mean, they asked that man to, to explain shit. He can explain just the most complex ideas about space and the universe. And simplify it so you can understand it. You know what I'm saying? One of the and the highest forms of mastery is when you can teach. Mm -hmm. And like, not that I ever had a, I'm always been into space and science and stuff like that. Not that I didn't, I, I have a hard time um, a, understanding some of the aspects of space and time and, you know, universe and stuff like that mm -hmm. or whatever. But I wouldn't be able to explain it to someone else. And then when I watch that, I could be like, oh, all right. So now when I have conversations, I can explain it. And it sounds like I know what I'm talking about instead of, instead of when I'm like, mm, and um, and sometimes like 
when we recorded on this podcast. Humming it, humming it, humming it, humming it, humming it. You just got to tell oh, your tongue that you're ready to talk. So man, sometimes, I'm gonna be, since we think about myself, sometimes, man, it I, my brain moves faster than my tongue. So it's like, I'm thinking <laughs> faster. I'm gonna be like, whoa, whoa, we, we moving. Hey, hey, hey. My voice is like, man, slow it's down, time, man. guys. I got, I got to He's say it first. <laughs> so that's, yeah. So, yeah, those are my biggest influence. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Farrakhan, okay. you know what I'm saying? Some rappers, Jay-Z, just for the certain aspects, pretty much. But, yeah. That's a pretty good list. I think that's a really dope list of uh, influences there. Mm-hmm. What Jesus. has been your... Okay, uh, of course, right on. Yeah. Um, what have been your defining moments in your life? Defining moments or whatever. Um, defining moments as what what made me as a man of, that I am today, what, or yes. just like what 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 would be the standout moments in your life that made Pat the Pat we see before us today? Um. I think because a lot of me growing up was me getting out of my own shell and I'm still trying to get out of that own shell or whatever so I think the first time I actually freestyled around a bunch of group of people Mm. because anybody else rapper Pat was an experiment Whatever. On my last episode, I was like, sometimes you have to jump into your extrovert self or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, just dodge. That was me jumping into my extrovert shell or whatever. Because to be a rapper, you kind of have to be an extrovert or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatnot. That's That's so, so, which is the complete opposite of my personality. I'm an introvert. Like I can, you know, I like to be in my own little cave in my own little world, think of my own little ideas and stuff like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when I first decided, all right, I'm going to rap. All right, I'm going to actually write a rhyme. All right, I'm going to actually say this in front of people. All right, I'm going to keep saying it in front of different people that don't know me at all to see if the fuck I'm actually saying is worth saying. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, okay. It's an open mic. Let me just try that or whatever. So, oh, okay. They're battling. I'm going to try to battle. Just a simple version of just me trying. And then, and then at one time, uh, I would say when um, it was ODU, it was right when I was promoting. And, uh, Karis one came down to speak at ODU, mm-hmm. whatnot. He spoke first, like uh, like a keynote speaker type thing, and then the next day they had like a a, a concert and everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the dudes was promoting it or whatever. Um, somehow we got around Karis one. I actually got to meet him, and I was like, man, I just want to freestyle with you to say I freestyle with a freaking legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell so, yeah. That's, that's some big shit. <laughs> so I didn't. It. Yeah, like so I didn't <laughs> get the freestyle help with him, but um I was round in the back and he had this segment where he was like, all right, you know, on some traditional hip hop shit. I'm gonna mm-hmm. pass the mic to somebody mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, so it was a a local rapper there. I'm not gonna say no names, so I don't know how you feel about it. <laughs> what not <laughs> it was a local bit rapper there and he was actually on um on a Nas song and um he was there with his crew and they were fucked up i ain't gonna lie they were drunk <laughs> <laughs> or whatever he was up there Kara's one gave they the mic to up. him yeah like Kara's one gave the mic to him um he was freestyling rapping or whatever it seemed like the, the crowd was liking their own thing. He started rapping some of the song that he did with Nas and everything. Um, and KRS One, you know, I think he was like really big into the show. So he saw that like people were drifting off. He was just pouncing around. He looked like he was mad, like tough man or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
all of a sudden he came up to me. He's like, yo, grab the mic. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, hey, hey, like, hey, one of the he God was, MCs tell you to grab the mic. You grab the fucking microphone, man. He said, hey, I was like, ain't he performing? He was like, he went over there, grabbed the mic from the rapper, and then gave it to me. So that was the longest three seconds of decision making in my life. I was like, yo, if I don't rap something out my mouth when this these people move out the way and put me out there, I, there's no more, it's there's no point of me rapping anymore. That's real. So I went out there. I started fucking rapping my ass off. B. <laughs> Yo, there's like footage. Somebody had, I need to find this footage, but they had yes, footage of KRS One responding, uh, like his facial expression when I said one of my lines and shit. I was like, when I say King of the V, gripping up my crown piece, uh, put you in your place quicker than your house key. I said something like that, right? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hang out, boy. Like if yeah, y'all didn't have bars, but that's yeah, we'll get into that. But um, but yeah, and then he actually picked me up. It's a um I'm gonna find it, it's on YouTube somewhere, but they got an interview and he actually talks about passing the mic to me or whatever. Oh, we actually fine. did that. So there's footage out there he actually saying that, but there's footage somewhere where he just like his eyes lit up when I said something or whatever. So that was a cool moment. That was like one of the moments that taught me, like, all right, if you bout something, you might you gonna have to do it. It's gonna be time when you gotta show and prove. So you need to just go ahead and do it. So yeah. Okay. And countless other times that I've fucked up in life that have <laughs> defined my moments and guided me in a, in the right path. That's real. Pretty much. Well, we all got them fuck up moments. So I dare mm -hmm. show what you there. Um, what are your regrets if you have any? Oh, that's, man, there's many regrets. Um, some of them are petty, some of them selfish, some of them I was like, you know, I should have just went for that opportunity when I had the time, pretty much. But I smoke a lot, so I, I forget a lot of things. <laughs> so, you give us your largest, your, your largest regret, like. Out of all of the ones that you have in your life, like the one that's like, oh, damn, that's the one that I really wish. I would say. It was probably. I have paid rest. And if you don't have any, that is okay, too. Yeah, I don't really have. Because the biggest, I think another one of the biggest um, lessons that I had to learn is that what's in the past is in the past, man. So if you ain't do it then, I don't need to cry about it. That's real. And I've cried about it a couple of times. So <laughs> That's real. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of times. Yo. Matter of fact, face. Face, I know you remember because one time, the day after that, uh, Karis one gave it that mic or whatever, we had went out and he saw the rapper's face <laughs> that he was talking about. He saw that salt. I remember. Oh, what, uh, I was like, yo, face, look at him when he look at me. And he saw that <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw that shit. But yeah, as far as regrets, it's more like I wish I would have just stick to something and then stayed with it and finished it sooner. That's real. That's majority. Of, if it was any type of regrets, so like I should just stick with this, went with it, and went out, or just find something that I know that I am, um, I would have more of a proficiency to instead mm -hmm. of trying to be a computer fucking scientist or whatever. <laughs> or something like that and failing a couple of times in, in college and just went with it just uh my regret is going is not going with my gut a lot more and having more doubts on myself and that prevented me doing a lot of decisions that would have probably helped me a little bit more that's yeah. real i can definitely respect you and i definitely feel you on the college struggle so you, you know how long it took me to get right with that so i definitely understand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um as an adult, what is your dream currently? My dream currently 
is to finish this book, which I need to upload some pages to my colorist tonight so we can go ahead and finish this book. Finish this book and establish that as um, part of my publishing company, um, my, you know, media company, so I can have more mediums and outlets outside of what my godlike book and everything like that. So, like my main, my main dream is to have my own Marvel, pretty much. Okay. So yeah. Like my own comic book conglomerate type thing. My own Marvel, my own in-house entertainment situation where. Like right now, I'm looking at it as a comic book, but I want it. It always start off with a small dream, so I just wanted to yeah. have it to the point that it have the potential that all right, this might blow up into the next Disney di with the Disney Plus app. You know what I'm saying? So okay, because I have a lot of I have a lot of ideas, a lot of stories in my head. I got friends that my friend twin makes horror short stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. And I, I want to make an outlet for the arts in this area and for black, the black community too, or whatever. Because, like, um, with me, a lot of the stuff with the arts, we, like, we're in that age where, like, in that age range where everybody used to play outside and we're the borderline between the people that played outside and the people that learn how to build computers from scratch. Uh, like, so at the time of like, all right, I was learning art at a time where art was slowly transitioning into the digital phase mm -hmm. or whatever. So <clears throat> I'm a, um, how to say, I have, I have to learn a little bit more now to keep up pretty right. much. And I'm in the midst of doing that now. And I, I had to learn a lot of this stuff on my own because it's not like it's a, a comic book class. It might mm -hmm. be one now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But back then, it's not like it's a comic book class or um, like it wasn't like how it was how it is now where I can just simply go to the computer and just find out what is the process of how they make a computer. I mean, how to make a, a shoot, even a computer or a right. comic book. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I had to find little videos at Blockbuster <laughs> with, with um, little documentaries about the comic book or whatever, try to figure it out. And then I'm learning the old fashioned way where I really should just be learning graphic design a whole lot more and just do the shit off the computer pretty gotcha. much gotcha. so yeah i'm in the process of doing that and yeah that's that's pretty much my life accomplishments or whatever i may get back in the rap one day when i feel like it but yeah <laughs> uh so okay so that's your current dream <laughs> if your life were to end today how would you sum up your life's accomplishments? Incomplete. Um, God. <laughs> that nigga said incomplete. Uh, God, I we you mad about that thing. <laughs> yeah, I would be mad. <laughs> I would be at the pearly gates mad as hell. Like, I mean, that's some real shit. Like, hey man, real. Some time here, man. What you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh look, look, I'm gonna be at a bit. This we we being blunt and honest right now. Look, <laughs> I ain't married. I don't got no kids, so it's not like I got a legacy going or whatever. You know what I'm saying? My book is not fully out there yet, and I don't got the company running like I want to. What not? So, yeah, incomplete, man. <laughs> um, that's a gyp. <laughs> shit, I, 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 I thank God every day for the blessing of life, but shit, I ain't even asked to be here, man. You put me on the existence where I was enslaved for 400 years, and then say, all right, nigga. Make it. <laughs> Here's a book. It was written two. It was written two thousand years ago. And I'm like shit about graphic design. Like, yeah, here oh, you God. go. No COVID. No COVID. <laughs> oh, but that nigga said, "All right, nigga." God can't say, "All right, nigga." <laughs> God, all right, nigga. Here's a book. Fuck out of here. Here's a book. Listen to the guy in the fancy building That's with um, my symbol up there. Um, my book don't got shit about graphic design, but you're gonna have to learn that shit. And uh, yeah, credit. 
We ain't oh, had credit shit. in 2,000 years ago, but you got to learn that shit now. What up? So, right, nigga. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Incomplete, man. You might want to hit the That's reset real. button on this. You know what I'm saying? You might like want to just go. Team, yeah. Like, blow on the cartridge. It, it really doesn't do anything for your video oh, games, I learned. But, hey, yeah, it makes you feel a, better. That was a classic Pat answer there, man. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, this is the realest shit. If you know, that, if you know Pat personally, that was just so... Such a pat moment right there. Incomplete. <laughs> out of here. All right, nigga. Oh man, <laughs> I need that on a shirt. All right, nigga. All right, nigga. I was just trying to be real about the shit, man. Nah, oh, man. man. Oh, so my last question, and then you off the hot seat, champ. Where do you see yourself in the next ten years? Slash, how will you get there? Oh man, that's a big question. I am going to be the owner of my publishing company. Okay. And we will have plenty of products and books out there to display for you. We we'll have the merch. You can have a shirt with that up there. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're slowly on the way. Um, video games, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That I, I feel like. And I know for a fact I at least have my books out pretty much okay. five to ten years because my, my first book is going to be done or whatever. And just have that and this partner's empire pretty much. I feel like at the rate we're going, yeah, that's a whole nother outlet. That's a whole nother, um, that's a whole nother company right there to, to build on and stuff like that. Maybe I have a family. Maybe I have a queen. Lord willing. All right. You 223 subscribers out there. The pod squad. <laughs> Hashtag in the next 10 years. Get Pat a wife. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I probably should get one by now. I'll be old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get it's Pat a wife. I don't want one. Hashtag get Pat a wife. <laughs> it's not that I don't want one. It's just crazy out in these streets. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we definitely went there. It's a damn jungle out here. For Made real. me wonder how to keep from going under. Sometimes I go under, man. Ha, but ha, 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 ha. You got to get a rubber if you go under. Random. Melly male teeth are horrible. <laughs> has nothing to do with anything. But You see that interview? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> People. Dental yeah, health is what? real. I know they say <laughs> mental health is real, but dental health is, is essential. God damn, Melly Mel. Uh, about to go rot and the whole bottom row about to go. <laughs> uh, no, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> but yeah, that's those are all the questions I have for you. Pat, you off the hot seat. And hopefully, Pod Squad, hopefully y'all have gotten to know Pat a little better. Um, stay yeah. tuned. Because the part of this series will be coming very, very, very soon. Well, Ace will be the next one that we get to know as we get to know the partners. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got for that one, man. Um, and I think, Pat, learned, I learned a little bit more about you myself today, man. So that was, that was cool. That was real dope. Thanks. Thanks, I, I like you, man. I'm glad, you add, I'm glad you added this little... This little thing, this little segment into the pod, man. That was a good idea, Faith. Thank you, Faith, for not asking me no crazy yeah, ass questions, too, because I, I had this feeling like, Pat, remember that one time? Well, you know, you you going to be interviewing Faith next week. Because mm. if you look at the rotation, how it's going, yeah. like, you mm. up, Pat. Get your questions oh, ready. I feel like I'm part oh, of the man. audience. I just learned and that folks, with y'all. If you've heard <laughs> Faith so far tonight on this show, we can only imagine what's gonna come up in his interview. Lord Jesus, don't let him be on one. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be on one. <laughs> 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 Two, three, four. Oh, bruh. This is gonna be shit. Matter of fact, what I'm talking about. Shit. <laughs> that what I'm talking. Oh, man, law, man, law. Faces, man, laws, laws, laws. We need some man laws, man. Okay, that's yeah. it. We need some man laws in this world. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you five. You feel me? And they on a variating, uh, variating scale. 
of man law, but they all apply to men, young mm-hmm. and old. Um, some of these I see people not doing, and it just irritates the fuck out of me. So, some of these I've seen recent on my trips out in public. So I wanted to mention them. Okay, as I mentioned in my earlier content video about the gas. If you're late, if you with your lady and gas is needing to be pumped, get your ass out the damn car and pump the gas. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Open the door, get out, pump the gas. Most people ain't even going into the store right now because they still want to do non-contact. So you paying at the pump. Get your ass out. You better. I you see better. too many men sitting in the car. Yeah. I see too many men sitting in the car out. sipping coffee with their wife outside pumping gas, and it's cold as shit, or be raining, and the woman out there like, but you sit in the car. Yeah, and meanwhile, somebody is making Instagram pictures of her and posting it up on IG with her pumping the gas. Now, I will let her pump if, if I'm the one going into the store, they like get whatever we need, or if I'm going in something like that. There's something different. Y'all work as a team. We, like, we mm-hmm. like on a road trip or something, but yeah, if we just stop just for gas, I wish I might sit my ass in the car. My son, my son would look at me crazy. Now, number two, if two men are in a room and there's only one couch in that room, you better sit your ass on opposite ends of that couch. Oh my God, I wish you would sit there and sit thigh to thigh with a nigga. You better not. My knee don't need to touch your damn knee. That's too close to just like that barber shit from the, uh, the live show. Hell uh-huh. no. Hell no. Get your you know, side, your, 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 all of that away from me. Sit. Oh, you better not get, catch that middle cushion. That, too that, damn close, brother. That too close rule goes along with when you're in the public bathroom by the urinals. And damn right. if, you, if, if I'm parked somewhere and you got all the spaces in the world, <laughs> don't park beside oh, my shit. shit. <laughs> don't park beside Eat my shit. What the fuck is wrong with shit. you? He is mad, man, about that shit. I, mad about I purposely that. park away from people because I, I, I may like, I may want to roll up before I drive. It helps me, you know, anxiety and shit. I don't need you looking at me rolling up while you parking beside me. All the fucking space in the world, you want to park beside me. You triggered him with that one. That, he that mad, ain't man, just man, man, man law. That's man. every law, dog. And then they be trying to like, oh, no, nah, like I'm in the public bathroom and I'm taking a piss. Nigga, it's a whole. Oh, sh- nigga. I was in the hotel room. I was like, "What the hell is Pat doing?" Mm-hmm. This nigga was out in the middle of the parking lot, mad as a bitch. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Look at all these spaces. <laughs> all these motherfucking spaces out here, dog. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Oh, <laughs> the parking Don't lot. park near Pat. The parking lot is the car couch. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> mm-hmm. Yo, it's like two spaces around everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm done. My third man, law. Put your damn pants up. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't want to see I'm your dirty drawers. I don't know when this became a style, or if it is a style. But too many people do it for it just to be a random shit. Pull your damn pants up. Don't nobody want to see that shit. Be a man. Ooh, can I add Pull to that? Pull your pants up. Get, get a belt. Something. But stop buying girls jeans, young men. Yeah, that's that half too. the problem. If you buying that's a pair too. of jeans, yeah. that's a size yeah. four in women's, and nigga, you wear yeah. a size 34 or 32, then that's the problem yeah. right and them shits ain't gonna pull up past your thighs, so you can't mm-hmm. pull them up. That's some mm-hmm. man pants. The oh, fuck? Don't you nuts? Your nuts chafe, mm-hmm. don't they? They got mm-hmm. they got tapered man jeans and shit. <laughs> they ain't gotta wear no damn woman mm-hmm. pants. My like, nuts be chafing. This, this pants the too clothes of the bottom <laughs> section is going too far. Like women no. don't even got enough crotch room for a man. That's some fucking man mm-hmm. pants. Please, oh, you're, don't stop killing your nuts, people. Like. 
Mm. Seriously. Grown ass man with a yeast infection because you want a Western yeah, little yeah. man. Um, <sighs> pads on the ground. Pads on the ground. Looking like a tool with your pads on the ground. <laughs> Fourth one of this week. Man, stop trying to look better than your lady. Stop spending so much time in the mirror <laughs> prepping, <laughs> look so good when you go out. Like it's one thing to compliment your lady and, and y'all, y'all make each other look good. It's one thing to make each other look good, but it's another when you go out trying to purposely get more attention than your woman. What the fuck is wrong with you, dog? She's she supposed to be, be the, the shot. Right. You feel me? She's supposed to be the spotlight. You supposed nigga, to compliment she the beauty, that. you the muscle. Like, fuck like, out of what? Get the fuck out of the mirror. Go do some other shit. Derek Jackson ass nigga. Super You're ugly, and, and in my eyes, no, I'm in ugly. Super <laughs> mirror. Come on, baby, I need a mirror now. Boo, I got to do my eyebrows right. Come on, I'm about to hold up. Eyebrow, nigga, you doing your eyebrows. Get the fuck out of here. Get Let them shits, bro. Anthony Davis got a you to brow. That's a, that's a real bad. Like, we don't, we don't be out here ripping <laughs> your fucking eyebrows as a man. Nigga, we supposed to be fucking hairy. We men. You cutting your eyebrows trying to wild what's out. What's wrong with you? Exactly. I, yeah, I ain't mad at the three cuts. School. Hey, I was gonna I was, say, I, I ain't mad at the three cuts. I do. The I did this in the high school. But the but the plucking and the I gotta have an arched eyebrow, nigga. Fuck if your eyebrows are. This supposed to be like two caterpillars. Fuck it. I don't even need Let to that be shit in your grow face. High, high grow. Like a, a, another man is not gonna even be in your face that long enough to even notice that you did nigga. some kind of shit. No kind of botox, whatever. And a woman you gonna think you trying to be her boo, her her her. her her friend, her buddy. <laughs> Should no woman come up to you talking about yes, yeah, bitch? <laughs> no, nigga. <laughs> All right, nigga. Fuck out of here. All right, nigga. The fuck you call me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should never be thrown your way if you are a real man. Hell yeah. Oh, you you got my pronouns all the fuck up. Yeah, don't no 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 yes. Don't yo yeah. You should not be catching no yes. Uh-huh. I'm progressive. I ain't that progressive. That's a whole nother insurance company. And I ain't for all that. <laughs> By the way, Pat, Pat got a mad bag. <laughs> Go yeah. back in our house for that one. Actually, it's the shit. It's the shit holstering up my um, phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a single lady. Oh, I'm a single lady. <laughs> Hey, I keep my drawing pencils in there, pencil sharpener. Oh, Sometimes I have condoms. Um, <laughs> I have my trees in there. Sometimes I put my grinder and my charger, both my chargers. Hey, it works. Oh, God, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, God. I'm about to be the real life dead emoji. Oh, my God. I think my flow yeah. is in there, too, when my shit get all clogged up and my sinuses. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes I got yeah. meds and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Y'all still learn about, about Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> All right, nigga. <laughs> oh, God. Now, my last man, a lot of week. <laughs> now, on a different note, the last man, a lot of week. Men, it's okay to show emotion, man. Oh, I am too, right now. You're going to fuck around and hold everything inside and have a heart attack or a stroke. Hold the fuck up. Damn right. You better let that shit go. <laughs> You Ooh, better let that shit go better vent in a man. in a non physical way, and let somebody know what's going on, man. Like mental health, physical health, that all most, that shit plays into with each other, man. When your mind some real nigga shit, body, a crack it, like, it. goddamn it, mm-hmm. get that like, shit out. Like, nigga. Like, <laughs> these are, this ain't back in the early days. Real man, don't do this. Oh, fuck, you better let that shit go. Niggas were dying in their fifties back then when they were saying that shit on some humbugs. I mean, early in the day, we can't keep dying before the women, guys. I ain't ain't about to keep that. I ain't about to die with no heart attack shit. I I ain't about to argue, but no, no, I ain't with. uh, Nah, I'm gonna leave. Let that shit out. 
Let that shit out the front and back because you hold <laughs> shit in and have a heart attack and you're trying to express that thing on your deathbed too late then, nigga. Mm-hmm. Too late. That's real as shit. <laughs> that is big fat. Sign your therapy. <laughs> right on. Yes, man. Find, I mean, that's a man laws. find your therapy, now. man. Find your therapy. I like I draw sometimes if I get pissed off, I write rhymes. It helps. Do find your therapy. Big and facts. then go do real therapy. Pretty yeah. much. Yes, that part. Yeah, that I gotta part. get my shit together with that. <laughs> that part. Now, my topic for this week. I'm gonna take it on some old other shit. You feel me? Because okay. I feel like after elections, motherfuckers always stop moving. And mm-hmm. just like I thought, you feel me? Okay, Trump's out of office, Biden's in office. Where's the pressure on Biden? Where's all this political ride? And with, with, with the same shit still going on? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Because he ain't doing not a damn thing. Really, like, mm-hmm. ain't, ain't shit changed. But where's, I was where's just the thinking about this shit today. Where's, where's, where's all this shit that was going on when Trump was in the office <laughs> that he's gone? It's been a few months. Shit yeah. ain't changed. Yeah. For real. And people, people still getting killed and shit. Mm-hmm. I mean that. Motherfuckers don't care? I oh, mean or was it all it's just, a shooting or was it all just publicized and heightened and me, it was all this media <laughs> coverage because it was election time. Yeah. So I don't know if it's election time or that, but my thing is as a culture and as a people, can we achieve our cultural goals or our goals without outside assistance? Yes, but, and it's a big but, like one of these fake inflated asses out here. It's a big but. Um, We can, but it's going to take us first getting away from stabbing ourselves in our foot. And by that, I mean, like, we got to start first before we can build. We got to first, like, maintain. We don't take care of the little shit we do get. We'll move out into the suburbs, supposedly moving up, and then turn that shit into the fucking hood. We'll live in the hood, and the hood really don't be that bad. It's just that nobody's fucking picking up trash like we talked about one time. Nobody's actually taking mm-hmm. care of the home they're living in. Like, just because your apartment is Section 8, I done seen some Section 8 apartments that look beautiful. Because the people there maintain it. They keep it clean. They keep the maintenance up on it. They don't just let yeah. shit sit around. They don't treat it like it's some shit. Like, they, they learn how to take that shit, turn it into sugar, and now, like, it builds the habit. So when they do move up, they take care of their home home. You know what I mean? And I think that's where, like, we can, but, like, to, like, really get to the point where we can make ourselves feel comfortable coming back and investing. Because what people don't like to say or don't like to talk about a lot. They always say black people move out of the hood and then don't go back. It's, but when I go back and I invest into the hood, they tear up my money. Because they don't keep up this shit. I'll put a business there, they'll rob the business. I'll put, a, I'll, I'll put some, home, some new homes there, rebuild a whole block, and they'll tear them right back up instead of keeping that so that the community gets property value. Now you're generating your own tax income because the board, the higher the property value that, the higher the taxes are in that area, which means the more income generated for your area, so your schools will get better. Now you're gonna have find it easier to get a black bank established in that area because the property value is worth them actually taking their, their business there. Like, we gotta stop fucking our own shit up. But if we do that, fuck yeah, we can do all that shit on our own. <laughs> Hell yeah. I damn sure believe so. What say you, Pat? I think I think it's possible it is the same aspects and factors that you said or whatever, but we also got to look at who we, <clears throat> I feel like sometimes black people have a Messiah complex. Like we're waiting for the next person, the next Martin Luther King, the next black Jesus, the next Malcolm X. And then we get so into finding that person, whatever seems like they are on the same soundtrack or, or whatever, or the closest thing to it, they'll they'll grab to it and it's been so long since we had the black messiah or whatever that we'll pick anybody case in point like a umar or whatever random youtube person and then just go along with it and then we just go along with a scheme or whatever and we get so invested into that scheme or invested into that movement 
or invested in whatever um, whatever trend is going along or whatever that we spent too much time on something that was unnecessary and not focusing on the necessary or okay. whatever. And, and I think that's one part of it. And it was um, <clears throat> it was something else uh, I was thinking. And it just as I was talking away, I, if I bring it up, I, if it pops in my head, I'll bring it back up. But I, I think it's that it's just our time <clears throat> is invested <laughs> in the wrong thing things we we focus on people with charisma more than and then get jim jones then oh focus my god on, <clears throat> on like what reality is you know what i'm saying that's real that's real mm -hmm. face will say you man personally i, I do think we can do it without outside assistance i think it just takes strength um, in unity, because I mean, with all things, if you won't change on a, on a all even scale, it's going to take true unity. But with that being said, is our community too fragmented to seek change together and, and actually achieve that? Okay. Uh, I mean, because you, you have within the black community, you have colorism. Mm -hmm. um, which which stands in a way which shouldn't because who really gives a fuck what shade you are? <laughs> That's real. You're black, you're black. You're black. <laughs> That's like, okay, I'm not going shopping for a uh, color jeans or a shirt, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck shade you are. <laughs> you black, you black, they like, <laughs> when they shoot, when they shoot motherfucking African Americans, they like, okay, you're a light skin when I'm not going to shoot you, but you're a medium nope. skin when I'm. Y'all, all y'all gonna get it. Yeah, so I right, nigga. I right, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that because the, the ignorance inside colorism stops everybody from being together. Because you still, you really have some true hardcore colorists who don't, who will not do anything collectively with the other shade. <laughs> like there's, yeah. Wow. You feel me? So. We got to seek change, but once again, true change only comes with unity. You look at any other cultures, and they achieve their change because they bonded together for that significant change for their culture. You feel like? Yeah, everybody else got a community. We got so-called community, but when it comes down to it, it be every man for himself. I exactly. feel like I feel like we gotta ignore or we're gonna have to have a clean slate with a lot of this cultural shit that is cultural fuckery that America taught us. Because America taught us self-hate. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I feel like if we had less self-hate, had more self-love or whatever, we would look at things like our hoods and the places that we went at and have a little yeah, bit yeah. more pride and value into it mm -hmm. and, and, and then go forth from there. But we are so trained into thinking that everything Black, anything Black, uh, black touches is is stained or whatever yeah. yeah and i feel like slowly gradually we're evolving out of that and whatever it's um, been a self-fulfilling self-fulfilling prophecy though yep mm -hmm. for like we but like I, they trained us to believe that but then we go out and act in a way that destroys it so it then justifies that mm -hmm. in, you know programmed belief yeah mm -hmm. that's real yeah, All right, that's I, a that's that's one thing I had to fight with or whatever. Um, like people say, black people act like this or whatever. Yeah. And then when I look at it, I was like, that shit looks like fuckery. I don't want nothing to do with this, and I don't think all black people act like this. I think we just want us no, want y'all to leave me the fuck alone and let me live. You know what I'm saying? But, all right, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Right. So, on the on the same premises with community change, do you feel like with the education systems how they are now, with quality education that will help with the change needed with the newer generations coming up? Hell yeah! And for me, I said yeah. 
but it depends on what you mean by quality education. If you mean by regurgitating the same shit that's already in the, like the same curriculums, then hell no. But if you're talking quality. about like curriculum reform where like kids are not just being pumped into a college-based society, like where it's, it's literally kids are being taught to in a way that like fulfills their passion. So that way you keep them engaged and keep them hooked mm -hmm. the whole time through the education process. Like every kid don't want to be a doctor. Every kid don't want to be a lawyer. You might have this kid that's over here on some like, I want to be a graphic designer. Well, let's put him into some STEAM classes and start reinforcing that at an early age when we first catch that that's what he really loved as opposed to, him falling out of love with something that he might have a true talent for and then feeling like he got to go for something that's not really like fulfilling. computer science. Yeah. Right. But you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> I, hear I, my I, think, right I think, I think education <laughs> needs to be reformed, but I do think that like, cause you, if you look at what education really is, you're going to learn your socialization skills from your parents or from their immediate family and friends and, and the environment around you. But your, a lot of your self-identity is formed in school as a kid. How you look mm -hmm. at yourself, how you compare yourself to others. And if you have a, a, a school system nationwide where <clears throat> black people are able to get educated in a way that's culturally relevant to us and that actually pushes us to, toward our passions as opposed to some brass ring that's been set by somebody else, then hell yeah. Because now you got a, a whole generation of kids being taught to love themselves. So now they real, they, they when you know who you are, you do better. Like, you know what I'm saying? That know better, do better shit ain't just about like outside experience. It's more like when you know yourself better and you really become content in who you are, the earlier you do that, the better you do in life because you have a higher appreciation of yourself, which makes you appreciate the world around you more. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like that. Like you can't be confident mm -hmm. in other shit if you ain't self-confident. You can't have love for others unless you got self-love. So if if you're being cultivated and your passions and dreams are being like engaged, enhanced, and allowed to really thrive, you learn better mm -hmm. because you're gonna be more invested in what the fuck is going on. So you're gonna care more about math when you're seeing how it applies to your passion. You're gonna care mm -hmm. more about social studies when you see the great people and the, the ways that interact in society according to your passion. Like when everything is geared to that, that's why you have those schools that like do really well. A lot of them, their curriculum is based on like, all right, what do you like? Let's find you a course and the, and the advisors push you through a course that follows that path. So then you always engage because it's like, I want to learn about this. Like you will go down a YouTube rabbit hole on some shit that you want to learn about. Yeah. yeah, but if somebody put a documentary in front of you and it's about some shit you have no interest in whatsoever, you're gonna be like, man, that shit gonna take forever for a 30 minute documentary. It's gonna take three hours. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's a that's the mind of a kid in school because I know for me, like, like I said on the last show, like a lot of that hamster in a wheel feeling that school give you is what breaks kids down, they lose their dream. And sometimes that dream is what it takes to motivate you to care about your hood enough to get out of it and want to come back and do better for it. Like, but when you don't even have that, you settle into, okay, it's misery at home, it's misery here, that's my life. But school can be that outlet for a lot of kids that may be in abusive situations or maybe come from an environment where it looks bleak for them to see that actual light at the end of the tunnel in race for it. So I, I think it can, it, it has to play a role in it. Absolutely. Sorry for ranting. Good, good. You've had a lot of good points. Yeah. Good. I, I think for black people, mm -hmm. when they have the world history, you need to have mm -hmm. more black history other than we were slaves. Like Just real history. Because we like were real, in a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that is like, if you, all right, if you're in Asia, Come if on, you're man. in, J if you're in Japan, shut up, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you're in Japan or whatever, um, and you grew up Asian <laughs> and whatnot, you're gonna learn everything about your people because you're around exactly. nothing about your people. But when you're in a, a country, a society where you're your people are not the controlling 
like culture mm-hmm. or whatever, you're learning stuff about stuff from people that don't look like you. So you don't care because it's just a bunch of people that don't look like me. And if they ever looked at me, they probably wouldn't give a fuck about me. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. So like, I, I I could just I just sit there and imagine like what would school be like if I'm growing up and like one of my first lessons is Mansa Musa as a black kid. Mm-hmm. That's real. Mm-hmm. Because cool. that's the richest man in in history or whatever. He's a black man, but you don't learn nothing about that in public school. You know what I'm saying? And then some may argue, all right, what would that relate to um, modern, like, like modern aspects or how would that relate, how would that history relate to something that would help um, along the line with the curriculum? And I'm like, it's a Mm -hmm. lot of stuff in history. It's a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with me. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, that I have to to do with anything about me. Not even that I have to learn anyway or whatever. Like, I'm, I apologize for this offend people, but I'm pretty sure it, I mean, it is way harder for me to do this than other cultures, but I'm pretty sure if we actually track down my bloodline and everything, right? The shit I learned in public school is not going to be anywhere near that bloodline, pretty much. That's real. Like, so, like, as a kid growing up, you're like, why the fuck would I even care or whatever? They are dead anyway. And then if I was around there at that time, they wouldn't care about me. So that's that's that that, that part. <clears throat> yeah. So like they damn sure would. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's a lot of stuff. And then with that, there are a lot of implicit biases that that teachers have from time to time when it comes to black kids because i i had a even a whole, black teacher sometimes yep. <laughs> exactly even black it, it goes along with it it's like all right for example like teachers have that same type of implicit biases that like police officer have and they don't even have to be a white police officer it's a black police officer police officer like I, you're, talking, I, you're talking about I'm telling them, I'm telling them. <laughs> Repeat after me. <laughs> Catch up. All right. All right. So I had um uh, I had saw on uh, the Breakfast Club uh, where um little Romeo was talking about he got pulled over one time at a um uh, at a college or whatever. And he mm-hmm. and then they recognized he was little Romeo. He was like, all right, I just thought you was one of these. Random old Negroes out here just doing stuff. And the officer was black. How about right? So it's uh, it's yeah. it's the system of training. Thing, it's the system of training that has us thinking that way because you around the system and, and then they treat to think of us as a threat. Like if you look at the statistics, the black kids are more prone to get in trouble, to get an ISS and this, that, and that. And and a white kid could do the same exact thing. And they just get a tap on the back, whatever. Exactly. Somebody's gonna hear this. I'm like, man, y'all complaining. I was like, look, y'all Real. are the people that's telling me that this is what's going on because that's I went to yep. your colleges that you yep. made that yep. gave me this knowledge. No so, lies, yeah. no lies detected here. I'm sorry if I read it, but yeah, there you go. Hey, it's fine. Get it out, man. This this just gonna be the own one show, man. It's the all right, nigga show. Yeah, right. All right, yeah, nigga. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 is is the change in our communities a black thing, or is it a wealth displacement thing? I, wealth displacement for, for us, it's a black thing. For the greater country. The main major issues in communities in general in the country is the way wealth is distributed, the way we, the way our economic system is based on capitalism. Like that is the one of the root sources. Like capitalism led to slavery. Capitalism led to colonialism. Capitalism led to the way that a lot of the classism issues that we have in our country. But the way, the systematic way blacks 
have been fucked over in this country, it goes past money. It's mm-hmm. like, like you see what I'm saying? Like for a lot of for a lot of the decisions they made, it had nothing to do with money as far as why they don't like us. Their initial premise was we were inferior to them. So when you start from that lens, it, it goes deeper than the money. Like they could give, like we could have wealth distribution all day long and everybody could be balling. Like they could have reparations, whatever it would take to get black people to be <clears> the, <throat> on par with or the top elite or whatever, right? And them elite motherfuckers would still get called nigga by Papa John. Like it, it's a, it's past, I don't like you or I see you as less than because of your money. It's more like, because you are black, I don't like you. And that's where that root, like that, that mm-hmm. racist root, that is what is so difficult in this country. Cause they can, they can fix the wealth gap if they wanted to. And then you would have a whole bunch of people with money that would still be getting treated fucked up. And we would be the main ones getting treated fucked up. Not because they we're poor, not because our neighborhoods are messed up anymore, but because you don't like us because we're black. That's that, you know what I'm saying? And you can't, until we start eradicating that piece, it's always gonna be a, a black thing for us specifically, in my opinion. I'm, I'm to re, uh, reiterate what Tiz said or whatever. I, it's right that to us. <laughs> your face, your face. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but yeah, it, I'll go wait till y'all get the laps out. <laughs> All right, nigga. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, it, to us is black, but the wealth displacement is what the media use and what they say is the tool that they use to keep us in that situation where like I like it is exactly what you said Tiz. it is definitely exactly at the core root of it the, the you know grassroots problem of it is what you said but the way they hide it is through waste displacement oh I say waste wealth displacement and <laughs> and just the systematic way to do it, man. I, yeah, my tongue is. You making some good there. ass points, and you talking over there, bro. But that shit. Yeah, that shit was woo! funny as fuck. That I fucked it the, up that the, way. The white, hey, the, the supremacists don't even want you to get it out, boy. They're like, no. Nope. Yeah, I know, man. Grab his teeth. He'll never get this word out. They'll never hear this shit. Give him sinus problems. They'll fuck right, him nigga. up. <laughs> 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 but all right, so let me explain. wealth displacement is the system they use so they can keep <laughs> hating us as black people. Pretty That's much. Real. That's real. You should have went for the synonym. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Do we need a black leader or have those times come and gone? Hmm. I think we need to lead our own goddamn selves and stop waiting for yeah. the black messiah. I don't, want, really I don't do. want to say a black leader. A black coalition would be nice where you could get like a spokesperson maybe from each mm-hmm. of the fragmented groups in the black community <laughs> so that everybody could be represented on big stuff. But the major like little stuff, like we don't need no leader to go out and like take care of your house, clean your house. Don't mm-hmm. leave trash on your sidewalk. Don't tear up your house so that the next person moving in moves into a roach infested place. Like you can live in the hood, the hoodest of hoods and not have roaches. It's possible. Like it, it's all about like how we maintain our stuff. So I think a leader will need for that. Plus they kill all of our leaders. We get a leader. That was, I was going to say that. So that I don't want to see no more black people down for nothing. So I, I'm scared yeah. to prop anybody up as a leader. At this point. Every one really of know. them, they take out or I, they, I, or I, they lock up. Like they, they get all black leaders, so to save all of our black people that we got left. Or not they necessarily place, a leader. Or they pick a black leader for us and place them in these these um organizations that's supposed to be for our betterment. And that's the like day that. too. We gotta get some discernment and stop giving mm. our trust to people who just come just trying to come lately. Like we gotta mm. we gotta vet the people that we allow to speak to us and <laughs> give us advice and 
represent us. We got to vet them a little more because that's the problem now. That's how you get a Umar. That's how you get a Jay Morrison slipping in there. That's how you get these yeah. black politicians that claim that they got our back and don't. That's how you get all these people because they prop somebody up and we just go with it because he black. Yay, he black. Mm-hmm. Just because you black don't mean you're competent. Just because you black mm-hmm. don't mean that you got your morals. It just means that you got the same skin color as me. We need to start picking people that's actually invested in the betterment of our people and rally our support behind them, but not too much because if they become a black leader, they're going to kill them. And, and the, the definition of insanity right. is, is doing the same thing over and over again and thinking it's going to be a change. We done did the black leader thing ultimately. Yep. And what happens? The movement's going on. It goes strong. They kill the head and then the movement just dissipates. So instead of having a black leader, we should just have a coalition, like you said, that, you know, put people in place for um, programs and 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 things like that so we can move a lot forward. You know, we need yep. to have a little bit more of a village menta- mentality. Yep. That's it. Whatever. Because like the 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 hood I grew up in or whatever, the neighborhood that I grew up in, it was still street. It was Portland, you know, it was still street. It was still hood mm-hmm. niggas in there or whatever, but it looked clean. It was a and nice people place. People took care of their houses. They, they exactly. care about where they live. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then somebody was acting up, we kicked them out. And yeah, you got to go to Bonneville, man. That's where all the hood motherfuckers go. Let me stop before some Bonneville person pop up like, hey, man, y'all know they were hood. <laughs> 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 Oh man. Mm-mm. Now, on my black community stuff, the last thing I'm trying to talk about on that topic before we go on to my favorite topic, or my favorite segment, I should say. Mm-hmm. What would make black people stop taking bullshit and get significant change? Like other communities. You feel me? Like, um, if, when I say that, you got to look at the other movements or other perpetual movements that's been going on during the black or civil rights movement. People say the other movements have hindered us or hurt us, but I don't see that. I just see the other movements getting their goals or getting things accomplished in, in a quicker fashion or in a quicker manner or in a different manner and actually making change in their communities and the black community not. Yeah. So, for example, the the alphabet group. Because mm-hmm. I don't know all of that, so I'll just say the alphabet group. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, black people have been trying to champion, let's get rid of the word nigger. We get rid of the alphabet group been together how many years? And, that, and now we have to say the F word. We can't say that word. Mm, that's real. You feel me? How long did it take black people to get them to say the N word? <laughs> I have How long did it take? You 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 want to go ahead, Pat? I see you chopping at the bit. Go ahead, champ. I see this. This is the problem. The problem is that all these other um, communities or whatever that's getting the job done or getting their rights or whatever, they not black. This I put it this way, uh, the L, the the ABC people or whatever, they're getting stuff done because <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them, are also in the in the culture that is oppressing us. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a lot of them is half of that, so they can get stuff done. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's um, the Asian community; they have. They've been building that community forever. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's one of those things where they already were disciplined or whatever, and no one they've held it down, so no one has really infiltrated, um, infiltrated. infiltrated their culture and changed things. <laughs> <clears throat> Y'all just gonna keep fucking with me all night. I'm all right. sorry, you gotta use to hear more moments. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Look, it's just <laughs> funny because it's like I'm slowing, <laughs> this slowing is down, like dog. The worst night for it, though. Like usually you have like one for a show, but this is like you, nah, man. Like your brain is just 
speeding right now. But your, but your, your, your whole mouth it's the Red Bull. is not it's catching Red up Bull. at all. It's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. hey, guys, wait up. Yeah, I have a <laughs> <I have laughs> point. No, you speaking over there, though. Like, that's a real shit. They are, they are not black. That's I'm not black. I mean, they it's part of them that's in um the in the culture that controls most of the wealth and um, most of the media and everything else. Um, the Asians they have built their own culture up, so they have their own economy within it. They have their own countries or whatever. Like even outside of like just Black Americans or whatever in Africa alone, Africa is still getting nitpicked by other other ruling countries. That's been going on like England and France or whatever. I'm still to this day, like every year, hearing like a black country that has just gotten their independence. You well, know what I'm saying? So you gotta look at it like this though. It's because we're black, but it, to me, it's because we're black before a different reason. Mm-hmm. Like not because we're black and the people don't want to give black people nothing. To me, when I look at all these movements, they are all even if they got their petty squabbles in-house when it mm-hmm. comes to policy, when True. it comes to major social I- initiatives, they will talk shit about each other while standing together and marching and, stand- and standing on that shit until some change. That is true. Black mm-hmm. people will stand <laughs> with each other for as long as it feels good. And then as soon as it gets rough, we start pointing the fingers at each other. And then we mm-hmm. never build up. We Like, we'll start the momentum then we'll fall off. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll hashtag Black Lives Matter when somebody die and then not follow up on the case, not protest outside of the courtrooms, not stand, not fight in that, not go to that city to Mm -hmm. fight for political changes and actual policy changes. Because like, these other people, the reason they're getting the powers that they're getting and the rights they're getting is because they're fighting for policies to be enacted. Like the Asian movement said, fuck that. Stop Asian hate. You're going to change some laws for us real quick. You're going to make it so that we can be more protected. And that's what you're seeing around the country now. We won't do that. As soon as it's time to fight for policy, which is the hard part, we fall apart and we fall off the bandwagon and we stop dancing in the streets and go back home. So like, wait for Joe Biden. It's really, it's really they, they are more willing to put their petty shit to the side for a minute and just stand together on an issue until it gets fixed. And then they go back to calling each other, whatever they call each other and arguing, however they argue. But for that moment, for that Mm -hmm. collective goal, they're like, yeah, I don't like you because of this and you don't like me because of this. But if we get this, both of us get straight. So let's fight for this. And that's how they look at it. Whereas we look at it like, okay, as long as I'm getting some out of the cool, but I don't really want to do all of the work because it's going to get hard. And then I'm going to have... and he ain't he over there. I don't like him because he light skinned, so you know they won't go jump, ride with us anyway. And he dark skin, mm-hmm. so he think he this. And he 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 gay, so he think he this. Like we can't stick together enough to just say he got money, that. so he he he. Ain't They're the fucking us all over. Let's all just get together, get the fuck fucking over part stop, and then we can go and figure out our petty differences. But that's the biggest thing I see. Like we don't. When, when Face was talking about the fat fragmented part, like that's the key to why those movements work and ours don't. They stay defragmented long enough to actually accomplish the goal. That's whereas true. we lose momentum when it get hard and just break apart again. I just want to make this quick point because our culture, we have a recycle mentality. Um, mm. we, we try to take things that are thrown at us and make them better and use them. Like my main example is that word nigga. We we say we took we took the ER and put an A on it. It means something different now. That's real. What other culture do you know that they call themselves by the degrading term that the other call another culture will call them? I don't know one. I don't know something real bad for all them lie nigga jokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's real <laughs> though, but that's some real yeah. ass talk though. Like it's, like it's so ingrained in us. Yeah, that's yeah. It's so yeah. ingrained. That mentality is so ingrained in us. Mm-hmm. No that's other true. culture does that. 
No, the culture does. Yeah, I may be just on some. I may be just on some smoking shit or some smoker shit, but that's some real shit. I don't know no other culture that calls themselves by the derogatory tone. I don't know no Asian that calls. Hey, Chink, what's up, my Chink? Yeah. Nah. Nah. Mm-hmm. We you ain't gonna help Bina. Oh, what's up, Bina? What's up, wet back? Come on, you my wet back. You're not gonna hit that. You're not gonna. You, you, you're not gonna hit two two Africans. Oh, you African booty scratcher. You my friend. You're not gonna hear that. You know who the only ones close <laughs> to us is? The women's who? Because they'll call each other bitch in a minute. Each other bitches in a hobby. Exactly. Yeah. But you, but you been that coming? You, you and have technically, to we're the fir- we're the two groups that are the furthest back too. So it all play yeah. right into what you said. But, but you gotta look. Who is in the heart of the women's movement? The black women. So the recycle mentality still runs deep. So it's still, it's still that's true, man. Mentality. Look at soul food recycle and chitlins. We have to break <laughs> the chain. We got to break the chains of our mental status, man. We have to break the chain because we're still enslaved. Mentally, we're still enslaved because the the ideal they are enslaved in our ancestors and they whipped into our ancestors have been fed to us, and, and subconsciously, you know, we still do that shit. So as we beating up white people for calling us nigga because we think it's cool to call each other nigga. They like, well, I mean, you can say it. It's just a word, right? Right. Like, because they can't understand. Like, like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, you guys call yourself that, but if we didn't call ourselves that, they wouldn't say that shit at all. Because I see what you. I'm picking up what you're you. Saying. You they don't, don't have a degrading term. term. We reinforce. You feel me? You're not gonna go in no Asian community and call no. Hey, what's up, my chink? They gonna fuck you up. <laughs> they gonna fuck you up with swords. They gonna fuck you up. Yeah. They gonna fuck you up. Yeah. But and guns. These other people can come into our culture. Like, what's up, my nigga? Yeah, that's my nigga. My nigga. My nigga. My nigga. My nigga. Man, that's real. I'm one of the mad people that say, "Man, give her the N word, man." That that, that movement's whack. But at the end of the day, I gotta look at some high level shit. As attained to be a better man and a father and a husband, you see, like the examples we set forth is our kids gonna follow too. Yeah. So at some point, systemic change got to start within our culture. We want systemic change to help us and the outer system, but we got to change ourselves first, man. We got to see that 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 bigger picture. We got to see I, right, but we do to ourselves mentally. We attribute to that shit that they do to us too, because oh, hell yeah, yeah. if we, we don't do it to ourselves. If we don't do it to ourselves, we will never allow someone else to do it to us. Mm. So that's why it's so easy for them to do it. They can beat our ass. They can beat us down because we do it to ourselves. I mean, oh well, why can't we do it? They're doing it. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to add that in because I am a one one. So as far as building this community shit, I mean, like we need to come together, man, and. Like on a on a total man, like whoever's hearing my voice, y'all watching this, let somebody else know, man. Like unity is the key, man. Like whatever bullshit personally you got, get that bullshit personal shit out the way, but don't let it stop the agenda of, of being so village. Big or put the shit down. You feel me? Like everybody got, got personal issues. Together. Somebody put that personal shit to the side, put that humbug shit to the side. Let's get this bigger picture shit done, and let's get some real systemic change started within ourselves, so we can get those who need to do the bigger changes. We can make them make it because they can see. I right, damn, they they bought their business now. Like they really want some change. They because they willing to change themselves. How can That's you expect somebody else to change? How can somebody else change something that you need to change if you can't change from a thing? It's no change. No change. They giving you a few dollars now. You making a few other dollars. They thinking, oh, it's even now. It's equal. No, it's just still not equal. Right. Yeah. Sure. Once again. Shaq got money. Oprah got money. But Oprah, the people that are giving Oprah that money, got more money than Oprah. Mm-hmm. That's real. It, it, That's it's scary. a difference in wealth. Church. It's a difference in wealth and rich and generational wealth. It's a lot of people outside of our culture who has generational wealth. They're on their fixed seventh, seventh and eighth generation. Yeah, and we're just now getting to our first, and we're just getting to our first and second generations. And our culture, we got to get there, man. Preach. But it starts from thing. Come on, y'all. Teamwork make a dream work. Got that. Amen. 
And it takes a village. But, so, but it's a yeah. that type of fuckery. Enough of that type of fuckery. Now we can go on to my favorite section. Come on, Pat, give it to him. The good in the fuckery. There we go, there we go, there we go. Beep, 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 beep. Man, all right, so we've been out for a minute, so it's been a lot of fuckery accumulating into the fuckery meter. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. the, the fuckery levels was... are at an all-time high. Oh, man, do you feel the fuckery in the air? Yeah. <laughs> feel like uh, Uncle Ruckus in that one? Oh, it's a lot of... It's a lot of... I don't want to say it because <laughs> things just did that. <laughs> but there's a lot of this going on. make you on. feel dirty saying it now, don't you? Yeah, man. I'm going to be feeling bad, too, because I'm going to slip up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start off with the good. And then we're going to gradually... Uh, anyway. All right, first good. Issa Rae signs a eight-figure... Eight figures. Eight figures. Oh, my God. Eight figures. Shout TV out deal. Shout out to the queen. With Warner Media. She said that she's been doing good work with them and that she made her felt comfortable in there and she continued to go along with it. So she if you haven't seen figures. it, watch the photograph. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. So we'll start off with some good black excellence, pretty much. All right, now for the funny shit. <laughs> uh, Boosie Badass, after he beat cancer, he is said to, to Mark Zuckerberg, hey, tell Zuck I got 200K so he can get his original IG back. Um... Why would he want that one back? Oh, know, he, followers again or something? He must got a lot yeah. of extra connection, a, a lot of probably yeah. a, probably people we wanted to talk to through there or whatever. I to tell you the truth, it's a lot of that going around. A lot of Most like of that two hundred k. Zuck ain't think about that little two hundred k. Not at all. He would say that. He might as well said, "I got two dollars." Yeah, for you, uh -huh. pretty much. <laughs> But I, I've been noticing there's a lot of that going around. A lot of people, IGs, are just, like, disabling and disappearing. It, it happened to a couple of people I know, too. So uh, as you say, they getting rid of all that, that, that pornography. Oh, man. That, <laughs> can't bust it wide open for real, brother. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no, ain't no more nubsy riding again on this one, buddy. It's Not over. that one, no. <laughs> All right, so motherfucker, Young Jock has been getting joked by social media for yep. having a fake beard. Take that lace front off. Young Jock Take um, the lace front off. has a history of fuckery. Constantly going on. It seems like every year he has from at least the perm one to thing. the dress to the Uber to the to the thing. Man, women had that blue permed out hairstyle, looking like yeah. some, looking like somebody auntie. <laughs> oh, boy, Jack boy, looking like Anita Baker if she had a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> he got that. He got that uh, middle aged Ooh, white yeah. lady that messed with black girls' haircut that once. The Tammy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Tammy. He got the Tammy. Uh, more oh. rapper news. Let's see. <laughs> Kevin Gates, a.k.a. Why did he have a perm? <laughs> Told it is Lambo, but he's safe. Um, okay. ra rapper NLE Chopper got arrested. NBA Youngboy facing charges. Please, yeah. you young rappers. Calm that hey man, <laughs> you gonna be a rapper? Get your like Ti said it once. Uh, who was it? No, it was Jeez. It was Jeezy. Or somebody, somebody was talking to Ti, and he was like, "Whatever you doing, you gonna have to start doing that. Mm -hmm. Can't be one foot in and one foot out and be a rapper. Like you gotta leave that shit alone and go ahead and just be a rapper, or you gonna have to stay out on the real nigga shit. But the real brother shit. I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> but. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, man, like you can't be out here trying to be, keep it real all the time. Sometimes you got to keep the money. Mm -hmm. and that's what's real. At the end of the day, you go, you go. Mm -hmm. the NBA young boy got like fifteen gone. babies, don't it? Yeah, and I already got the herps. So yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Go that way. Well, yeah. He I think one of them, one of them, admit that he had something or some shit. And, well, he you know, stay, he need to stay free as much as possible so he can pay all them child support bills and pay for his hurt medicine. Uh huh. That too. Allegedly, because I don't know. Allegedly, I think I hurt that from. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> um. So another alleged thing. Um. It seems Justin LeBoy had an altercation with the, either the Migos or Migos affiliates. Oh. Uh, if you're not familiar, Justin LeBoy is the one that had the uh, show that had Saweetie up there uh, with her ex. You Justin didn't ask Combs. us, but you can catch it on there. It's right up there. Yeah, it's right up there. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Um, she was talking about eating ass and all that weird shit. Having, yeah. male, having male threesomes. Yeah. So um, because of that, because he was pretty much the host of that, you're guilty by association, and it seems that he's gotten in an altercation with them. Um, but he uh, he seems to be all right. Um, he, what is it, Joe Button said he hit him up and was like, are you good? And he was like, you good? But that still doesn't tell anybody anything about right. if he's really good or not or whatnot. That's what you're going to say anyway. So, well, I hope that they get this <clears> together <throat> and I hope that they are all right. And Cravo need to focus on more important things so they don't got time to be fighting nobody right now. This ain't the time. Yeah, yeah, man. It's an album coming out that I heard. They're doing a culture three again, man. That's why I kind of feel like all of this might be a he said, she said rollout. So everybody will get to the culture three. We're like, all right, let's see what Quavo People said. actually want to see what Culture 3 going to be like because Culture 1 was fire, Culture 2 was eh. So people want to see That's what true. Culture 3 going to be hitting on. I think they, they can they can do without the nonsense and still get there. Yeah, of course. They can do that without. So leave the changed, fucker alone, Migos. They, they changed the, they, they, the shit's called the culture. They did change the culture, so pretty much. <clears throat> all right. The good. Nas, Illmatic, has entered the li- uh, Library of Congress. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations, That's Nas. That is the good. The fuckery. Respect, the, Nas. The other Nas. <laughs> Lil Nas X. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've been in social media for a while, so I know a troll when I see a troll, and I choose not to get tro- you know, trapped in troll traps. Lil Nas made uh, Lil Nas X made an, a video, provocative ass video. I didn't really look at it. I seen this. Uh, I heard I, he was, was he lap dance for Satan? Is that true? Yeah, that yeah, true? he was buzz wild. Oh, he really was doing man. that. I thought yeah, he I was, was doing that, man. Like a social media joke. What? He, he, he <laughs> was doing it. I don't know. He they say he was. It. They say he on the video lap dance for Satan or something. He all right. He. He put out a statement where, all right, this is for all the Christians. This made me feel like that I was going to, um, I'm worth nothing and I'm going to hell anyway. And since I'm going to hell anyway, I'm going to go to hell my own way. Take control of the moment. Like that type of thing. So I'm um, going to troll in, you know, piss off Christians. Because, you know, it's easy to piss Christians off. Uh, he's in the video. I think I'm not sure because I just lo- did a video because I don't really want to see the video. My goddamn self. But uh, from the little, <laughs> he was busting safe- it open for a real devil. <laughs> the safe- uh, with the uh, safe uh, clips that I saw, right? Artistically, uh, artistically, <laughs> it is done awesome, and I can understand how him lap dancing <laughs> Satan was done awesome. Like, what the the Hell, background that's, shit? That's the- crazy. That the is background crazy. Shit. I'm not talking about it. I'm Whoa, talking about Paul's the background all, Stop. Shit. Reject. Down, Paul. Tiz, let me talk. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you got everybody in the world thinking I'm I'm there, out there. I'm talking about the background shit. I'm talking about, <laughs> like, the settings, like, when they're in <laughs> heaven and they got, <laughs> and they, like, in the, the cathedral and stuff. Graphically, the background shit look all right. <laughs> I feel like if they put that much effort and, and so you're saying that, they did a good job of making him look heavenly and in the parts that yeah okay all right ah! you look at the background shit because i don't want to look directly at him 
in the video. I'm looking at all the background shit. Let me leave so, Pell alone tonight, man. I'm sorry, please man. do, me so me I can get this with done. You, man. So you good, I can get bro. this done. <laughs> you good, bro. Let me leave you <laughs> fuck alone. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to have a non-bias <laughs> opinion with my bias, because I have I'm a bias. Biased. I'm biased I'm shit. biased as hell. So I'm trying to go at selling it. selling them fake ass Nikes for, not, for Tinker Hatfield and them get to sue on his ass. Oh, they did. <laughs> he did. He got oh, them go. Baphomet ones or whatever out or whatever, which yeah, they it's say it's got fake blood in the air. Fake so. blood in it, in it or whatever. Like I said, that is I not what Cardi B meant when she said these is bloody shoes. Mm -hmm. That is not yeah, what she meant. That's what he meant. <laughs> that is not but what she meant. I know a troll when I see a troll, and I know all of this is a artistically done troll to piss people off. Yeah, let me fuck anyway. with everybody at once. I know that that's, he's been trolling the whole time. He's been a whole fucking troll the whole damn time. Him announcing that he's that way has been a troll or whatever the whole time. Oh, I he thought he was really gay. I didn't think he was. No, gay. he really gay, man. Oh, okay. He was busting was like... it wide open for Satan on, on the video, man. You gay. <laughs> But he played like he's like he'll he'll put Twitter um tweets. <laughs> he came out there like that. Like, Where is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, he, <laughs> like he come from heaven, he go down a whole pole into hell or whatever, and 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 it's it's <laughs> retarded. I only looked at the little the the, the clips because I was like, all right, I don't have to look at the whole video. Or whatever, I'll look at the shit that I know yeah, that I he'll just censor read the tweets all. Tweets about it. Oh, I ain't even trying right. to look at the video. As soon as all I saw right. the first tweet that said that, because I did like, want to see the video. A video so I was like, all right, I'm gonna look at. I'm this not guy's in that demographic. Movie. Got it. I'm gonna look at. I'm this not review. in the audience he was shooting for. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna look at this review. They're gonna tell me everything about it, and then I can tell y'all or whatever. And y'all decide to do with it whatever the fuck y'all want to do with it. But yeah, that's the fuckery, man. He trolling y'all. And because of his troll, he's getting sued by Nike. It, it's funny because he got instead of all right. So if y'all don't like those, here's the Chick-fil-A. He got the Chick-fil-A ones on, on his Twitter with a Bible verse in the front of it. That, that was his troll back. People man, stop, man. I ain't gonna never get no more chicken sandwiches. Chick-fil-A. Recognize. You know, you know, Chick Fil A already said their statement about how they feel about the ABC people. So yeah, and black oh, people, oh yeah, and everybody yeah. else. So I ain't gonna yeah, lie to you, man, I'm gonna keep eating them chicken sandwiches, man. No, nah, I just got the <laughs> limited, baby. Hey, hey man, that shit ain't like it. the Papa John's thing. Papa John's got some funky shit, man. Pizza, so I won't go fuck with him anyway. But somebody give you a. I'm gonna get them chicken. I'm gonna get them chicken biscuits and shit uh, Monday through Saturday. Hey, look, look, on surreal shit. Half, 75%, probably 90% of businesses in America that we buy to survive every day has a racist motherfucker behind it. Yeah, because we don't own all this shit. So, I already know that. So, yeah, all right. As long as you racist bastards, goddamn, don't say nigga in front of my face and get my Chick-fil-A right, what? Man. All right, <laughs> so keep along going with it. And I'm gonna just let Lil Nas X keep trolling y'all and just keep going on by his business because I don't got shit to do with that. You better leave Tinker Hatfield alone because they don't- I don't even out. like, I, I ain't like shoes. Old Town Road. It's not my thing. I thought oh, it was man. a corny song. My so. son love that fucking song and I love the remix. Hat mm -hmm. down, hop down, live it like a rock star. I like, I like what it did. That damn Billy Ray Cyrus came with that one with the hardest shit. That nigga came with I like what he with did, that track. man. I Billy Ray was getting it in, boy. I listen to Griselda. I ain't, you ain't playing Griselda on shuffle. And then next thing you know, Old Time Road come on. It's that fuck up the whole vibe. Hey, man. <laughs> you want to take my horse to the Old Town Road? You know, mine who can't no more. My right. kid, yo, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Mm, I'm okay. I hate that. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I would I would tell y'all the name of the video, but I don't even know the name of the fucking video. So I like, just go down <laughs> to the next fuckery or whatever. It's something I don't care. I ain't shit. I'm not trying to watch the video, man. Hey, let him do what he hey, wants. Hey, can do, we man. move on then? All right. So yeah, yeah. We ain't got to stumble back through that. We got you. <laughs> we got you. All right. <laughs> All right. From one old town road to another. Uh, Police went down to this old town road 
and uh, they found one of the Capitol riot suspects, uh, Sean Garrett, mm -hmm. and they arrested him wearing a shirt that says, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet irony. I love it. Uh, Good job, buddy. If they weren't sure that you were who they were looking for, <laughs> they know now. Make the job Good easy for them. Yep. I love, um, a, I love a dumb person. They just break I, good news. I love dumb karma. Ah, good job. Dumb buddy. karma. Good job. So, buddy. next one. Um, I don't know how this asshole name is. It's Derek Chauvin. I don't know how to pronounce it, nor do I care. But 10 months after George Floyd's death, they have uh, started on the proceedings against him. Um, it looks like one of the first responders have uh, spoken about it uh, just yet. So um, yeah. they started the proceedings on that. So the, uh, that's what one you call good it? thing. Uh, yeah, the paramedics spoke today. I saw, I saw this on Max V's page. Uh, the paramedics said that when they got there to give the to like see if he was dead in a check or pause, the dude still ain't taking his uh, knee off his neck. That should. They said they said was, wrong with you. They said, they said it was nothing they could have did for him because he was already he was already gone. So it ain't looking good for dude, but you know how this this uh, judicial system yeah yeah it, they, they, like, in a minute, so they gonna do something like I'm gonna just take his job but not persecute. Mm -hmm. We if we find that you are not fitting for this job. No motherfucker, he's a killer. Yes, he's not fitting for his job because he's a killer. Pretty Put much. him in jail with the rest of the killers. And the people that y'all claim killers or whatever, and take them out. No lie, right. detected here. <laughs> All right, the now, next. Huh? Let me interject right there when you say put them in the jail with the killers. I just want to ask another question. You know how black folks is always like, free this person and free this person, let this person go, but they be to kill somebody and do some other shit, and you screaming, <laughs> free this motherfucker? You want to free the nigga who killed somebody? Free little Ray Ray. I mean, I know he shot two niggas in the head, but them niggas stole twenty dollars, man. What's the benefit to the community, sir? Well, he my cousin. Mm -hmm. The only benefit is you know that he's, he's a cousin free to you. Free motherfuckers in there all trumped up charges or weed charges. It's free exactly. motherfuckers that are actually innocent that got jerked over and exactly. railroaded because they ain't have a good enough lawyer to defend them right. And the public, you that's the wreck ass like, public. Three defender. motherfuckers that were afraid of black corrupt police. <laughs> exactly. But don't free, yeah, don't free no nigga that just killed somebody. No, keep all yeah. them locked don't, up. Don't free the murderers. They, they made a don't choice. Don't free the murderers. Don't free the murderers. Free those who've been wrongfully convicted. Mm -hmm. Scream that shit. Don't just scream, don't scream free a motherfucker just because they your friend, they in jail. Indeed. Some of these motherfuckers deserve to be in jail. Yep. Shit. That's real 100 shit. percent agree there. Mm -hmm. That's some real old shit. Some of these motherfuckers deserve to be in jail. Yep. Some of, a, a lot of motherfucking people don't. A lot of people go on there with some trumped up charges, some planet stuff, some just some crazy ass stuff happened. But it's a reason for jails and asylums. It's a reason for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some of these so people, people need crazy. to be in certain places. Some people just don't need to be out around other people. Nope. Yeah. They need all of the long time they get. They yep. need a whole bunch of long time. Yep. And that's the best thing for them. I mean, hey. The best thing for all of us. Nope. Shit, I like a long please, time. <laughs> please, people. Please, don't run around screaming free people just because they're your family oh, members. Really, really. Remember what your family member got caught for. Be fast. That motherfucker killed 15 motherfuckers. Sure, he always gave you something for Christmas. Sure, he bought you anything he wanted. But that nigga killed 15 people. That nigga's a murderer. He belongs in jail. Don't free that motherfucker. That's real. You free you these niggas in jail or, or DUIs. You feel me? Put them in a, on a treatment center. Preach. Put them niggas somewhere they can <clears throat> learn something and get out of there and get the disease out of. Mm -hmm. Because they're alcoholics. That's an acid disease. <laughs> alcoholics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these alcoholics. motherfucking murderers, these murderers, these 
if it's a nonviolent offense, get him up out of there. Mm-hmm. I support that. Free that. Free that. No, know who else they need to free? Um, they need to free the uh, Georgia rep, uh, state rep, Park Cannon or whatever, because she was in there and she is, she's a representative, a Democratic representative. And while um, Kemp, jo- um, Georgia's governor, was signing off this bill to that basically suppresses voter rights, pretty much any type of way. You can't mail it in. You can't just all the other alternative ways that got Biden in office or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. He's signing a bill against that. And she was actually supposed to be in a proceeding and the state troopers arrested her. And they're all like, why are they not? And then you look in the picture with Kemp and you see a whole bunch of people looking like Kemp. Kemp you don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Kemp. Mm-hmm. Oh, and free man. Willie, by the way. Somebody asked me the other day. Free Somebody Willie? Free my uncle Willie. Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, right. that's an old comic view moment for y'all old school folks. <laughs> Uh, DC Curry is amazing. Yeah, that nigga ain't right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm <laughs> and speaking, oh, well, there's Willie, and then all right, I'll I want to start off like this. All right, so Saturday, right? This is the end of the fuckery. So Saturday, right? <clears throat> I'm out in Virginia Beach or whatever. Um, I'm about to go pick um uh, my friend up from a job, late night job gets off like around 11 o'clock or whatever. I'm driving on the way there. Wasn't really at the ocean front, but mm-hmm. I'm seeing police just flying through all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I find out that it was a, ma- a bunch of shootings um, this weekend on the ocean front out in the, in the beach. Uh, eight, eight people um, got killed, if I'm not mistaken. And one of them um, well, I believe today they actually three of the suspects that started the 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 shooting, they um they actually was in court today. Oh, is it was day or yesterday? And um, yeah, and if they the ones that did it, keep them in jail, pretty much. Cause that started a whole like catalyst of other things that happened, like uh Another um, one of the victims that was uh, shot in the whole matter was um, this girl from Virginia Beach that was in the Bad Girls Club, um, mm-hmm. Deisha Lay Harris. She was killed, mm-hmm. and um, Pharrell Williams' cousin um, named Donovan. He was actually uh, shot by they say a police officer, and at the time his cam was off for some reason. So, you know, Pharrell is demanding that, you know what I'm saying, that he gets some type of justice over his cousin. And uh, <clears throat> and I'd like to say rest in peace to all the people that um, that was killed and uh, condolences to their family and everything there, too. Whatever. Like, this just happened this weekend. And it's like, it's crazy when you see something happen on real time. And then later on, it was like, oh, shit, I was just, you know, there in that same Vicinity, yeah. I've been watching the news. I've seen that shit all the news, but damn, so you was just that's some crazy shit. Small ass yeah. the world, yo. And and I'm gonna say right now, man, like they're gonna they they, Virginia Beach just have police. Now the first shooting, I'm not even gonna blame on Virginia Beach police because that was some altercation that some somebody went through on their own but just the off of what i'm seeing like the um yeah he was armed but he wasn't going for his gun and just because he was armed he just shot that person you know what i'm saying like you should be trained like you should be trained to have some kind of wherewithal to know when to pull and when not to you know what i'm saying like to have some kind of training and i'm 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 sorry virginia beach just off of my own experience and just what I've seen from news is just has just bullshit training when it comes to dealing with people of color or situations like um, 
last mm-hmm. year, last year it was a video out where um in Lynn Haven Mall in the for, um the food court. Uh, police come in and arrest this random um black guy with dress and everything, and it was you? the wrong person. No, it won't me, but it could have been me. <laughs> I'm like, shit, black guy dress, hey, that's you. Yeah, hey, that could have been me. me. It could have been me. You know, you know, like shoot, it probably was me at one time. You know, I was used to be in Virginia Beach and stuff. And, and general, yeah, we're gonna leave that alone. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like they, like they, it was a whole video out just showing it, and then they had to apologize at the end and everything. So, like Virginia Beach, y'all, y'all training for police is fuckery, and it's been fuckery for a while. So y'all need to do yeah, something yeah. to reform that, like Big get that facts. illicit bias out the way or whatever. Like, when would not if if y'all want to look at stat- statistics and everything, um, we're not the domestic terrorists. We're right. not. You know, a lot of things go on because people have petty um, squabbles against each other and everything. And Mm -hmm. um, in this case, I know like this is all have to do with the 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 weather getting warmer, and these kids are out there with their testosterone acting up. Because these the the people, the shooters, they were like in the early twenties and everything. Man, like Mm -hmm. it's just too much. It's just too much fuckery causing more fuckery that's getting people killed. Pretty yep. much. So. Trigger having <clears throat> kids. Yep. Yeah, and when they get close to home like that, man, it's like, I don't know, I felt like I had to say something on it because that's, I was, I, respect I was right there and in those situations, I feel like that, man, that could be me, you know, like, yeah, just tr- being yeah. on the humbug. Depending you know? on the year, could have been any one of us. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. yeah. I've been in that court a couple of times. Get your shit together, Virginia Beach. Mm-hmm. Sure. And clean the water. <clears throat> Please. Yeah. <laughs> Open Damn. some new shop. That too. Yeah. Keep hammerheads. Good times. Hammerheads um, changed. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't turn into something else, man. <laughs> I'm glad that you're on that shit. <laughs> hey, they did. Yeah, Same building, different name. That's all. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Got you. Got you. Well, mm-hmm. same fuckery. Same fuckery, different week. And this week, we don't have an official black business of the week. So, support, uh, I will throw back to one support Marley's Moss. He oh, has great mm-hmm. products, and uh, and Pat has a, a nice package of the gummies and some other products. So, hey, get your elderberry, get your sea moss, get your inflammation out of you, get, get your immune system boosted. Like, get mm-hmm. your like, get your health right. So, holler at Molly's Moss. Yeah, um, I got got it in the other day, and he gave me a free gift. He gave me a free gift. Uh, he gave me the elderberry. And the Capri Sun package, son. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> now, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, it don't got cool. a little hole, but I'll create one. But yeah, they got the elderberry <laughs> for a free gift. But and, I'll create uh, one. <laughs> yeah. I'm creative. You know, I know. I'm and I got another free gift, uh, a jar of uh, sea moss um, sauce, pretty much. That I can put oh, it in, in my smoothies and stuff. Yes, yep, sir. Just, okay. just came in today. I got like two packs of these. Kind of went into one of them or whatever. But yeah, keep you healthy yes, and whatnot. Shout out to man, Marley's bro. Moss, man. Get your health at right. At Marley's dot Moss on Instagram and um, www.marleycmoss.com. Indeed. And as always, you can always support the partners. We are a black business. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, support by going to babbyacoffee.com backslash the partners or patreon.com backslash the partners <laughs> or cash apping us at dollar sign partner tiers one. Um, or you can always support as well by going to tell them where they can go, Faith. Spring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one. That's P O D N A S. I know you know how to spell closet. Closet dash one. The number one. <laughs> indeed, indeed. For all our latest apparel. And if you happen to cop some from the uh, store, 
make sure you send us a picture, you know, tag us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter with a picture of you rocking the gear so that we can, you know, show off that we got pod squad members out there down with the cause. Um, but you're right on the IG. Indeed. Promo indeed. code, promo code. Oh. Hashtag Podsquad83, 15% off. Hey, you know we like a discount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead and get that 15% off. <clears throat> so go ahead, throw that promo code in, get you some partners gear. We got pretty much anything you can want. You can drink from a partner's mug. You can protect your, your health outside. With this social distancing and quarantining with a partner's mask, you can get you a fit on. See, man. Get right for the springtime. Get you the hoodies. Get you the, the, the gear. Like Jogger set for the gym. If you want your phone to have the partners, you can get your partner's phone case. Whatever you want, we got it. Shopping so, bags. All of the partners, make sure you throw in that promo code. Get that promo code one more time, Faith. Teespring.com backslash stores backslash partners dash closet dash one. That's P O D N A S. That's C L O S C T dash the number one. Already, already. So y'all hear what it is. Um, where can they find us if they want to holler at us, Pat? At T H E P O D N A S. That's the Twitter and that's the Instagram. Um, Tiz Face Pat are the partners on Facebook, or you can just do what I do. I hashtag the partners. T H E P O D N A S sends me right to there. It's going to show you the same. Same post, just click on our name. We're right there. All our stuff is right there. Comment, like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. You know, please comment, please like, <laughs> please share. Um, those are the three biggest ways you can support us. Um, as we continue to try to grow the pod squad and continue to have the conversations and learn from more perspectives, as well as share our own with you guys. Um, as always, oh, and, go ahead, and, hit them with it. Hey. We have these lives, man. If y'all got some crazy videos y'all want to oh hit us God. with, man, go yeah. ahead and hit us up with it, and we will talk shit about it. Please. Because I if love got, to talk if, shit. If you got topics you want us to cover on our live show, which is a little bit less structured, more of us just getting into the fuckery. <laughs> it's a lot of fuckery. Um, and you go hard. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you want to know more about Nubsy or Sweater Vest Baby or Buckshot, the 91-year-old cop, Come to our live shows every, every, every Sunday night, 9.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Um, If you want to get with our podcast and you want to just listen or you want to find an easy way to get to all of our information, just go to thepodnas.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S dot com. If you want to go straight to the podcast itself and you just want a listening version, but you don't feel like sifting through to find which app you want to use, just go to kite.link backslash the partners and it'll take you to all of the podcast platforms we're a part of. We're on everything. So whatever your favorite app. Spotify, app is, Apple. We, we on there. Amazon. All of, all of the good shit. Stitch all that Spotify. shit. So all of them. Get with us. Um, we love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again <laughs> for sticking with us to our 20th episode and for getting us to our first huge milestone in our podcast. Oh, 20. 200 subscribers. Um, keep the conversation going down in the comments. When this drops, let us know what y'all think about what we talked about tonight. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a different opinion we didn't cover? We want to hear from you. As always, you're going to hear from us every week. And the podcast is dropping today for you guys, which is Friday, Friday, Friday. Um, yeah. So as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, along with... It is the Padawan here, the other third, along with you know, it's facing the place. Trying Fast to stay pause. ahead of the race and on pace with the taste or the flavor of the. I don't know. I ain't got nothing. Flick it, flick it, uh. <laughs> I'm going to need a bars to pat. <laughs> but yeah, man. Love you guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Hope to hear from y'all down in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and peace. We about to shake my head so we can get more subscribers. <laughs> oh, he told me to shake my head so I can get the more partners subscribers. Podcast dot, at gmail.com. The partners podcast at gmail.com. Pat taking wifey resumes. And if you got topics <laughs> that you want us to cover, that's an easy <laughs> way to get them to us so that we can include them in our future shows. Love you guys. Peace.
Ernest with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am one third of The Partners, your boy Tiz, along with... It's the other third of The Partners. Happy 420, y'all motherfuckers. And along it's nappy with... 420. It's nappy 420. I'm along with the ambassador 420 over there in the place. <laughs> You know, it's space in the place. I'm already high, and I'm about to get higher than everybody in this place. <laughs> I'm catching up. <laughs> so you can see where we starting off this uh episode uh this is episode 22 coming straight at you uh 22 22 22 um and i'm gonna get right off into the first topic man um Derek chauvin verdict came in today and i have many feelings but i'm gonna lean into the joy part for the first comment and just say that's what Flea said. Thank you, Justice, for finally showing up. For finally showing up um, in one of these cases, because usually it does not go like this. Um, let's hope that this continues to be a trend going forward and a long lasting one as opposed to just a one off. Um, but yeah, what, what are y'all thoughts going into the verdict and as the verdict and after the verdict was read? Um, me personally, I feel it's good to actually have justice, like you say, for once, when it's been on videotape and everyone knows what happened and we've seen it and mm -hmm. there's no excuse they can have or it's no... He's not getting administrative leave. He is actually getting jail time. He's actually been convicted. That's true justice, um, regardless of what color. So I'm yeah, just happy justice is served. Um, I don't want the masses to get caught up on the color thing because that's going to be a different narrative for everybody to start taking. And if they want to build negativity <laughs> off of that, that gives them the room to do it. So let's just revel in the justice system right now and not nothing about color. Because as soon as we start making it about color, we fall right back into the ignorance that Indeed. we always talk about other people have. Indeed. So let's talk about the justice system people and let's be happy that it's finally working. That's yeah. real. What say you, Pat? I'm trying so hard not, not to fall into the color side of it or whatever. But okay. like What's helping okay. me to keep me from there is the what we told us to do, what you said you're gonna do. Just let's just revel in the joy of it. Like finally, finally, the right choice has been made. Finally, there's been justice for 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 somebody that lost their life. You know what I'm saying? Like just finally. Like I I'm still in that moment of like. I mean, I've seen the verdict. I've seen the CN CNN. Um, you know, I've been looking at clips all day or whatever, trying to get more information about it. And, you know, we've been talking to it on our um, group chats and stuff like that. But, like, until I really see, like, the, the actual sentence, I feel like I'm still not – I'm not over it yet or whatever. Like, I still got to see the year. And I don't know what it is about me or whatever and how I feel about that, but – it's just I have so much of distrust for the justice system that I'm like, all right, what's the catch? Mm -hmm. What's the catch? It's always a catch, and and I'm just just waiting for the catch to come along. That's all. Um, I think for me, I, I'm definitely going to lean into the joy, like I said. So I'm just going to start off by just saying, again, I'm happy that justice was served. Finally, in one of these types of cases. Um, 
I guess for me, it's almost like bittersweet though. Like, cause then I think about two things. I think about for one, where was this for all of these other cases where the evidence was just as glaring? And then for two, what does the backlash look like? So like, oh yeah, I'm not worried about no violence or nothing <clears throat> like that. But what I am worried about is usually after something like this happened, like you have uh, some justice be served. Usually, what happens is the system finds a way to reconfigure and okay, well, we're gonna start by taking. Impressive tactics, and we're gonna reconfigure them, make them look like this now. Mm -hmm. Same overall result, just a different formula to it. And then they reconfigure a little more, and then they do that for a few years, and then all of a sudden we right back at the point where they beat our ass again. So my thing is like, what actually? It's it's like same thing when Biden got uh, elected. Same thing when um, just. My my question is like, all right, so what is the actual change that's happening? And I, I don't know what that is. So it's like I feel happy about it, like yes, it's sir, but like all right, there's a, some more cases coming up. Mm -hmm. Is this well, gonna be the same? Like, or is it gonna be well? No I'm, more. Again, I feel so like going back to the status quo. So it's like uh, I, I feel like. What would make you feel better about it is that you don't know, you don't ever know the result of history until it actually passed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I, I look at it, what really is making me uh, look toward the joy of it is that this might be the climax, the pivotal moment or whatever where shit change. You know what I'm saying? There's always a, a moment in the history of time where there's a, a a drastic change or whatever. So this might be this might be the, the thing to kick it off. We may this may start the domino effect of other positive things. That's why I want to think, you know, and that's well, what I'm hoping it. for. Pretty it. much. But I'm not naive. Yes. <laughs> yep, that, that part. That part. Naive. And I will say, because since you brought him up, Biden or whatever, um yes. Biden shut the fuck up. One time. All right, we put you in the office or whatever. I, it, it's time for you to, like, stop. Just just stop buttering up shit. Like, he was talking about um, it's never time for looting and this, that, and the third. No, no. Yeah, sir. No, no, that wasn't the thing to say sir. at this time. That wasn't. That wasn't the thing to say at this time. If if anything, you, you should have said, well. Because if we don't vote for you, we're not black. So now that your ass in there. Mm-hmm. Stand the fuck up there, champ. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or get the fuck out the way. <laughs> Agreed. I have Come on now, guy. Mm -hmm. Come on now, guy. Now, we all know what they're doing the campaign don't mean shit after they elected. Come on now. Yeah, just because we know, know it don't know mean that, I got to agree with it. I I know, I know, I know. But at the same time, before, before he got elected, I said we got to be on his neck. And I'm going oh, yeah. to say that shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause Continue the pressure. Continue the pressure. For, we got I the feel whole like a higher esteem. Mm -hmm. A higher regard. I feel like and if I vote for a motherfucker, I should be able to talk shit about this motherfucker when he's doing something I disagree with. Agree. But agreement with that. Mm -hmm. I put it like this. Vote for you or not vote for you. I'm gonna talk shit regardless when you're fucking up. <laughs> uh, agreed I, with I, that too. <laughs> hey, no, no lies detected to his voice. No lies uh, detected. I just felt no like I even have this. even more, <laughs> even more. Like you can't even say no more of any type of shit against me if I like, hey, I put you there, you know. Indeed. And I'm not like the whole country, but hey, I could have not voted, you know. Hey, man, I'm with you. I, I yeah, again, no lies detected. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from that to this, um, this week's a very special 
Tiz is Umar Johnson update. Do, 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 do. I, you said it so very special. Gonna, I want to give you sound that. <laughs> yeah, it's very special. You'll see why I'm near the end. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So, the past few lives he's put up. Um, the first thing that happened was he put up one that, <clears throat> well, Black Anonymous highlighted it. He was on there. He showed his cash app account and he showed him dropping 11 grand into the bank account from that cash app. But the cash app was a personal cash app account instead of a business one. So I'm not sure how that works, but is that legal? I'm just throwing that out there to the audience, just asking because it looked weird and it's definitely worth looking into. But when I looked into it, I couldn't figure it out. It looked like it's fishy, but I can't really tell if it's actually illegal or what, but somebody let me know in the comments. Uh, he then made an IG live at a beach and he yells and preaches to himself and then he tells the birds that are out there catching fish that they need to cook him some fish maybe he had 420 early oh, you know what Tiz I, I, with, the, with the cash app thing I want to say this um, cash app why are y'all not flagging him? Y'all flag the fuck out my cash app. I can't even use that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I got, I'm trying to pay the dues for the podcast, the tears and shit, and they can't, no, no, no. I ain't do shit. I ain't do shit. But this nigga can, can goddamn tell people to, to, to support his cash app all day for a fake ass school or whatever. I'm trying to just send money to a friend or a friend trying to send money to me because they want me to draw something for them. Or I'm trying to pay my um my my podcast dues and shit, and y'all said no, no. That's some bullshit, Cash App. No, 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 no. Let me not say that. You cool with me, Cash App? But get up on my man page like that, man. That man. Yeah. I want y'all to be cool with me, man. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah, man. He one third of the partners, man. Let that man live. You don't got no um, tech support. In this same live where he was begging for the fit, the birds to cook him some fish, he speaks on the $300,000 tax bill and says that he can either renovate the school or pay the taxes. He cannot do both. So he admitted on camera that he will either not be renovating the school at all or if he or he will be renovating the school and the school will be due for some tax liens coming up for unpaid taxes at some point. He also says that the white power structure is trying to make us sell the school. I don't know who the hell us is because uh, I put my 50 in and uh, I ain't seen nothing. And yes, I put in only $50, but damn it, that was my $50 and I got treated like a misfit from that shit. Like he just brushed my shit off. It was a, but yeah, anyway. that was a, that was a fifty dollar investment that if if saw potential that the the school would grow, you would probably continue. Man, I could have invested into something else that more. I could have got some. <clears throat> oh, okay, yo, fifty dollars is going toward this, and this is how we split up all of our money. So at least I know, okay, this fifty, well, two dollars going here, and three. I ain't get shit, but ignored in every attempt to actually legitimately ask the question of like what. Is going on? Oh, Do you need help? Like, but anyway, I'm gonna give me an African name and make oh, me a my damn self. I, I'm trying to tell you. Padawan Tunde. He then goes on live and uses DMX's death as a reason to dedicate a so-called fundraiser to the FDMG Academy, where he had people give money on the cash app and he would answer their questions <sighs> using the deaths of others to try to profit himself yet again, just like he did with Breonna Taylor's death. Like he stayed, right, he stayed riding the wave of somebody who passed and, yet, and then putting his name involved in it, but then not really doing nothing for that person, just t doing a bunch of lip service. I saw that yeah. shit too on his Instagram. He had like yes. Uh, yes. That, that classic DMX picture with him holding the dogs in black and white. They just have his information on the bottom. Like that shit don't got nothing to do with this picture. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, nobody that's knows crap. what the hell he be. Yo, he got like, some shit, man. He it, it, oh, 
His, yeah. his Instagram is so weird. It's so weird. You need to get you a, a PR tune day. But, he, but he's but the school is coming in the next four and a half months, y'all. It's coming. He it's says coming, going to la- it's coming. It's going to be grand opening on E Five Tune Day Boulevard on Big Papa Drive. On he better man. He better off getting a damn website and <laughs> calling it school. Shit, University of Phoenix did it. So how he gonna open the school? He gonna have um, COVID restrictions. He gonna have COVID mandates and shit in his school. You trying to open a school during COVID? I don't know. That's why I say you might as well get a website. That's just that's just just still going on. He better off opening the school, but doing it virtual and just having a virtual school, a total virtual school. You know, Mm -hmm. it'd be be better off that way. And if that got that. If that gym still got that sewage pool in it, or whatever oh. got that sewage pool in it, that's they ain't nothing but a cesspool for COVID. Oh, it's dried up for now, but you know, it's still he also said for COVID. Alive that it goes, it comes and goes. I, dependent, so. I, I wish the brother, I wish the brother all success um, in his in his um, venture for the school, as long as it's a a legal venture, and he's really not scamming people. I wish you all all. all Props. I, I hope you do it. I hope you hit the door. I hope you hit your smell. I hope you level up. But if you're scamming, man, I'm falling your fucking face. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know what you call this, but he, in the same life, he also used DMX's name as a part of a promotion for a book signing and parent clinic that was already scheduled before DMX was even in the hospital. So now it's dedicated to DMX. I was about to say, so he can get some profit off pain. Out. So you're profiting off pain and you're profiting off our color. So uh, it seems like you're trying to be like those people you're always talking about. Look cool to like me. You're really, you got to get a little more self aware of the actions you're doing and the things you're saying because it seems like you're just trying to ride the wave to just give yourself more publicity and just add your stuff in there. Um, when we mention oh, people's death, we're trying to give them their flowers. We're trying to um, make people make give people the knowledge of their passing and go into the and talk about them. But we don't follow it up with, well, make sure you do this and come to this. There's no need because I mean, if you're gonna come to and watch, you're gonna do it anyway. There's no need to add that in there, name drop something like for what that that's classless. Um, yeah. But that's just my opinion. No, I'm with you. Right um, in trend. You said what? So doing nothing but riding trends and waves and stuff like that. Yep. And the worst types of ones, like, come on, bro. Um, He then said during a live that he needs to get the HVAC and plumbing done at the schools. However, a month ago, he said that the HVAC was about to be started as he had the team to do it finally. That was that little crew of people that looked like Sanford and Sons. Uh, that then I love the little certain night crew with Bubba and uh, Grady and all them. That, uh, that, 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 that. <laughs> he then also showed off some sinks at the school saying that the plumbing had already been started and they just needed to finish the toilets and shit lake area in the gym. So in the in a video about a month ago, he said that the plumbing had already been started and the HVAC was about to be started, and now he needs to get them done still. So nothing's been done. Now, yes. yes, you said shit like so professionally when you said that list oh, of yes. things That's that need to be fixed. <laughs> I almost thought that was really. I mean, we're going to call it what it is, man. <laughs> Backed up sewage is a shit lake if it pools up and forms a surface that has a coast and, you know, you can wade through it. That means it's a lake, a marsh, <laughs> swamp, whatever you want to call that shit, man. Um, but this is what I'm going to say about uh, Uma and uh, I've been hitting at it for the past couple weeks but it's official this is the last Uma update for a while unless he does something magnificently stupid and like it's about to hit the fan um, otherwise I'll be commenting again you know periodically just to check in on him and see how he's doing as far as the actual progress toward the school as we approach his, his deadline that he set for himself um and other than that man uh from now on I'm gonna be having a test take which is a new little segment um 
that'll debut on the next episode. Um, and it's basically going to be me saying a, a, a take that I have on something and wanting people to debate me and argue with me on it or con- try to convince me otherwise. So I'm either going to learn something new, <laughs> I'm either going to stand fast in my opinion, or I'm going to be to change my opinion. But either way, I don't know. I figured it'd be good. So, yeah. Cheers, take next week. And on, well, on the next episode, I should say. And, uh, yeah. Umar, uh, you done had your run, but this sector, this Umar sector, uh, it's a couple of channels that I'm going to still be fucking around with because of the people that are in the chat that I actually fuck with. And I feel like I, I rock with them. You know what I mean? They supportive. They, they good people. But, like, it's going to be a lot of me just backing off of that look. It's a, it's a lot of weird stuff going on over there. And I, I ain't, I, yeah, champ. I ain't, I ain't with everything. Um, so uh, The internet get weird sometimes. Yeah, what started is just, you know, going after a dude scamming people to turn into some old other shit between, uh, I ain't with all that shit. It's just got weirder and weirder and weirder <laughs> to the point, like, yeah. Well, uh, as they yeah, say, God bless, but I'm gonna fall back off of that. The internet is a weird ass place. Yeah, champ. Yeah, but weirdos out here. And yeah, salute to all of the real ones. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just not a successful thing to do, man. You're just not gonna lead to success doing that same thing. Just because he ain't gonna be successful if he keeps yeah. doing this same thing. So hopefully, I don't even wanna commit no mm-hmm. more. Hopefully, it goes to something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we basically just going from like ten percent of our content being with my stuff to like, you know, point point eight. You know, for the periodic shit I do throughout the year. But yeah. We'll just fail some, find something else to fill that gap. So, yeah, see y'all next episode with the tears take. Um, this has been the last Umar update for a while. So, yeah, we holler at you. What they gonna say about Big Papa? Uh, nothing unless you do something else involving the school, sir. And you pretty much at this point proven that that's not what you're trying to do. So, I holler back at this shit. I ain't, I ain't about to waste my energy or my my aura. My chakras ain't about to take that shit no more. Whatever, whatever they say. Yeah, I So, but yeah, man. The... <laughs> so, I pose a question to both of you and the audience. Okay. In today's society, what does it take to be considered a success? Also, in that same question, think about this. What does success constitute? How is it measured? And is it attainable for all under those measurements? Did you want to go first, Pet, or you want me to go first? You go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. All right, so for me, uh, let me think. Okay, so it's... If personally then it's based off of whatever your you attaining your goals and being content with attaining those um if it's societal then we're talking about um how much money or power you attain and yeah that would be how you would determine success like Usually how successful you are at a job is determined by like how much money you got or how much power you got from that, whether that be through fame or through actual political influence and that type of power. Um, So yeah, that would be societal. Is it measurable on a scale um, that is skewed? Um, It's measurable on a scale personally by like, I know what, I've wanted to accomplish. And if I accomplish that and I'm content in that, then I'm successful. If I feel like I'm not content in that, 
then that's when ambition should kick in and say, all right, well, go after the next goal so you can feel successful again. And that's how I look at like your personal stuff. Like if you're happy and you're content and you are like a person that works at a factory or something, you make 75 grand a year, you're a foreman or some shit. Like, all right, if you're completely content with that and that will f- fulfill like however your pension is set up and your retirement and your investment's been good and whatever, whatever, if you're set up to like where when I retire, I'm going to be good and I have a plan and this is good for me if this stays just like this, then you successful to you. Society might not look at that because they might be like, well, that ain't six figures. That ain't you going and taking trips here. That ain't you being able to influence this or you being seen as this or whatever the case may be. But yeah, it's measurable in that. In society, though, it's measurable by just that, like the numerical value of how much money and power you attain. So the quantity of power you have, your your sphere of influence and size is the one measurement, and then your bank account is the other measurement. And yeah, and I don't know if it was, it was another question, but uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I like those answers. What you what say you, Pat? feel like well i mean he nailed it to the t but i feel like it's like <laughs> it's uh it's a constant conflict between each each one cuz it's more like say as far as measuring your success or, or whatever like it's all for pretty much a perspective like yeah it's like um like you yourself can only really judge where you are as far as where your success meter is pretty much but like you know others around you that's close to you whatever they may they may view it view you at a higher range than you might even view yourself or whatever so you know that might personally increase where you where you feel like as far as your success is it's like uh it's one of those things that is like um how i say it's it's not a physical thing that you can really measure, you know, uh, or whatever, or, or rate. It's like, it, it all depends. Like, if it's, it's like, how do you, how much do you care what society feels is success or whatever? It kind of rates how much you feel, how how much you feel successful or whatever. Like, like that makes it, sense. It, like you, you kind of have to ignore society's measurement of success or whatever in order for you to feel successful or whatever, or you know, and and maybe take what you've learned from society as far as terms to rate your own and make your own rating. But as I, I feel like, as far as that question of success, that's always it's a it's a constant conflict between that person, that individual perspective. And the society that you know, uh, people around you that you find close, and then societal range of it or whatever. But it's like as long as you con- content within yourself and your own decisions in life or whatever, I feel like that's success. Pretty much. <laughs> I like that answer too. Mm-hmm. So, my perspective. Now, success, like y'all say, is that tricky, funny thing. But like you say, pay it always brings back conflict. And when I see, when I think about success, I always think about continue, continuous internal conflicts. You know, like because you're, you know, what you want to attain that's going to make you feel happy, but. At the end of the day, you live in society. So are your goals and are you making yourself happy to the success level are you in? Is that what level are you seeing in society? And does that matter to you? And if it does matter to you, it's going to weigh heavy on you. If where you're at and you're happy at don't mean shit in society and you're seeing it still, not shit. Because society's level of success is viewed as 10 times or 20 times higher than where you think success is. You go on and feel like shit. But if what society thinks don't mean shit to you, then whatever level 
of success means good to you, that's what's always going to matter. Um, and I feel that's, that's different with the individual. You have some people who don't give a fuck what society think about and whatever they You feel me? So, I mean, the success level they attain is what they want. And they, they, those people can either choose to continue to push themselves high to see what they can do because they want to challenge themselves or be successful where they're at and be happy. That's their, that's their choice. But those who live in that realm of society and feel the need to, I'm going to say, um, assimilate into what the outside world wants them to be, then I feel they'll always be chasing that, chasing that, um, that metal ring. But I don't feel like you can ever truly be successful in society because even billionaires get hate. I mean, sure, they have the billions, but people are always nitpicking on something they do. Who is truly successful in the eyes of society that no one says nothing about? I, I don't know nobody. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to you being happy within and just knowing, shit, I'm, I'm, I know what my goals was. I achieved that success for me. And that's what has to matter more. I feel like when we dwell in the realm of others' thoughts, you'll always be internally struggling. You'll always be that internal battle of second guessing yourself, thinking about, okay, do they think this about me? Am I fly enough? Am I making enough money to what everybody think? At the end of the day, that shit don't matter because when you go, you go by yourself. So <laughs> what people think don't matter because even people who want to be remembered, I'm going to do this so I can be remembered. You only remember us for so long. Really? I think I think one of y'all brought this up, but like you can have you can have somebody that's actually successful in what society deems is successful, and they feel miserable. Or whatever. Yeah, hell yeah! Uh, like you got you rich. got famous, rich, powerful people that are miserable, and you got people that live modest livings, modest income. Modern, like you would look at them and be like, Oh, you regular or you below average as hell, and they are happy as fuck. Mm -hmm. And the only difference is a level of contentment with your surroundings. Like, if you are completely content in what you in, like, all right, think about this <clears throat> what made growing up in the poorest of circumstances at one point in your life as opposed to now any different? The only difference is your contentment with it. Mm -hmm. Like if you take me back and say, all right, you now got to live like you lived 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. No, I'm good. No, I'm straight on that. Ain't going back. But at that point in my life, I was happy go lucky. I, I, all right, well, life is good. But it was because I was content with it. But your level of contentment gonna change. So it's like, I feel like with success, you gotta be a person, like Faith said, you gotta be one of them individuals that's a person that's content, first of all, with like, taking your cues from you as opposed to like, like you can take advice from the outside world, but you still got to take like your self love and your self respect. That's all self stuff. That's all you like, you got to have that stuff internally and be work that shit out first. So like you got to be content and taking your cues from you and then go from there. And then once you at that point, you can definitely hit success because then it's just about whatever you are looking for, whatever your personal goals are. If you hit those, then you're going to see yourself as successful because you're going to feel the success of those moments. And, and you're taking the, the hardest part out the equation, which is society, which is that societal pressure of what they think. Like there's a standard of beauty that changes every 15 to 20 years. That doesn't mean that that actually changes what looks good to you when you see it. That just means that that's what society done told you is supposed to look good. So that's what they pushing, but that doesn't necessarily make it true. Just like with success, that man with 75 grand a year might be 
because of the way he set up, sets up, set up stuff to the point where he's going to live a nice, comfortable living where his bills going to be paid and he's going to be chilling in a nice car and taking care of his kid with that. And he's going to be straight. Now, for somebody else, that might be like, yo, that is, I do not want to see myself living like that. I need to be making seven figures by the time I get to that same man's age. Cool. Mm-hmm. Then that's your gonna that's gonna be your thing for success. But at the end of the day, like the only thing that's gonna be different between those two men is what society thinks about them when they hit their goal. So at the end of the day, like you just gotta have your own personal shit. Like fuck what everybody else think. Like, what do I think about me? And then and I'm gonna ride with that. Because at the end of the day, you got to live with everything you do, everything you think, everything you say, every decision you make. It all is going to fall back at the end of the day. You're going to bear the heaviest burden nine times out of ten, unless it's something like murder or something like where you've killed somebody else, you've done something to somebody else, and they can never pay the same. You can never, you might not be able to pay the same price as them, but on your average everyday running the mill shit, like the shit that leads to success, like your work ethic, your, what you think about, like that all comes down to like, what are you content with in you? And then if you can get to that, then yeah, you're successful. Cause do you at where you are going to be the happiest and, and a nice level of peace with everything. And that don't mean bad shit won't happen and all that, but it just mean like, there's a person out there that will be happy when they get their first million. Cool. There's, that's what's going to make them content. And that's really should be what we judge success by. Are they content? And if they are cool, it's another person out there that's going to live off fifteen to $20,000 a year because they're going to live in a tent on the beach somewhere in Hawaii or some on purpose and going to be content as fuck because that's what's going to make them feel successful. So it's like... <clears throat> Whatever make you happy, man. Whatever make you happy, Captain. Yeah, knowing you know. your happiness. Knowing your happiness is probably the best way to judge success. That's it. It's all about what you feel. And in some people, happiness is a lot simpler. So it's all about finding that happy in yourself. <laughs> That's it, man. My my shoes might not fit the next man, and we both might be size twelve. But mine might be. I might need a wider, a wider insta. He might need. A, he might need more art support. So that shoe ain't gonna fit right on 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 us the same. So like, you know, everybody everybody do it. It, it can't be no blanket statement on the human race. It gotta be like shit is different. So we can't have no standards that is specific like that. We can have standards of like basic, general, overarching things like uh, civics and like how we deal with each other in public spaces. But the average run of the mill, like what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you drive, how much, what job you work at, what how much money you make, how many followers you got, whatever the case, like that can't be the metric by which we judge other people. Like that shit got to be based on some like more some standards that anybody can hit because like at the end of the day even with if you're going to judge it off money unless you're going to change the whole system to where money is no longer a thing and you just everybody just it's just a pot and everybody govern the pot and everybody make a decision like unless you're going to give it all to the people where it's just completely socialist and everything is just like collective and Hey, if, however much rice this country got is for every single person. Like, unless you're going to do that worldwide, you're going to always have capitalism, which means you're going to always have this system that makes it be where somebody's going to have more of money than somebody else, which is going to allow them to do more things and have more influence and have more power, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. that's, and that's, so you ain't going to change the system. So at the end of the day, you got to change your mindset and just be like, well, all right. I can't judge that poor man that's poor. I, I got to judge him off more than just that. Or I can't judge that rich man off being rich. I got to judge off more than that because at the end of the day, like the system is set up for one of them to be either way, either way. So, all right, you are whatever the system gave you, but who are you? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
type shit. Yeah. Yeah. With all that being said, with all that positivity being said and uplifting shit being said, with our opinion, you into some ignorant shit and shit that pissed me off. Well, all right then. <laughs> I love this part. So, I started oh. out with five. Started out with five and narrowed it down to like two or three. Okay. They pissed me off more than anything since they're repetitive things that kept happening. Um, and I've excluded anything that happened to me today. That I'll leave that for next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first thing that really pisses me off um, is people who use their cell phones when they're trying to help customers, especially in the mm. drive thru. Mm. Mm. Oh. Damn. <laughs> I'm trying to get my fucking food. Yeah, I don't like that. And you and you and your homegirl in the window on the fucking cell phones. And I'm just staring at y'all like, my food, please? Oh, excuse me. We sorry. Yeah, but this bitch just bitch give my goddamn food. Let me take my ass on. I spent more time at the window waiting on my no food. Bueno. No, no. Bueno. You feel me? This bitch ain't fucking out. Come on, Tanya. My fries are cold. Right, right. My, my, yeah, like, come on, bro. Uh, no. That's Papa's free Second thing. Yeah, get the fuck Second off. Second thing that pissed me off this week. Once again, people working fast food, they can't understand simple orders like no cheese. <laughs> That's the only special thing I want is just no cheese. Most yeah, shit. It's Most so, it's like, so I got don't do one that. of the steps you would normally do. Take a break. Yeah, of that. Don't do that. That's yeah. really all yeah. that is. Just, that one. It's Unless a, it's, it's mac and cheese or some shit like that. It's, uh, you can it's not that complicated. If, if you use your brain and listen, it ain't that complicated. No cheese. It's, it's less work. Thing. You can't get that right. I know you can't get anything else right. Oh, can I add some to that? And I got some while, too. while we're in the no cheese vein. If you got an Alfredo dish at an Italian restaurant and you also have marinara sauce, or you have to, or you have a red sauce that you put on your red pastas, like your spaghettis and your uh, a meat sauce or something like that, don't tell me you can't give me the same Alfredo dish, but just put it in meat sauce. You got the sauce. And you ain't doing shit with Alfredo, but putting the pasta and the meat or whatever in the shit and shaking that shit up into some other sauce, to some Alfredo sauce. So just shake that shit up in the fucking red sauce and call it a damn day. And we got the same shit. Uh, I know that you, maybe that's too much for you. Oh, another sauce. Like, fuck out of here. Put it in the sauce, put the sauce in the pan and shake it up. Shake it up. Give me, give me the, give me, I should be able to get shrimp Alfredo if you have the shrimp, the pasta, and the sauce, it's literally just I toss that up in there and all right, we put that on the in the bowl and we, there you go. I'm sorry. And the last thing that pisses me off, people who work cash registers that can't count. Mm. You were front even of with a big the ass calculator. Even with the assistance of the cash register, you can't it count money. You which it tell you what to take out, like. Five forty one. Okay. It, it ain't that complicated, people. Please. I, I I know it sounds simple. And these things, these three things that piss me off, may, may get your ass in the like back and stock up. grow and stock or, or work but free. If, if you can't right. do simple things, you, you you don't need to be in these positions. Please don't use cell phones with help I, customers. I mean, Learn how to count money and listen and pay attention when I just don't want no fucking cheese. On my bird. No cheese. We lactose. You hear that North Virginia fast food chain? <laughs> Do you hear that North Virginia fast food chain? Put me off this week, man. I mean that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. No Virginia fast fast food chains. He loves picking on me. This North Virginia fast food chains, man. They're they're yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're the main ones that will do exactly what they said. This. <laughs> Put cheese when you say put cheese because it's done to me all the fucking time, man. I hate that yes. shit. Yes, hate it. I hate it with a passion, dog. Um, <laughs> so to counteract that, I'm gonna say something that 
I really enjoyed the past couple well, all right, then. weeks. So, um, so y'all, everybody knows I'm a comic book head. You know, I make my own comic book. Blah blah blah. The comic, comic book, book heads unite. That and the big event that I've uh, been enjoying so far is the King and Black event in Marvel. Um, that name is hard. Yeah, this this is it's it's extra deep. Now, I really oh, like how Marvel sets up their universe because it's a universe. It's 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 really set up as a universe with its own particular uh, rules and everything and gods and godlike beings that run over and govern certain shit. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the starter off the the king in black, he's he is named Noel. Like Noel and Boyd. I, I don't no. know if they intended that to be the um the pun, but that gotta it be it. No, it, it fits because he's from the void and he's basically he's from the darkness that no, the, from the void that um before the universe was created. It was nothing but darkness, and he lived in that darkness. So when the universe was created, it showed all this light. It interrupted his his rest or whatever he was doing. So he's basically in prehistoric before uh, recorded history time of the of the Marvel universe. He's on a rampage trying to kill things that's basically creating our universes, like the Celestials in the in the uh, Marvel universe. Okay. Um, He's just, he's on, he the is a creature of darkness. I'm the godlike beings. Yep. He's hes like pretty much the god of darkness like trying the to god, kill like light. The, uh, oh, the gods of Olympus fought uh, the Titans. Yeah, pretty much. He's a pre-history godlike being pretty much or whatever. Yeah. So um, he comes oh, about, and they find out about Noel. Uh, through like the symbiotes, and if you're familiar with the symbiotes, like Venom, um, Carnage, Carnage. Spider Man, um, pretty much the Spider uh, Spider Man villains in his yeah, rogue yeah, gallery, yeah. pretty much. But the symbiote is like an an alien being that, with its own sentient mind and everything, that's from a hive mind of other symbiotes, pretty much, and. They take over the person, they make them stronger or whatever, but they have this hunger and they, you know, depending on the strength of that person's mind or whatever, either the symbiote is just going to take over your body and then gradually eat away at your body or that person is going to be able to control it. That brings in Eddie Brock. So Eddie Brock is like the first Venom or whatever. So he is pretty much the main protagonist of this whole story um pretty much and i just like how they set it up like they've been setting up for noel for the past 10 years like putting little small things in like different superheroes history like they'll um you know thor has been a pretty much a god forever he's like old as shit he's like a thousand years old or whatever Great. so he has a villain um called gore the god butcher because he comes from a planet where he felt like pretty much the gods just neglected that planet and all he, he was the last of his kind so he right. goes on a universal rampage just killing off all the gods that he come across with the sword that he found when he saw two creatures coming from the sky and it was uh one of them was actually Noel and the uh-huh. other one was was this being of light that he was fighting pretty much um okay so they were fighting each other falling from the sky yeah yeah and that's yeah. like in the first couple of fights that Noel was going to when he was really going on that rampage or whatever okay Okay. He built the, um, in the midst of, in that rampage, he built this sword called um, All Black, the Necro Sword. That's what they call it, pretty much. All oh, black, black, and black, and black, black, black. All right. And with that, he also created the symbiotes or whatever. Um, okay. And 
when when he got taken, uh, basically when he got taken down, Gore took his sword, and I believe the symbiotes captured him and made a whole planet to keep him, you know, dormant or whatever, so he won't ever come out. And that is their reason why you just haven't heard of Noel until now. Okay. You have, you have to have that backup or whatever. But um, like I said, after a while, they had this event called um, Absolute Carnage or whatever. Okay. And like he, like every time they come across a symbiote, the symbiote will say, "The God, God is coming. God is coming. God is coming or whatever. Saying that Noel is coming back. Because he would be their god because he created them. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So speed up to now or whatever. When he comes back, it, the King of Black is that he fucks up everything. No. Everything. <laughs> like he comes back. He's not only when he's on his way to Earth, the reason why he's on his way to Earth is um I've believe it's Eddie Brock's son, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Dylan has a way of controlling symbiotes, similar to Noel. So, and Noel, he wants to be in control of everything. So that's another reason. So he's been taking over like planets. He's been just going on a rampage across planets. I mean, like they're not slack planets. There's like planets with the Kree Empire, and that's like one of the strongest empires. Yeah, I was gonna Marvel. say as soon as you said that, all right. Yeah, like he some big, some heavy hitters there. Heavy hitters, the the creatures that created majority of the things that's happened in Marvel, the Celestials. He took an over one of them with his symbiote. So he's got this big ass celestial coming down wrecking shop with like millions of symbiotes millions of symbiote dragons coming down he's covering all the all the superheroes are going down one by one the x-men and the avengers and, and fantastic four are all fighting or whatever they're going back down and some of them getting taken over like you see a venomized cyclops you see like a venomized captain america what are they gonna say like, Big <laughs> this catch <guy's laughs> <laughs> like and then, like, um, because their weakness, one of their weaknesses, like light and and fire and sound or whatever, one of the main big hitters is like Storm and Thor, or whatever. So it's been it's like Marvel, they really do a good job making Storm shine. Like As she's well like should. one of the strongest well beings in that in that on Earth. And yeah, she shines. Say, she's, a, she's a beast in the comics. She has a consistent, a like over the past couple of years, it's been a consistent moment of storm just shining one after one. And then this, this story is in no slack. She also kind of goes down like at the very end. And that's like, that's one of them. And then the other fight is with Thor. When Thor comes in, he comes in like a beast. Like I almost feel like I was watching a WWE fight when they had their entrance. Like, he had the perfect entrance, strike a lightning. <laughs> he comes down with his hammer. He smacks the, the shit out of a uh, knoll in his jaw. The jaw flies out all over the place. Like, you know how Venom's uh, mouth be, like, wide the fuck open? When Thor smacks Noel with the hammer, it cracks his jaw open, and it's flying all over the place. Like, it is crazy. Like everybody's going the fuck down. And meanwhile, the whole I earth, that type of action. The whole earth is covered by like symbiote. So there's no light coming in. So now no is stronger shit. And Eddie Brock has numerous times tried to go up with against no and like one of the times, Noel basically grabs him, snatched the venom venom symbiote from him and drops him from a, a skyscraper and he's dead. Well, how is he alive now? Is he bionic? Um, no, um, we're getting to that. He getting, okay, we're getting cool. into that. All right, so um, another, another element to it is the Silver Surfer. The Silver okay. Surfer actually fought him in the past too. Mm -hmm. And he comes down and he's, he's actually bringing the game changer 
that's going to basically counteract and against no or whatever. Okay. That God of light that Joel was fighting in the past that um, that he crashed down on an earth with is basically mm -hmm. back. And that that being, it ends up being one something that has come up in Marvel a couple of times before. Like, and um, when he's coming down, he's thinking, Silver Surfer is thinking, like, since they know each other or whatever, the God of Light or whatever, that it's going to, it chose Silver Surfer to fight Noel again because no, uh, Silver Surfer has fought Noel um, in the past, pretty much, or whatever. But really, he's just using him to get through Earth crash through earth and then at that moment or whatever he's choosing the person the the god of light is choosing the person that's going to go against no or let's whatever going. all right meanwhile anybody that's ever had a venom symbiote or whatever is connected mm -hmm. to no so when they die so he got a they, whole bunch of minions yeah so when they die they go into this like hive mind hell version of the afterlife that no controls or whatever through his like so that's where eddie brock pretty much his soul is at right now and okay. at this it is weird so in there he can actually combine back with his venom symbiote and he's ganging up with other people there and somehow some way he and I, i'm not gonna get too much into it because i want to i want people to really like read the book somehow some way okay. he breaks out of it mm -hmm. and he goes through the other symbiotes that's actually on the living plane and come out as venom or whatever oh. so he's like in the afterlife man and his venom symbiote to fight Noel in the real world or whatever it, it's okay it's, it's crazy so when that happens the same time the silver surfer plane type shit. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. They in the book it explains it a lot more smoother as it progresses or whatever. So at the same time, Silver Surfer is coming in, and in the last book, you actually see Silver Surfer squaring off with Noel. He turned his, his surfboard into a sword or whatever. And hmm. and uh -huh. at the same time all the superheroes is actually coming back or whatever because you know Jean Grey is involved the X-Men is involved she's psychically like connecting with Dylan so they can actually get people out of their symbiotes and now they all coming back joining with Silver Surfer to gang up on No or whatever mm -hmm. so at that time the the chosen person has come up and that person is Eddie Brock. So Eddie Brock is in is in like this hospital that Reed Richards is like watching over his body mm -hmm. or whatever. And at the same time, Reed Richards is trying to find out what is this this being that's coming down to fight Noel. He said he realized, oh, I it, it's the Enigma Force. It's Captain Universe. So Captain Universe is this being that pops up all the time, like when it at that dire moment in the situation He's the in Mar Ex Machina. yeah so he um it, it's not even he it's, it's like it because cap um let's see um spider-man's been captain universe the hulk has been captain universe uh wolverine's female clone x-23 been captain universe at one time there's a uh so it's a, this is like it's captain a, marvel it's a popular mantle yeah, yeah, it's, and it, it's built like a symbiote, though. Like, the way it's built, because it's like the power possesses that person. I think even mm. the new, um, new um, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, got the, the universe power at one time. And then there's a black girl named um, Tamara DeVoe. She was Captain Universe at one time. The, the way they drew her was kind of dope. So this time, Captain Universe is Eddie Brock. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, this, this, this Captain Universe is like now officially my favorite freaking Captain Universe, yo. Like this dude, like everything about so it, different. 
feels metal or whatever. Okay, like, like, got it. like this, this guy, this guy right here. You see this guy? It's oh, it's the Venom symbiote, but his eyes is glowing. He got yep, everything I going. See him. Or whatever. Like, and then this guy, he pulls. He pulls Silver Surfer's and 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 Thor's hammer, Thor's hammer and Silver Surfer's board, which is a sword now together, and he puts it together and he builds his big ass battle axe and start charging at No. And then now, mind you, No is an all powerful being, and he's an all powerful being, but he's running like a bitch. Look at him; he's running like a bitch. Look at Venom chasing right at Venom. Is like, don't you run from me. Don't you run from me. Don't you run. Don't you run from me. <laughs> 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 right. Yo, and then Noel throws his whole army against him. All the giant dragons, um, all the symbiotes or whatever. And, and, and Venom is like, nah, fuck that. I got you. He throws the, the giant, the celestial. Venom is like, you see that big ass slash to the neck or whatever? That's Venom. Mm. He's doing that. And he 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 grabs he grabs no just like no grabbed him at the end of like a a, a skyscraper here yoke your ass mm-hmm. up or whatever and he bears he bears it he bears his um freaking battle axe into the dude chest and he tears it he like crush it all the way said. through it just sounded it, funny. Oh. It does, it does. And then he grabbed he grabbed his uh symbiote off and then drops him off the dang uh skyscraper and it just it just after that it's just beat down after beat down or whatever. Noel says something to piss him off. He throws him up into the like into the sky and flies him in, into the sun and everything. And oh he, that's hot. It's just it's just yeah, literally. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Like <laughs> So take off all of Earth, but I, I, I read this this book I like they did everything <laughs> right. With this book. <laughs> they did everything right with this book, like no, the build up for it, like just the just Marvel, the way they place things. We get a movie on that. That's that's what I'm hoping for. So that's why I'm saying, like, I, I'm, I'm hoping they even they if it's go a ahead, off side story or mid get that phase out the way, or do get it whatever in a TV show, whatever. But give me that. Me Yo, that, that would be that give would be dope. And then, and then they would actually <clears> be able to have the X Men and the Avengers together because they got the all the contracts together. They just got to get that that Venom everything, contract. Everything yep. in all of the movies would be tied in so nicely. You could do so many things with that. And that's why I got hope for Marvel because they got so many of these event movies that I mean, there's some some of these events they have that they be kind of boring, and I'd be like, but yeah, some of them, some but of them, th- some imagine of them, them in the MCU as we know it. Like it changes the whole dynamic of some of them. Yeah, yeah. Like it's. I'm just waiting for them to build up this next phase and bring the mutants in and see how they do with that. And uh, yeah, a lot of good mm-hmm. shit. A lot of good shit going. Right on. Look good. Look, yep. A lot of good shit and a lot of fuckery. So we're gonna go right into the good and fuckery right now. Yay! Yes. <laughs> All so, right, let's get that shit popping, bro. Um, here you go. Monumental good and uh, uh, and major <clears throat> black excellence to start off right here. Um, okay. WrestleMania pass. You know, WrestleMania is like um every year in April or whatever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. headlining headlining WrestleMania, we have Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. For the first time, we have two black women headlining a That's WrestleMania. Big and Congrats. salute to the queens, man. That's big, That's big shit, especially in a wrestling. Yeah, big, big, big shit, right there. And let me tell you, they are not no slack. They not slack wrestlers. Like I, I watch that shit, and no, it's not they like nice. they, they nice with it though. It's like watching any old wrestling match anywhere. Like it's a, it's a few ladies out there that's beats like shit. Yo, like, like my my brother, he's real, like 
I would say he's real into wrestling. Like he keeps he keeps updates. He's constantly watching them, whatever. So every once in a while he'll put me on to um because he know my work schedule. Yeah, I don't be in, in time to watch wrestling or whatever. He'll show me a couple of like female wrestlers or whatever, and I watch their fights and they just as brutal. As they uh they got the Suka or one of them. I think I've seen one of her uh fights before she got the wrestling um WWE. And yeah. And then uh yeah. But that was the good for this week, black excellence for this week, pretty much. Um some more black excellence. That kind of goes into some fuckery. Um Hubert Davis. The first black Hubert Dale Davis. Yes, yes. The first black UNC coach. That is that such black excellence. So, so I'm so sorry. To, I've never been so sorry to be a Tar Heel fan. <laughs> so yeah, much great know. black to get fumbled at the plate. I was like, come on, bro. With some shit that don't got nothing to do with what's going on. I'm still. I like try to give him the benefit of doubt. I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to this one more time, and maybe there's a reason why he even... It sounds the same every damn time. And I'm... and I, it, it just gets to that point where you're like, okay, so you're getting them white cheeks. All right, I'm happy for you. Okay. <laughs> you're getting them white cheeks. <laughs> all right. All right, man, but this... Man, that's uh, funny. That's your mama funny. black, man. Your sister <laughs> black. <laughs> this is not like the way you said it is like, and I'm proud of my white wife. I, I worked hard all my life to get this white wife. Y'all don't know how do long I waited had, in line. To it, had, it didn't have a place in that particular arena in that moment. Yeah, like I, I, I did all these achievements, got me a house. Uh, like, come on, bro. Yeah, like, it was not the arena for the family. He, he should have kept that to himself. There was no need to put that business out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you're proud of that, cool. That's good. But man, at that moment like, in time, man, I'm proud, I'm proud you, of you. You're going to make proud it a point, yeah. man. You what her, what that her race got to do with anything? Like, her being I mean, a white woman does nothing for your cash aid. You being a black man at this school does something for your cash aid. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. As a like at a at a surface level or whatever, um, the first thing you're gonna say is, all right, now you're just you're you're freaking down in all the black women that's out there. That's first level bit, and then you could put the flip on that. You you're you're using her race as a trophy mark, as a notch on your belt, as a you know what I'm saying. I got me a white wife. You know what I'm saying, like. That's downgrading mm-hmm. to her and it's downgrading the black women at the same time. Like it, Oh, I tell you what, ain't no fuckery. <laughs> this week's Black Business of the Week. And we don't have one. So support us at the Partners, Partners Closet or just visit us at our website, thepartners.com and visit, you can visit Faces Store or our own store and select any of the different items of merch we got. Everything from coffee mugs to phone cases, to clothing, to apparels for the springtime, for the winter, whatever you need, we got it. So you can do that and support a black business, us. Um, as always, man, uh, on behalf of the partners, man, we thank y'all um, and we look forward to the conversations in the comments. So if you got a thought or opinion, whether you agree or disagree, please drop them down in the comments below so that we can continue this conversation past this. Um, Happy 420 to everybody out there who celebrates that. And uh, if you want to continue the conversation with us outside of just the videos, just randomly, and you just want to kind of connect with us, um, Pat, tell them how they can get in touch with us, man. At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S at the partners. That's the Twitter, that's the Instagram. Um, and if you hashtag that, put it on Facebook, it'll, you'll pull up our Facebook. It'll be Tiz, Face, Pat, or the Partners. Um, just follow us up there. Uh, if you got videos y'all want us to, um, like, comment on for our live, uh, just go ahead, give us a message there. Or um, you can also hit our Gmail, 
uh, which is, I mean, straight up, it is <laughs> the it is t- podcast at gmail.com. I'm about to spell it all Indeed, out. <laughs> real easy for you. The partners podcast at gmail.com. If you want to email, if you want to get it to the social media, you can do everything that uh, Pat just told you. And if you want to get it to the store, the email, or anything else, and you just need an easy way to do it, go to thepodness.com. Real easy and simple and plain for you. Um, and yeah, man, if you can't support us, support our Black business, man. It's a good thing to do to just get our economy going for once and uh, kind of help start raising us up out of this bullshit system that we're in. Um, but yeah, so uh, as always, I am one third of the partners, your boy Tiz. And it's the other third, the Padawan here. And on behalf of the other third face, we are signing out. Happy 420, everybody. Peace.